collecting a fair bit of dust. Sure, these wild utes are hard work, but it's no job. The roar of them. Pure. Take some rare skills to settle one. A band of brothers and sisters. Where man learns from machine, learns from man. And those that visit are transformed. Almost as much as the V6 Amarok's. It's like this place rubs off on them. You gotta see it to believe it. The only Ute reared for the road. Lindy, she's a gal with the bright red hair. Now nah, she stands out from all the rest. You know her anywhere. Where she's mine. Yeah, she's mine. Some say we've got engine oil in our veins. All that and a fair bit of dust. Sure, these wild utes are hard work, but it's no job. The roar of them. Pure. Take some rare skills to settle one. A band of brothers and sisters. Where man learns from machine, learns from man. And those that visit are transformed. Almost as much as the V6 Amaroks. It's like this place rubs off on them. You gotta see it to believe it. The only Ute reared for the road. a place your place is it a place to play learn and watch your kids grow a place to have fun laugh and belong a place to work kick back and share a beer with your mates you can't touch it put a price on it you feel it it's not about houses and cars and stuff it's about people the people you live with and share your dreams with. Your place might be big, it might be small, but finding your place, well, that's the most important thing in the world. Port Stephens is full of special places. We're planning for the future of our places in a way that makes it easy for you to understand and get involved. Coming to your place soon. Find out more on our website.
some say we've got engine oil in our veins. All that and a fair bit of dust. Sure, these wild utes are hard work, but it's no job. The roar of them. Pure. Takes some rare skills to settle one. A band of brothers and sisters. Some say we've got engine oil in our veins. All that and a fair bit of dust.
All right, very good morning to everyone out there. We've had a bit of a delay, but we have kicked things off. This is finals day action from the World Surf League. Gage Rhodes, Port Stephens Pro, the men's and women's QS 1000 event here from the beautiful One Mile Beach today. We've had a shift in uh, location. We've moved around from Barubi Beach, obviously with the big southerly kicking in overnight. We've moved around to well the same place we finished off this event last year, One Mile Beach, and in the south in the uh, southern corner we've got a nice point break running off the point there. As you see, the ocean is quite messy out the back, but the waves are definitely here, and we have plenty of opportunity for the surfers. And we have rolled through the women's round of 16. We are rolling through the men's round of 16 now. We're into the last third heat, sorry. And we have five and a half minutes to go. We're going to catch you in right now. Myself, Chris Enover in the booth, joined by Brittany Nickel. It's a pretty wild and woolly day out there. Lots of rain, lots of wind, but the action has kicked off well. And, well, you moved through one of your round of 16s. You're into the quarterfinals. So give us a rundown how it is out there. It's actually quite tricky, Chris. We've got a high tide this morning, so the bit flatter sections and... I felt like um, instead of going more square on those waves, I was kind of stuck doing carbs, but I managed to win the heat and move through to the quarterfinals, so I'm so happy with that. Uh, it's a beautiful location here. The way the headland's set up, we're, we've got a right-hand point. There's a bit of a wider section as well, but it's it's hard to not get caught out too far out. Yeah, definitely know what you mean. I d we saw that last heat unfold, and we'll catch up with the results from this morning. Yeah. And, uh, well, it's been a, a morning of plenty of action. So this morning in the first heat in the round of 16 in the women's, we did see Charlie Hurst taking the win ahead of Jade, Jade Wheatley. Wheelie, sorry. Jade Wheelie got second. And then third place, G. Lorenzen and Sierra Kerr bowing out of that one. In heat number two, we did see the South African surfer Sarah Baum taking the win ahead of Elise Cooper. And they got the better of Zali Kelly in third. And Dimity Store bowing out there. And then in heat number three, we did see Nixie Ryan get the job. Sorry, Philippa Anderson got the job done. She won that heat ahead of Nixie Ryan in second. Third place, Freya Prum. True Starling, unfortunately, bowing out. And in heat number four, in the round of 16 of the women, it was none other than co-commentator Brittany Nickel taking the win ahead of Ellie Harrison. Paige Harab in third. And Angela Ball, unfortunately, bowing out in fourth. And then we rolled into the men's round of 16. And it was in heat number one. Harley Ross got the job done in first. Chris Zaffis in second. Axel Rose Crotta in third. And Mikey Clayton Brown, the local lad, in fourth. Heat number two, we did see Joel Vaughan get the win ahead of Kalani Ball in second. So two big names rolling through the draw. Taj Stokes in third. And Billy Stam and the uh, Kiwi, unfortunately, bowing out. So Dad will be resetting and heading down to Maroubra. And heat number three, this is current action right now in the water. We have three minutes, 20 on the clock. And... Well, you see the lineup out there, Britt. We've seen a few of the men now make the shift over to the wider peak. We saw Joel Vaughan on his very last wave get a really nice wide one paddling back out and got the biggest scoring wave of the heat, 7.25. So maybe that wide peak will come into play. I think it will with the outgoing tide once that turns. And it is. It, it's tricky. You can either go sit on that wide peak and take the risk or you can go sit on the bank off the point with everybody else. I think Joel Vaughan, he really capitalised on that in that previous heat. He got that 7.25. It was maybe there was two minutes left on the, in the heat so he'd already locked in a good score and then locked in his best on that wide peak so I feel like competitors if they're not in priority it's almost worth paddling on that next bank get away from those fellow co competitors yeah you're spot on there yeah you're spot on there and well in the lineup right now we do have heat number three in the lead it is Cooper Chapman the North Narrabeen surfer just some, some mid-range scores, a 4.8 and a 4. And his uh, well, Na North Narrabeen counterpart, teammate Nathan Hedge in second, 4.25 and a 4. So very similar scores. Here is Cooper up and riding now, the current heat leader, working his way down the line. No stranger to a right point break, spending a lot of time now living up you know, the north coast of New South Wales and in the Gold Coast region as well. So... He's working his way through the inside. This one looks like he's linked up with the end section, and that's a nice whipping carve out of the top. You can see the waves. They are tricky. They have a bit of flatness to them. But if you can find that steep section like we saw Joel Vaughan, 
get and Kalani Ball got a few good sections too it really does pay dividends and that's a long nice way for Coop so that'll be the best scoring wave of the heat I dare say by a bit first good wave linked all the way through from out the back and uh, with a minute 30 on the clock Coop's going to beat this one I dare say he's going to call it a day because he might be getting back out there in a minute and a half he certainly won't be we have the destination New South Wales replay up on screen bit of a tricky section here but Cooper Made the most of that section. He was waiting for it to stand up on the inside. Really flat through the middle of this bank. And then it starts to steepen after this turn. Almost caught a bit of a rail. Got a bit hung up. But he managed to uh, regather himself. Yeah, yeah, that was the money turn. That second last one, wasn't it there? That nice kind of tail release. Whip in the pocket. Even got a little bonus section in the inside here. Yeah, and kind of jammed that last one pretty hard as well. So that was a good finish there. We'll wait for that one to be rolling through for Cooper. There it is. That's five point. Well, that was uh, Mike Madonna, actually. He's actually locked in a score of 5.75 we haven't seen. So there's been a bit of shift in the uh, leaderboard right here. We'll have to wait and see what has happened. Hedgy. So Hedgy's got a wave, and he's looking for a score as well. So we're waiting for Cooper's last score to come through. And then the Hogs got this one. So we'll see what this wave does. He works his way through to the inside. Bit of a flatter ride. This one's gone a bit funky on him, hasn't it? He's just been trying to manufacture this score. And well, there's a nice whipping turn. And so this heat has come to a close. And we'll be waiting for scores for Cooper Chapman's last one. We haven't seen that roll in yet. But in the interim, Mikey Madonna did lock in a 5.75. And he went into the lead. So Mikey McDonough was in the lead ahead of Cooper Chapman. Nathan Hedge was currently in third and Lennox Smith in fourth. We'll have to wait and see how those scores update. We have had some issues with the weather, the Wi-Fi, everything being just set up. So we've just got underway with the live action. We're so glad we can bring it to you. We're going to head to a quick ad break here and we'll be right back with quarterfinal with round of 16, heat number four, live action straight after this. What makes a place your place? Is it a place to play, learn and watch your kids grow? A place to have fun, laugh and belong? A place to work, kick back and share a beer with your mates? You can't touch it, put a price on it, you feel it. It's not about houses and cars and stuff. It's about people, the people you live with and share your dreams with. Your place might be big, it might be small, but finding your place, well, that's the most important thing in the world. Port Stephens is full of special places. We're planning for the future of our places in a way that makes it easy for you to understand and get involved. Coming to your place soon. Find out more on our website. Welcome back. This is the World Surf League. Gage Roads, Port Stephens Pro. We are into finals day action. Myself, Chris Enover, in the booth alongside, well, commentator and competitor, Brittany Nickel, rolling on through to the quarterfinals, Britt. Very exciting. And uh, the weather's shown up. The winds have shown up. But we've moved around to a new location at one mile into the heat four of the round of 16 for the men. Run us through what's happening right now. I think it's caught a few competitors off guard, to be honest, Chris. We've been surfing the Barubi Beach Bank 
all week. And then come into finals day, we're now on a, a right-hand point break. As we have a surfer up and riding in the blue, that might be Reef Hazelwood. That does look like Reef Hazelwood. And, well, he's found one of those bigger sets from out the back. And we've seen them being rolling through all morning. It's a, it's a funky bank out there at one mile. The sand is really good if you can find the right wave. And, well, look at this wave down the line for Reef. Can he hold on? Oh, unfortunately, going down just there. So... That was probably a little bit of a missed opportunity there for Reef because he was on to a really good score. Lots of big turns. We've seen it we've seen it quite hard to find those bigger waves and there's definitely a contrast in the bank. So if you're sitting at the point close to the wall and you're on one of the smaller runs that doesn't link up with that wide bank, you'll see the waves get quite flat and small, just like Hedgie's wave at the end of that last heat. But if you can find the one that does hit the wider bank, looks like Mike has found one here. Nice big couching calf. We've seen his dad do that a hundred thousand times. So taking a leaf out of the old boys book there, I think, and just putting the back foot down and well here's Kai's King too. No stranger to a right point break. This is a doozy of a heat. Wow, that car was amazing and I cooked him. <laughs> Commentator's curse there. Always we have Kobe Clements in the red. He's also locked in a seven. We have the Destination New South Wales replay on screen. This is Kobe seven here. Little hung up on that first turn, carving straight back into the pocket. And I'm thinking that this one's going to stand up on this inside section. Yeah, it is. So it looks like the, the, all the crew have gotten some good waves to kick things off here. Nice turn from Kobe. And again, and well, this one has kept rolling down the line. So that was a seven-point ride for Kobe Clements. And in the water right now, we'll give you this heat as it unfolds. But in the red, Kobe Clements in, yeah, as I said, in the red, Blue, Reef Hazelwood in the white, Kais King, and, well, in the green, Micah Margeson. So this is a cracker heat to round out the round of 16 for the men. First and second will be rolling on through into the quarterfinals, and we do have some quarterfinals already set. And uh, they'll be coming up after the women's quarterfinals. That'll be just after this one, Britt. They certainly will. We'll be moving into the women's quarterfinal, heat number one. Four heats of those quarters. In the first one, we have Charlie Hurst up against Elise Cooper. Quarter two, we'll see Jade Wheatley and Sarah Baum. Quarter three, we'll see Philippa Anderson and Ellie Harrison. And quarter four, we'll see Nixie Ryan and myself, Britt Nickel. There we go. So the quarterfinals are set for the women. And once this heat is complete, the quarterfinals will be set for the men's division two. So we're coming down to the business end of things in the water right now with 14 minutes, 10 seconds on the clock, it is Kobe Clements. Well, he's been in just the most impeccable form to kick off this season so far. Kicked off with a fifth place down there at Phillip Island. Backed it up with another fifth up there at um, Boomerang. And now he's into the round of 16, looking to go at least, if he makes this heat, a minimum another fifth. So just consistency in just rolling through these draws and just looking so confident. We saw him bust out the corrupt flip yesterday. So he's got so much weapon arsenal up his sleeve. He can just pull out so much X Factor. And yeah, we see right now in the lead with that one big seven point ride. And Michael Margus in second with that five. We saw that big layback jam to finish off that one. Reef Hazelwood has found himself another set here. Take it away, Britt. Looks as though Reef's sitting out wider on the bank, trying to get one of those bigger ones that links all the way through. He's already locked in a 5.5. He's sticking with this one, hoping that it's going to stand up. He's got the double up section. What's he got for us? And finishing off. So tricky section there, but Reef Hazelwood manages to ride out of that one. He's going to make his way in and paddle back out off the point. Yeah, we've seen that come into effect quite a bit this morning. With the uh, Obviously that south wind, the south push, and the east swell. Uh, a lot of the surfers are electing to use the elevator rip right next to the point there. We'll see some of the pullback shots. The surfers are surfing one mile, south end of one mile beach. Here's Reef Hazelwood just kind of dissecting this wave. Bit of a flatter wave. And then he saw this section. He hopped over this double up and just went, here we go, time and bingo. Just tagged that end section. So great finishing move there for Reef. Bit of an exclamation point of that wave. And there it is, another mid-range score. So a 5.25 for Reef and... We think back to the end of that first wave he got and he fell off in his last turn and it was probably the turn of the whole wave as well. So 
Had he made that one, I think that would have been the wave of the heat up around the 7.5 mark. So probably a little little bit left on the bone there for Reef, but he'll be, uh, like we said, looks like he's reset. He's got two good scores locked in now, two mid-rangers, and I think this is where Reef gets really dangerous because he, get, he allows him to free up now and just kind of start trying to elevate those scores and look for bigger waves, gives him some time to be patient and put himself on the best waves of the heat here. So we could be in for a pretty exciting end to this heat. He has certainly built those foundations. And like you said, he's just going to loosen up, have a bit of fun now, I think, which is where it gets pretty dangerous for the other competitors. You've got someone out there who just is ready to go ham on the next wave. Well, I feel like this one's the one to watch. A stacked heat here between Reef Hazelwood, Kobe Clements, Micah Marguson, and Kaius King. Just over 11 minutes on the clock. Still pretty open this heat. Kobe Clements in the reds locked in that seven. Only a point eight on the second one there, so 3.75 will take him straight into the lead. Have a couple of surfers having a look. Unable to scratch into that one. So that was Kobe Clements. He had second priority there, and we might see a shift in priority, and we do. So Kobe Clements, a bit of a mistake there from the young Long Reef surfer. Paddling for that one and just being relegated to third priority. Reef not out the back yet, so he is not in the priority lineup. Unfortunately for Kobe, he actually had first priority previously as well. And that point eight, he took off on a nice looking wave and just went a little too deep on his bottom turn. Yeah. And here's Kais King. Ring a ding, up and riding. And uh, working on the line on this one. This is a good looking wave. It looks like he took off closer to the point. But this one's going to link with the wider bank. And wow, that was an electric turn there. And look at the wave setting up here. So a couple of great combination of manoeuvres for Kais King. Looking very at home on these point breaks coming out of Byron Bay. And, well, here's another surfer from up the north coast of New South Wales, Micah Marguson, who spends a lot of time on the points too. So, and that's a heavy-footed end section turn. So he's going to roll out of that one. And, well, I think Kaius King is definitely going to get the better of that exchange. Would not be very, wouldn't be surprised to see that head up towards that, that seven-point mark of Kobe Clements' first wave. I feel as though it might be the best wave of the heat so far. Yeah. We have the Destination New South Wales replay on screen here. Kaius King, the man from Byron Bay, really setting himself up here. Comes hard off the bottom, straight into that turn. He, he gets so much speed, Chris, as he comes out of the turns. Yeah, he almost went over the handlebars there because he had so much speed. It just That was some really nice put-together turns there. He wasn't able to overcommit to any of the turns. He, he was obviously had to keep his momentum moving down the line. The waves do have a lot of lump and bump to them, so some of the turns need to be cut a little bit short, but that was a well-committed turn from Micah. Fortunately, he didn't have too much at the start of that wave, but you can see the intentions are clear. The guys are really looking for those big sections. And, uh, well, here's Reef Hazelwood. Fortunately, not getting to that one. And that yeah. one for Kaius King comes in a 6.10. So judges making it really clear that they are looking for really committed turns. I mean, even though we're on a point break and the multiple maneuvers down the line, if you can square up and really hit one and release the tail, like we saw Kobe doing his seven, he was able to kick the tail right around on that one section. Um, that's when you're going to see those big scores. But I guess it, it becomes tricky because you don't want to overcommit to some turns and risk not getting maneuvers down the line. So finding that happy medium and also wave selection being key out here. Of course, consistency is key and wave selection is key. Kaius King, a 6.1, and I think you're right there, Chris. The judges showing us what they're looking for, and just on that one for the surfer in white, you did mention he was looking down the line a fair bit. It looked as though it was going to run off pretty quick away from him, so, I mean, he couldn't have done much more than what he did on that wave, but I think that's what held him back from going into that excellent range as well. Yeah, and we saw those, you know, the first turn, he kind of tagged the whitewash, and his board stayed pretty, you know, horizontal. It was a good nice fast turn the second one up and over the foam and he kind of came out of it quite straight he didn't really wasn't you know didn't really get the fins past i guess the nose of the board at all so it was just uh, a lot of down the line surfing very fast and explosive but nothing over critical so yeah good score there and i mean as we see these waves start to get better and better obviously the lineup will sort itself out and you know, the surfers are going to understand the lineup a bit better. Like you said, it's been a shift in location, so everyone's been practicing at Barubi all week. This is probably the first time anyone in this lineup here has surfed 
one while this whole time we've been here. So it's going to take a bit of time to figure out. And uh, what were your biggest takeouts out there in different in in comparison to Barubi? With Barubi, uh, like I feel like the rights were a lot steeper. Lefts were a lot flatter. Like obviously out here we're on a right hand point break, so you're not going to be going left really at all. Um, you paddle out off the point here, you kind of get sucked off along the rocks and out into the break, but it's easy to get dragged out too far. You've just got to know when to actually paddle across and sit on that mid bank. Uh, it, you know, you cop a couple of sets on the head, but that inside section seems to be standing up and steepening up a little bit more than what the sets are out the back. They kind of roll through and they're really fat. It's not until you get right on that wide bank where it really starts to steepen up. So it's a bit of a tricky one. You can kind of take the risk and sit wider or you can sit on that inside bank. And I think the conditions are going to change as it, the tide starts to go back out because we did have the high tide here this morning. Yeah, you're spot on. And I was watching that heat from the beach before and it, it looks like there's definitely a noticeable break in the, uh, like a split in the lineup from the deep bank. And you sit, if you sit too deep, you find yourself on the smaller ones. Here's Kobe Clements up on a good looking mid-size one. We'll see if this one links with the wide section. You can see it's going a bit flat here. Really linked with this wide section. Looked like he might. It's starting to stand up in front of him. And big wafting turn. It was like a Rio into an air. That was just uh, real, I guess, innovative. Certainly innovative. Kobe's got to be a little careful here. I mean, he just got the score he needed. He only needed a two to jump in a second. So he's locked in a 3.25 for that one. Now only chasing a 3.75 for first, but... I was about to say, he just needs to be a little bit careful. He's locked in that seven. He's only got five minutes on the clock. He doesn't want to overcook it. No, he doesn't, because that wave there, if he finished it, we see Reef up and riding, two backside bangers. See, that's the deeper part of the, the point. We can see the point there, just in that screenshot. Obviously, you paddle out next to the rocks, and you paddle across. The issue is that the deeper you go, it's it's kind of a catch catch 22 type thing, because the deeper you go... And to get the inside position, the smaller the waves get, and you kind of end up further away from the wide bank, which has the biggest sections on it. It's, and it's tricky. You don't want to sit wide because you feel like you're sitting in the middle of the ocean, and it's hard to find the, that exact spot in that lineup. So you've got to find that happy medium of where you're going to sit, and the, the surfers are definitely trying to figure this out. And we saw Reef earlier in the heat on a big set at the back. Would have been a 7.5 if he made the last turn, but now you see him deeper up the point, so obviously he's been sucked close to the rocks. I Maybe. feel as though the wide ones don't come as often. Yeah. Um, the smaller ones, the mid-sized ones off off the point, they do hit the bank better, get more opportunity. But like you said, it's just hard to pick them. Yeah, so here's Caius. It looks like one deeper up the point. You see that one kind of bending back towards the point a little bit in compared to the wide ones that push out wider. And they all have this kind of flat section through the middle. And yeah, see that one's not going to do much. And you see Reef out the back there paddling wider. So that's kind of what I feel could be a really good tactic in these in these conditions. Starting deep, trying to get your wave from the inside position, and then as you paddle back out, sit wider while all the other surfers are kind of hassling up next to the rocks. Just keep moving between those two peaks and give yourself those opportunity to find one on both banks. You see, it looks like Reef's doing that right now. Looks like he's paddled back out after that, that two-turn combo wave. Didn't go when he was top two, and now he's sitting wider, just out in the middle of kind of middle of the ocean out there it is hard too because we haven't been surfing this bank with positioning not knowing what to line up with you kind of paddle out for your heat and for me for example like i haven't been free surfing here so my heat was was it yeah i had to try and figure it out on the fly yeah guinea pig <laughs> well, i was lucky that i had three heats before me to try and get that lineup sorted the first heat this morning was a little bit iffy it took took the women in the water like the entire heat to actually lock in two scores so you yeah. could tell that they were really struggling to just find where to sit and a few of them got caught out too far out the back and also another thing that's coming into play here is with the conditions and the weather is it's hard to hear it's very hard to hear the situation and the scores out there unless you really sit still and not move we've obviously got the great surf new south wales set up on the beach but with the onshore wind just battering in and the rain and the, you know a bit of swell in the lineup surface sitting quite far out it is hard for them to hear situations so we saw Sierra Kerr come unstuck with that earlier only 40 seconds ago needing a one and paddled over a wave not knowing what her situation was and well here's Kaius King getting a bit innovative there 
He's not looking for much at all, just a 4.11. And well, we'll have to see if this lineup cooperates. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if Kai's darts off wide here and maybe tries to find one of these wider sets right in the back end of this heat. See Kobe Clements hanging on to the skin of his teeth with second place. So what I mean, like, he's in second priority. He's looking to replace that 3.25 from his scoreline. And here he is. He's going to give it another shot, knowing that he's going to try and increase that requirement for third and fourth. Hard off the bottom, disappears. And he's going to try and link this one. So he took off really deep on the point there, Chris. Yeah, he did. And you can see those waves, they kind of bend back towards the point. And then there, you have to find those ones that kind of bend or push away from the point and down the line more because... If they start bending towards the point, you're going to end up in that kind of funky spot between the two banks. You yeah. need to find a way that's just big enough so it kind of pushes wide if you're deep. Otherwise, you want to stay wider and find the ones that runs down, run down the bank more. But Kobe did exactly what he needed to do there. He has put himself into the lead. So, took himself out of the hot spot, second position. Now he's in the lead and, well, he's looking quite pretty here. But anything can happen in the Mad Max minute as we see. It's happened all all series so far, things have changed and chopped all different directions. And uh, with Mark Marguson in fourth place, looking for a 5.75 to take second. Kaius King, he just needed a 4.65, so you can't rule them out at all. Reef Hazel would hang on to second, looking for a six to take the lead. So all servers within reach of each other right now, but time is the enemy. And Mike and Marguson up and riding, looking very energized, but just has not been able to find the right waves. Unfortunately not, and he's no stranger to a right-hand point break. Actually feels pretty similar to home in a way at Cabarita there, the way the, the waves are breaking with this high tide. I'm sure Margo's tuning in back at home. Yeah, and Mike are just coming up short on that one. Well, here's Kai's King. It's This is his last ditch effort, looking for a 4.65. And Reef's up and riding behind him, so this is a very important ride. We're going to count this one down. Dare say we'll be going on hold after this heat because all surfers getting a ride in the last 30 seconds. And well, Reef will be looking to improve on that 525. And if he can do that, he's going to make the job a little bit harder for Kaius King. And the body language of Kaius King didn't look too positive there. And obviously, that wave looking like it was fading out towards the inside. So we'll have to wait and see what the judges lock those numbers in. We'll take a quick ad break and be right back with more action. This is finals day from One Mile Beach. This is the Gage Roads, Port Stevens Pro, men's and women's QS 1000. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to finals day of the Gage Roads Bruco Port Stevens Pro. This is the men's and women's WSL QS 1000. The second stop on the Vistler New South Wales Pro Surf Series for 2022. My name is Britt Nickel. Joined in the booth with Nathan Riverland. We are now into the women's quarterfinal heat number one in the water. We have Charlie Hurst in the red and Elise Cooper in the blue. How are you this morning, Nathan? Going well, Britt. Going well. It's uh, yeah, some pretty, pretty tricky conditions out there. It's a bit bit like victory at sea but uh yeah we've seen some awesome surfing go down and um yeah looking forward to uh the back end of the day and we're going to crown our event champs here at uh, one mile beach 
We certainly are, and hello to all you viewers at home. We are on screen there. We are at One Mile Beach. We did have a location change. We've spent the last two days at Barubi Beach, which was a great little beach break. And it's we've beautiful had over there. Plenty of swell. But yeah, we've changed location this morning, One Mile. It's a right hand point break. And competitors really struggling to try and find their, their way in the lineup this morning, Nathan. Yeah, it is a bit tricky out there. Obviously, we did see um, yeah, the change in location due to the southeasterly winds coming through uh, overnight. We've had plenty of rain this morning. It was definitely a very wet setup, but uh, yeah, it hasn't dampened the spirits. The, yeah, the conditions have been tricky for the surfers, but fingers crossed uh, with the tide dropping out, it's going to become a little bit easier. Um, like you were mentioning earlier, there was a couple of early heats where um, the ladies in the in the fourth round just trying to really generate some momentum and find a couple of waves and and knowing which ones to go because I guess it was it was almost like a little bit like the first couple of days at Boomerang where you just didn't know which waves to go it was just like you're gonna really feel it out and yeah with the location change that's obviously gonna uh, definitely always happen. We are of course in a beautiful part of the world, Port Stephens. If you're visiting the area, be sure to come and check it out. We are at One Mile, got a headland to our right. And the surfers just out the front there, Charlie Hurst and Lise Cooper. 20 minutes. Quarterfinal heat number one coming up next. We have quarterfinal heat number two, Jade Wheatley and Sarah Baum. Moving to quarterfinal heat number three of the women, Philippa Anderson and Ellie Harrison. And quarterfinal heat number four, we'll see Nixie Ryan and myself, Britt Nickel. You. <laughs> Britt out of the booth and straight back into the water. You had a pretty good, pretty good heat out there. Yeah. Took you a uh, couple of minutes. We were talking about it before you went in, but um, obviously your tactic was to kind of just try and get a couple of waves early with it being a bit tricky, but you just uh, came through with the goods with the uh, QS veteran status and <laughs> got the job done, didn't you? Certainly been a fair few years since I'd uh, <laughs> yeah, competed in a WSL event, so it's great to be back, great to put back on a rashy. Haven't got a seat anymore, so started off in one of the earlier rounds, but yeah, stoked to be in the quarterfinals. We have the women in the water, with these quarterfinals, we do have just two-person heats now. So I feel as though the women will be sitting out there just waiting for those good ones. Not many in the lineup. When there's four people in the lineup, it can be a little bit tricky trying to find the right ones. You, you maybe move away from your competitors a little bit while you don't have priority. But I feel as though with two-person heats, you can really capitalise on having priority a bit more. And normally, there's more opportunity to catch better waves. Yeah, and just to sit and wait and really... Bide your time and wait for the best way possible. Uh, so you can see Elise Cooper getting a start in this uh, first quarter final here. She's definitely a highlight of uh, the fourth round of action this morning. Surfed really well on her backhand and uh, she found a couple of sections here and comes off the bottom and jams that section to uh, get the finish. So she'll be uh, keen that she's got one under her belt in the first five minutes. So good start for Elise Cooper. I think Elise Cooper will be happy to find her feet in the wax and locking those scores early. You can see there she's just paddling towards the headland. There is a rip that runs off along the rocks, which helps the surfers get dragged out into the lineup. On screen we have the destination New South Wales wave, re wave replay. Nathan talks through this one. Yeah, so Elise was just sort of had a bit of a flat section there. Was just trying to generate some momentum towards that end section bowl and throws it up there, jams the tail out and gets the finish. So I reckon it's going to be a low to mid range score probably to start off for Elise Cooper. But, um, yeah, like you were saying, be, she'll be feeling confident that she's got the feet in the wax, got a wave under her belt, and you can see that score's just come in at 3.25, so in that low uh, low to mid-range. There we go. Looks as though Charlie Hurst in the reds also locked in a 2.75. We've got the destination New South Wales wave replay. Surfer in red, up and riding on her backhand, getting a little hung up, but she manages to stick with it. Frothy section, the surfer in red. Just a couple of turns, so, yeah, also finding her way out there. Feet in the wax. 2.75 for Charlie Hurst. Both surfers will be making their way in the lineup now and starting to build on those scores. Yeah, I wonder, obviously everyone's got a different game plan out there, but yeah, the girls maybe trying to just get a couple of smaller ones under the belt, get the confidence up, and then we've sort of seen most of the sets have been the best waves to catch. They've been running off a bit a bit nicer, not so much um, downtime in, in between the wave. Um, so hopefully we see it the... Uh, in the last 13 and a half minutes of this heat, a bit of that, because uh, that's definitely, I think, where the scoring potentials lies from uh, from just sitting and watching some of the action on the beach. And there it is on screen for everyone watching from home or from work, wherever you may be. That is the rip along the headland there, just along the rock shelf. Surfers jumping in that, and it's kind of like a little 
little uh, speedy way out, just drags yep. you out. Just trying to make sure that you don't get dragged too far out because it is quite easy to get left too far out in the lineup. So the women making their way out, Lise Cooper ahead of Charlie Hurst. Yeah, so Elise Cooper's been in the back end of uh, quite a couple of QS draws. She's had a second at the NEAS Pro, a third at uh, a Boomerang in 2019, and she uh, won the uh, Crewe 1000 in 2018. So she's been at the back end one and came runner-up in a couple of events. And this is actually Charlie Hurst's best result here, um, making the quarterfinals. Her previous best was a ninth last year at Boomerang. So she's already bettered that. And, uh, yeah, she's definitely an exciting up-and-coming junior. She took out a... The uh, Sydney Surf Pro Junior last year, uh, sorry, two years ago in 2020, and uh, is a past state champ. So uh, good to see her getting through a couple of heats. And obviously, uh, yeah, Elise Cooper has been here at the back end before, and uh, maybe that experience will hold her in good stead. Certainly both goofy footers too. So it's a battle of the goofies out there this morning for quarterfinal heat number one of the women. As you mentioned there, Nathan, Charlie Hurst coming through the ranks. She is a New South Wales junior. I've seen a lot of Charlie over the years with my involvement with the Team New South Wales stuff, with Surfing New South Wales. They've got a great junior program and helping those surfers develop. And it's amazing to see the likes of Elise Cooper and Charlie Hurst both in the quarterfinals here for the Gage Roads. Port Stephens Pro Men's and Women's WSL QS 1000. This event would, of course, not be possible without our supporting partners, Port Stephens Council, Newcastle Airport, Destination New South Wales, World Surf League, PRD Port Stephens, Chaos Surf Shop, Surfing New South Wales, and our webcast partners Mad Mex and Volkswagen. We, of course, would not be here sitting in the booth bringing you all the live action without that amazing support from all our partners. And I won't fail to mention that this is the second stop on the Vistla New South Wales Pro Surf Series for 2022. So great to have Vistla and Sister Revolution back on board for these series of events in this New South Wales leg. Yeah, we're uh, super lucky to have all the support of the uh, supporting partners. Obviously, events don't happen without without all their uh, amazing work. And uh, I can see Elise Cooper. Might be she a priority over there, yeah, Nathan. that was a bit of a mistake there for Elise. Uh, so you would think, there you go, Charlie Hurst now with priority. So, yeah, a little paddling mistake there from Elise Cooper. It is very tricky, and I can definitely see where she would have been coming from going, okay, I think I can scratch into this. But the uh, wave sort of was just petering off a bit there and just didn't allow her to get in. But... Charlie Hurst is into this one, making her way off the bottom. Talk us through it, Britt. On screen, just a nice carve back into the section. She's sticking with the power source here, looking for that bottom turn. Charlie Hurst, she's hoping that this one's going to stand up on this inside bank and oh. just unfortunately getting a little heavy on those heels. Charlie Hurst in the red. I really like how she didn't force anything there. She was just waiting. So we sort of saw in Elise Cooper's first one, there was quite a bit of downtime where she was pumping, trying to generate something, but it didn't really seem like uh, Charlie Hurst on that occasion was forcing anything. We see a bit of a smaller wave, and the, the wave didn't give her too much opportunity, but, yeah, spewing, she, she had a fall on that third section. It is quite easy to get bumped off. You can just see that little wobble, and as soon as she hit that bump, the arms went back. The weight went back onto the heels and she uh, yeah, just fell off backwards there. So 3.5 for Charlie Hurst. Would have been great to see her continue that ride, but she's currently in the lead with a couple of small scores, a 2.75 and a 3.5. Elise Cooper in the blue, now in second with 3.25, only looking for a 3.01 to advance at this stage. As you mentioned before, Nathan, that priority error before with Elise Cooper and Charlie Hurst. Elise now sitting at the back, waiting patiently. Charlie on the inside. So you can see there, Elise didn't catch that wave out the back. So it is quite easy to get sucked up the face with this rip. Oh. Massive turn there for Charlie Hurst and just coming unstuck. You could just see her body weight just sort of contorting the opposite the way that she wanted to there. Like if she really had just turned the body ridden through, bend it down nice and low, she would have had a great chance of making that. And uh, I reckon for a turn of that caliber, she would have been going uh, into the pretty good range with that. I do agree with that one there, Nath. It is quite easy. Like We've seen Elise now paddle for two waves and not take off. She kind of just got sucked up the face. And that's what's been happening a few times here this morning with the way the point works and the rip that runs off the rock. So you've got the water dragging out to sea and then the waves are coming in. And it can be quite easy to paddle for those waves and not actually catch them. Yeah, absolutely. You get, can definitely see that Yeah, with Elise's last two efforts. So she has priority here. She needs a 3.01. 
Uh, obviously, that requirement would have been probably a bit higher had Charlie landed that last manoeuvre. But uh, eight minutes to go, so we're under halfway through this one. It's uh, absolutely flying by. So we'll see what happens in the back end of this heat. And as we've seen through both uh, stops of the Vizsla New South Wales Pro si Sur Series at Boomerang and uh, Barubi and One Mile in this event, the uh, heats can turn in a blink of an eye. So, yeah, Elise Cooper only needing a small score to uh, eclipse Charlie Hurst and go into the lead. Yeah, they certainly can go in the blink of an eye. And particularly if you're in second place, Sometimes they can just seem to just run away from you. Whereas when you're in first place, they just feel like they're going on forever and you just want it to finish already, depending on what position you're in. It's 7 minutes 20 on the clock. Coming up next, we have the women's quarterfinal heat number two. Another great matchup between Jade Wheatley and Sarah Baum. Both surfers surfed this morning. And, uh, yeah, Jade Wheatley scraping through on her last wave earlier this morning in the last 10, 15 seconds. Yeah, that was a really great effort by Jade. She was uh, one of the top performers at Barubi on day uh, on day one. So, um, she obviously, she obviously, she's uh, continued her form through. And, uh, yeah, the next heat's going to be a, p a battle of the powerful natural footers. So, I'm really looking forward to that one. Sarah Baum is actually a goofy footer, eh? Nice. So, oh, my gosh. Yes, she is. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, one goofy footer, one natural footer, both powerhouses. So it'd be great match up between those two surfers. Oh yep, she is. She Whoopsie. certainly is. Whoopsie daisy. Nah, six and a good. Six and a half minutes out in the water. So situation still remaining the same. Charlie Hurst has a uh, marginal lead with Elise Cooper with priority, only needing a three point zero one to advance. But uh, yeah, both surfers in the next heap absolute powerhouses and have been really strong through this uh through this Port Stevens Gage Roads event so yeah can't wait for that next heat and the rest of the heats in the round we've uh just getting to the pointy end on finals day we're already into the quarters the day's going by super fast and uh yeah we're uh we're getting towards the pointy end and it's exciting and uh yeah there's still some great opportunity out there with the waves and yeah fingers crossed it holds on for us all day we can only hope. We've had some beautiful conditions over the last couple of days. We are, uh, yeah, as we've mentioned, we were at Bruby Beach, which is quite an open stretch of beach. There's a lot of sand, a lot of sand dunes, which join up with Stockton. So just near Newcastle there, we uh, had a right and a left along that beachy. Right seemed to stand up a bit more, left flattening out a bit more, depending on the tide. And this morning we have had a location change for those just tuning in with us. We are at One Mile Beach, which is a right-hand point break. We've had the high tide this morning, plenty of water on the bank that should improve throughout the day with the tide outgoing. Should really provide those opportunities for surfers to really square up rather than do those flat calves out on the face. So surfers making the most of what they've got here this morning. We've still had plenty of scoring opportunity and great waves coming through. Hopefully, fingers crossed, those conditions continue to improve throughout the day. And we should see some exciting finals day action. Yeah, so we're getting towards the twilight of this one. Four and a half minutes left. The uh, waves going a bit slow in this one, um, which uh, has happened in a couple of heats this morning. It is really hard to find them out there. And uh, obviously with the location change as well, surfers having to differentiate uh, how to surf this break in comparison to Barubi because they are very different, like you spoke about. Beach break at Barubi where we've got a point here and actually was really loving watching some of the heats this morning. Just, yeah, when the surfers are able to square up on the point, there's probably a bit more. You can get a few more turns all the way through to the inside. Sort of seen um, a couple of those bigger sets really breaking nicely through the whole lineup and uh, providing sort of steep sections the whole way through, whereas a couple, couple of the heats yesterday at Barubi, you sort of saw surfers go into like the southern rip of the beach and you get a bit caught up, there's quite a bit of downtime, so the set waves out here certainly providing a lot of opportunity. We are down to just under, or just over, sorry, three and a half minutes on the clock. Charlie Hurst in the lead at the moment in the red with a 3.5 and a 2.75, so still door wide left, <laughs> still <laughs> the door is left wide open for the surfer in the blue, Elise Cooper. Only looking for a 3.01 to advance. She's holding down first priority, so the P next to her name on the left there, meaning that she does have priority to the waves that come through in the lineup. Surfer in red does have to give way to the surfer in blue. 
And is this a wave here for Elise Cooper? She's paddled straight over it, hoping for another one. You'd feel a bit nervous if you were Charlie Hurst too, knowing you don't have that, you're in first, but you don't have that scoreboard pressure on where Elise yeah, is only needing such a small score in the three-point range to advance. Uh, Charlie would be feeling a little bit nervous, obviously also not having priority. Can be a tricky one. There hasn't been many waves caught in this heat, and I feel as though that's more so... Obviously, we've had quite longer lulls throughout this heat, but also the fact that we've only got two-person heats now. Normally, when we have the four-person heats, there's a lot more surfing going down, and with two-person heats, the women in the water can just be a little bit more patient and trying to pick off those good ones when they come through rather than maybe catching something that they're forced into or have to sit down the beach or inside further. Surfers in the lineup just waiting for those sets to roll through. We've had a fair few rain squirrels come through this morning i think we've finally got that weather it's it's held off for quite a while for us but thinking of everybody on the north coast we know that there's quite a bit of flooding and it's actually devastating and heartbreaking to see what's been happening up the north coast so sending love and best wishes to everybody that may be tuning in that's experiencing the floods up north we're down to just under two minutes on the clock this is, of course, quarterfinal heat number one of the women. Charlie Hurst trying to scratch into that one and just unable to take off. She'll be looking to replace the 2.75 from her scoreline and just make that little bit harder for the surfer in blue. If you were Charlie in this heat, Britt, what would your take? Charlie Hurst in the red now on the back foot chasing a 3.66 and it looks as though that might be all she wrote for the surfer in red. Wow. Mad Max Minute coming to bite one once again so Charlie Hurst just getting pipped at the post by Elise Cooper there so Elise will be through to the semi-finals and uh, yeah she'll be stoked with that result and hope to keep her momentum going she certainly will be we will have quarterfinal heat number two up next Jade Wheatley Sarah Baum will go to a short commercial break for the Gage Roads Bruco Port Stevens Pro will join you back here in a short moment after this break And welcome back to the Gage Roads Port Stephens Pro. We are around at One Mile Beach this morning. Bit of a stormy morning here at the amazing One Mile Beach. We are into quarterfinal number two of the Women's QS 1000 event. My name's Cooper Chapman. I'm joined in the booth by Nathan Riveland. How are you, bro? It's nice to get Good in the coat. booth. Bit of a slow start getting in this webcast truck and the whole team set up here. It's been pouring rain all night. We all know how... It, crazy this weather's been in Australia on the East Coast right now, so sending our best thoughts up to the North Coast of New South Wales and Queensland with the floods going on up there, but we've got a day of competition to get through here, finals day. Who's yeah. been impressing you so far? Yeah, oh, all the all the surfing on offer has been absolutely epic. Um, it was good to see fellow com uh, fellow commentators in yourself and Britt both making your heats, and uh, yeah, looking forward to calling the action a bit later when you guys are in the water, but uh, yeah. There's been so many standouts in the drawer, and um, this heat's going to be an absolute cracker with yeah Jade Wheatley in the red, obviously sort of her first run at the QS, like we were mentioning just before, and uh, 
quarterfinal finish, um, and she's rampaging through. So uh, she's doing really well against Sarah Baum, who's a uh, QS veteran and has had a lot of experience behind it. Absolutely. Sarah is an incredible surfer from over in South Africa, coming over, spending a lot of time now here in Australia, calling it home. And yeah, Jade Wheatley, she's a coach up at Surfing Australia. I've been doing a bit of work with her actually over the last year and she said she was a little bit nervous coming into this series. First time she's given it a bit of a crack and showing what she's capable of here. She does have a really strong forehand, so she'll fe be feeling right at home in these right, this right-hand point break that we have here this morning at One Mile Beach. So, yeah, action-packed day ahead, quarterfinals of the women. Next quarterfinal, we will have the probably most experienced competitor in this draw, Philip Randerson, in the red, coming up against Ellie Harrison. And in the last heat, last event's winner, Nixie Ryan, carrying on that form versing our fellow commentator, Brittany Nichols. So, stacked quarterfinals. Yeah, absolutely cracking heats. So, yeah, super excited for those last two women's quarters. And then we'll be uh, flying into the men's quarterfinals. And, yeah, we'll be getting towards the pointy end and uh, starting to crown our, crown our event champs here at Port Stephens at uh, one mile. But I really think that this heat, um, if, if Jay Wheatley can get on a couple of the set waves, it's definitely going to play into her, adv into her advantage. She... Um, attacked some big sections at Barubi on the first day. She was one of the standouts, so um, I think that's going to play into her into her, uh, into her favour. Yeah, she's going to have her hands full, though, as we mentioned. Sarah Baum. Correct. Very well-seasoned veteran. She has been on this QS for quite some time, knocking on the door of qualification many years. So we'll wait and see how this one panned out, pans out. A little bit of a slow start. There is quite difficult conditions out there, but... I mean, I was just out there quite recently in my round of 16 yep. heat, and playing field is quite nice. It's sucking out across the corner here on the uh, southern corner that we have down here, but I was just speaking to Chris Enova, fellow commentator, having a watch of the conditions as we see Sarah Baum up and riding, coming deep behind the section, wrapping this one back around, straight off the foam. Nice little rebound there. Yeah, Brings her into the perfect spot for that one, but unfortunately oh. catching a rail there, so she'll be back out the back. But yeah, as I was saying, I was just speaking to Chris, and... We are watching just out wide of where everyone's been sitting, and there were some really good waves. So look for the competitors to start shifting around the lineup a little bit. It is our first day here at One Mile for finals day. We've had a bit of a storm come through. A lot yeah. of rain last night. A bit of a wind direction change. It is southerly, southeast wind right now. So tricky conditions, but nonetheless, there's some really high-quality waves if you can pick the right ones. There is. Britt and I were alluding to it in the last heat, but, yeah, we saw... Um, Early in the morning with the uh, men's and women's round four, when the uh, surfers were on the set waves, that's where the scoring potential is. And like you spoke about, a bit further down the beach, if you can get one of those sets, connects really nicely. I did like that rebound from Sarah Borman. She set herself up so nicely for the next two sections, but going down, which is it was a bit of a mistake, but she'll bounce back, I'm sure. Yeah, she really could have capitalised on that one and got herself off to a quick start, but she'll be back out the back. Right now we see Jade Wheatley out the back by herself. We are into man-on-man -man or woman-on-woman -woman heats for the quarterfinals onwards. Right now, still 20-minute heats for the quarterfinals. We will be jumping up to 25-minute heats in the semifinals and 30-minute heat for the finals. So plenty of action to come. We obviously could not be here without our amazing sponsors. This is the Vistler New South Wales Pro Surf Series. Stop number two. Stop number three of the Australia Oceana Qualifying Series and everybody fighting for those all-important spots on the World Surf League Challenger Series. Coming up later in the year at Snapper Rocks' first event. Very exciting. I'm sure everybody wants to go at Snapper. But this is the Gage Roads Port Stephens Pro. Supporting partners of this event, Port Stephens Council, Newcastle Airport, just down the road here from Port Stephens. Great little airport. Also, Destination New South Wales, bringing us every single great replay of all the best rides of the day. Also, the World Surf League and Surfing New South Wales. Massive shout-out to Surfing New South Wales. The last week has not been an easy, yeah. an easy week. Yeah, setup's been tough. Yeah, the setup crew have been working tirelessly. Some serious soggy biscuits out there right now because they've been copying an absolute drenching. So a big shout out to our crew at Surfing New South Wales. You guys have been doing an amazing job. And our broadcast crew making sure we can get this live vision too. Also, PRD Real Estate, Port Stevens. Big thank you to them for getting behind this local event. And also Chaos Surf Shop. So great to have all the local community supporting this event getting their names on the banners and, yeah, really supporting grassroots surfing. And as we keep touching on, we cannot forget Volkswagen and Mad Max for putting on this webcast. It's so good to have live surfing on our KO and YouTube and World Surf League app screens because I know when I'm not competing, 
I'm watching and it's great fun. Oh, it's awesome to watch and just to see these this grassroots Australian tour. Um, yeah, we're talking to a couple of the competitors over the last uh, few days and events and uh, just how good it is to have a good band of Australian and Oceania surfers together. And here's Jay Wheatley floating that first section. The powerful natural footer just unable to get down the uh, bottom of that one. So she'll be spewing on that occasion and uh, she'll be heading back out the back with just under 12 minutes remaining. Yeah, we'll see if she kind of tries to stick a little bit wide here. This is what me and Chris were talking about just before when we were watching it from live. There is quite a few nice wide ones. So we are talking about making sure when you paddle back out, trying to paddle back out around the lineup. You could get lucky and pick something up off the end. So we'll see if Jay can find something over there. She just picked up a two-point right on that last one. She's going to be back out there. So anyone's game here with 11 minutes and 30 seconds remaining in this one. We do have Sarah Baum out in the lead. And takes away with this Destination New South Wales replay, Nath. What yeah, happened here? so Jay Wheatley's last one. Floated that first section just trying to get around the uh, sudsy white water. And uh, she was just unable to generate a bit of momentum into that next section. And it looked like there was another good little rappy bowl on the inside. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, Jay unable to get through that one. So she scored a two-point ride for that. And uh, she's ro hot on Sarah Baum's heels. But, uh, yeah, only need both surfers really only putting up the uh, small scores at this stage. Yeah, something I noticed as well out there, I felt like I kind of surfed a little bit far out in front of the wave. There was moments exactly like Jade just said where you feel like you have to chase it down the line, but with this swell, it kind of sucks back into the Hugging pocket. into it. You yeah, it really that, com yeah. It comes back, so it can be a bit deceiving, and I know exactly what happened there with Jade. She would have seen something down the line, thought the energy was moving a bit further in front of her, and like I said, that happened to me quite a few times. I found it very difficult out there to get up into that five and six point range and I know I'm going to be needing a lot more coming up in the quarter final against Kobe Clements a little bit later so a little bit of a change in tactic it's hard to get a free I didn't get a free surf in this morning so my my free surf was my heat and I feel like I maybe worked the line up out a little bit and nice to sneak through so Britt was saying the exact same thing like not having a free surf before the comp and it was, it was a bit tricky obviously with the location change so but both of you marching through yeah, I can't believe it. Surfing New South Wales have done an incredible job to get this event kicked off at 7 a.m. with a change of location, a full setup in the rain. Unbelievable effort yeah, yeah, from, it, from the Surfing New South Wales guys. So yeah, it's a phenomenal effort. So big thank you out. to Surfing New South Wales. I know Lukey Madden will be at home watching on his screen, warm from his lounge room, and I'm sure he's very proud of his <laughs> team. So shout out to Lukey Madden. You're doing an amazing job. Not only is Surfing New South Wales putting on these amazing events, Surfing New South Wales have so many other great activations. One that I really, <coughs> pardon me, one that I really like talking about is the Mental Health 360 program, something very close to my heart and something that I am actually a partner with with the Good Human Factory, my mental well-being workshop. So Surfing New South Wales Mental Health 360 is a surf community driven program connecting board riders clubs, surf schools and high and high schools in communities affected by drought, bushfires and COVID-19. As part of the program, Surfing New South Wales has teamed up with five surfing mental health organisations. Batir, amazing organisation down on the northern beaches. The Good Humour Factory, that's my little one. Man Anchor and the Rise Foundation, who will all be working together through the sport of surfing with a holistic view to create awareness and provide ongoing referrals and support pathways for the community in New South Wales and the surf community with their mental health. So I know how hard Surfing New South Wales focus on that. And it's really special to know that we're putting a bit of focus outside of just surfing. Unreal. Yes, the, obviously the mental health uh, atmosphere is super, super important and uh, always important, but even more so uh, even after the COVID-19 sort of debacle with everything, a lot of lockdowns. Um, it's really important that uh, if you are struggling or anything that you really speak up, you talk to someone and... Uh, yeah, there's always a listening ear out there and a friend to uh, lean on. So. Absolutely, and Sarah Baum with that epic rebound once again, bringing it all the way back. She knows to keep it tight in the pocket and bringing this one back around once again. Let's see if it stands up for her on the inside. Looks like it is right here, so bang. Nice squared up backside turn there, building a bit of speed and a oh. huge floater. Can she hang on? Absolutely she can. She loves that one. That was so. great. I love that. We'll wait and see what the judges think of that. A little bit of a sleepy start. I like the rebound, a bit of a fin drift which was really nice. And then she got to square up for a big two-turn combo. I think the judges are going to eat this one up. Yeah, she's looking super spicy out there. I don't know what boards she's riding, but uh, yeah, that looked like it was holding super well through her bottom turn. And uh, here we've got a little wave replay, thanks to Destination New South Wales and uh, powered by Volkswagen. Yeah, the uh, rebound off the whitewater is looking super cool. And uh, yeah, she 
it's probably the longer wa longest wave we've seen of this uh, of the quarterfinal draw in the women so far. Um, really linking this one nicely all the way through to the uh, inside, getting a good whack there, and absolutely love this float at the end. Rock and roll floater, so beautiful uh, finish there for Sarah Borm, and I reckon the judges will reward her for that. We'll wait and see what the judges think of that one, and I like the second last turn. My dad's probably out there listening, and he likes to call it the check fade snap. She didn't just come off the bottom. She kind of faded a little bit before so she could square up, and right there, there it is, 7.5 last wave of Sarah Baum. That takes her way up into the lead in this quarterfinal matchup with Jade Wheatley. This is heat number two, quarterfinal number two, should I say, of the QS 1000's Gage Roads Port Stevens Pro. Sarah Baum out in the lead with a 7.5 and a 3.75. She has a stranglehold on this one with six and a half minutes remaining. Jade Wheatley down in second with priority, though. She just has a two and a one, looking for a 9.25, but she'll be looking to get something up into that five to six point range to really fight her way back into the heat. Six minutes remaining. There still is enough time for two waves, so look for her to try and pick something up quite soon so she's not looking for that massive score at the end of the heat. Yeah, I think Jade would have heard that score drop from Sarah Baum going, oh, gee, okay, pressure's on a little bit. I need to get going. Overly, only has the two and the one at this stage, but as we know and as we've seen the last couple of uh, events, she's very capable of getting a big score. So hopefully she can find some opportunity in the last six minutes of this heat. Yeah, she's very capable, Jade, and she's been putting in a lot of work with her surfing. She does have one of the meanest forehand hacks if she picks up the right section. So hopefully she gets an opportunity here, but time is ticking away right now. We'll wait and see if the ladies can pick up some nice waves to finish. Sarah Barmy is looking to drop that 3.75. If she can get rid of that and bump it up to something over that 4.5 range, she will put Jade Wheatley in what we like to call combo land in the surf world. So with 5 minutes 20 seconds remaining, Sarah Barmy would be paddling back out in that rip right up the southern end. Nice easy paddle out today here at the beautiful One Mile Beach in the Port Stephens region. Yeah, absolutely beautiful region. Um, being from Victoria myself, I haven't had the pleasure of being up here in uh, in the Port Stephens area. It's absolutely beautiful, and even the location that we were at the last couple of days at Barubi, the uh, desert meeting the ocean, it was a very strange but beautiful landscape that it was really unlike anywhere in Australia. And One Mile as well, beautiful place. And uh, even with this wind and weather playing a little bit of havoc, it's just as beautiful. Yeah, and there we see, as I was just touching on, Got a, there's a crazy rock formation. When you paddle out, it's so gorgeous to look at. You kind of get dragged out next to this rock formation up the southern end here, and it's really beautiful. Have a look at it right there. Yeah, it so, is a really nice So using that rip, anyone who isn't a surfer sees rips as a dangerous thing, but as surfers and having great surf knowledge, obviously these competitors out in the water right now have extensive ocean knowledge and know we use those rips next to the rocks to paddle out, it actually gives us a lift, like an elevator out the back, but for anyone who isn't a surfer, for anybody who isn't comfortable in the ocean, it's really important that we avoid those rips. So, absolutely, a little, little bit of a fun fact there. Another great um, little activation that Just surfing, to yeah, surfing New South Wales have so many awesome community programs, and one of them is Surfers Rescue. And Surfers Rescue 24-7 is a free CPR and board rescue course for any recreational surfers in New South Wales, WA, and Victoria. Beach usage, whether for sport, recreation, or comp competition, comes with an inherent risk. The program aims to minimise the risk through the provision of free training to the New South Wales surfing community. So make sure you check out Surfing New South Wales on Instagram. Check out their website, and you can look at all of these amazing community programs. Another one that is awesome is the Her Wave program. Surfing New South Wales Her Wave platform is the first ever female program designed to embrace all women in the water. The objective of the program is to improve the lives and health of female of all ages, abilities and ethnicities in New South Wales. And with International Women's Day coming up next Tuesday, it's a great opportunity to head over to that Surfing New South Wales website, check out all these community programs and see how you can get involved because we're so lucky and so privileged with the amazing work that Surfing New South Wales have been putting on, not, to ju not just to put on all these great Vistula New South Wales Surf Series events, but also all the community programs. Yeah, it's absolutely integral. And the Surface Rescue, the Her Wave program, uh, the mental health stuff as well, all, all super important. As we see, Sarah Baum getting uh, her third wave of the heat. She's already tucked away a 7.5 and a 3.75, and she's doing a good job at trying to replace that low score on this one. Getting another nice hanger off the top. Really squaring up. That was beautiful turn off the top. And uh, she's looking super spicy and in control here. Wouldn't be surprised if she, uh, well, she'll, 
most likely put Jade in the combo situation here and uh, with two minutes to go, it looks like she's uh, going to be in a pretty good spot. Yeah, I feel like that's going to be the nail in the coffin as we see. Bit of a fight back wave here for Jade Wheatley. A little bit wider on the bank. This is where me and Chris were seeing some good ones. So if this stands up on the inside, look for a dynamite turn. And here we go. Coming hard off the bottom. Throws it up into the lip. A little bit caught there. She might get around and get another section here. A bit late to this one. And it's been the story of the heat for Jay Wheatley, unfortunately. Sarah Baum is about to lock in quite a good score, I think. Jay Wheatley is going to lock in her best, but I think it's going to be a little too late for Jade. But it is a great result. Quarterfinal finish here. A few points towards that qualifying series, Australia Oceana, as we pick up this replay, thanks to Destination New South Wales of Sarah Baum. Absolutely love the uh, surfing that Sarah did on this one. Um, really showing that QS experience. And like we were speaking ab about before, just squaring up on all those sections, not rushing out in front of it, realising that the uh, potential is through with those uh, critical sections. So looking at her watch going, yep, a couple of minutes to go. I think I'm in a good spot. Yeah, and then we see Jay Wheatley picking this one a bit further out, a bit bigger wave, but kind of missing the bank at the start just a little bit. Almost looked like it was going to stand up there, but once again, it goes a little bit flat. So a bit of a sleepy start to this one, and she finds one nice section on the inside here, just weaving her way through. Gets a little bit sudsy. I like she comes hard off the bottom here. That lip kind of crumbled just before she got there, unfortunately, for Jade, and then just too late to the last section. So... Looks like we're going to see Jade Wheatley bow out of competition, unfortunately, in this heat as we come into that Mad Max minute. We've seen that last score of Sarah Baum, 6.75. And right now, Jade Wheatley backed hers up with a 4.25. Kept herself out of combo land, but Needs just. A <laughs> <laughs> Needs a perfect 10-point ride to go to first. So looks as if with 20 seconds to go and Jade paddling out, she's going to bow out of this one. And Sarah Baum's going to... March on through to the semi-finals with some epic form, putting up one of the better, best heat totals of the day. Yeah, Sarah's looking very nice, heading into semi-final number one. And coming up next, we will have Philip Randerson in the red and Ellie Harrison in the blue. This is the QS 1000 event at Barubi. Well, actually, we're at One Mile Beach today. This is a Gage Roads Port Stevens Pro. My name's Cooper Chapman. I'm with Nathan Riveland, and we'll be right back after this break. You. Some say we've got engine oil in our veins. That and a fair bit of dust. Sure, these wild utes are hard work, but it's no job. The roar of them. Pure. Take some rare skills to settle one. A band of brothers and sisters. Where man learns from machine, learns from man. And those that visit are transformed as much as the V6 Amarox. It's like this place rubs off on them. you got to see it to believe it. The only Ute reared for the road. Welcome back to the Gage Roads Port Stevens Pro. This is quarterfinal heat number three of the women's event. My name's Cooper Chapman. I am joined in the booth by my good friend, Chris Enova. Waves are looking pretty fun out there, Chris. What do you reckon? They are, they are. And it's just uh, it's starting to get better and better. We can see the lineup starting to sort itself out. Obviously, that wind overnight kind of messed things up a bit. But as this swell's starting to fill in and you know, that the wind's starting to, you know, 
kind of really settle in. We can see the line starting to march down the point here at one mile a lot better, and uh, it's really starting to come alive. We saw that last heat there. Sarah Bourne found some really nice waves, and I think uh, this is going to set up for a really nice finals day here. We got to surf this same spot last year in the back end of the event, and you know it really came alive on the right tide. So I'm really excited to see this tide filter out. And uh, we're going to move through these quarterfinals into the men's quarterfinals and then obviously the semis and the finals. So big day of action ahead. And well, Coop, out in the lineup right now, who do we got? We've got Philip Ranson out there in the red. Local girl just down the road from Newcastle, not too far for her to come. And we see it almost having a bit of a look there, choosing not to take that one. Ellie Harrison in the blue. And just like we were talking about, Chris, there's some really nice waves. A little bit wider. There's kind of a few peaks right now that you can sit on. Sarah Baum seemed to find a few incredible ones in that last heat. How did it look live from down in front of it? Yeah, it looks really good. I mean, there's there's definitely multiple opportunities out there. I was uh, saw in the heat before with Elise Cooper and I think it was Nixie. Um, Charlie Hurst. Charlie Hurst, sorry. Yeah, they uh, they got a caught a little bit deep up the point. I've noticed there's two spots on this bank. There's the deeper spot right next to the rocks, but there's a really good wider section that if you can, you know, bite the bullet and go and sit over there or maybe paddling back out under priority, opportunity to find some waves paddling back out. Uh, that wide section there really does offer some good scoring potential. The waves tend to steepen up a little bit. They don't bend back towards the point as much. They seem to run down the beach more. Um, and then when you get to that inside section, they really stand up. So I think there's some great opportunity there for the surface to mix it up between the two, kind of the two peaks, would you say? Um, but as the tide's dropping out, we have seen the medium-sized ones breaking kind of in the middle of the peak and they are hitting the wide section. So we're just going to wait and see what this tide does as it drops out. And obviously it's exciting because it's a new, a new new location. Everyone's pretty much getting their first surfs in out here, obviously, today. Mm. Um, no one's been free surfing here at all. They've been at Barubi the all week. So uh, everyone's kind of, you know, feeling it out, vibing it out. Everyone's starting to get the hang of it now and kind of learning on the fly, I guess. Yeah, I was just saying in that last heat, as we see up and riding Ellie Harrison, wrapping it back to the pocket. She's found a nice bowl here, driving through that big carve, and that one closes out on her. So we'll wait and see what score comes in there. But yeah, I was just saying to Nathan in that last heat, my first surf here this year was in my heat and <laughs> didn't quite get a chance to free surf. We have been starting quite early because we do have plenty of heats to get through during the day. And I think a lot of surfers' first surf out here may have been in their heat. We were here for finals day last year of, the <coughs> of this Port Stephens event. And, yeah, some incredible waves last year. And once again, we've got some right-hand point break waves, which we all dream of. It's really nice to get opportunity when you're surfing in these qualifying series events. So often we do get quite small, tricking conditions with not too big of a waiting period. But it's been nothing but great waves, this whole three-day event here at Port Stephens. We had two amazing days at Barubi yesterday and the day before. And, yeah, finals day right now. We've got this bit of southerly oh, wow. onshore wind, but conditions are still really fun in the corners. We pick up this replay of Ellie Harrison, Rolling in a little bit early to this one, having a cut back, nice and smooth. I like this turn. She really drove through it. Looked like she was almost going to bog, but kept the rail straight through the turn, and then that one closed out. Came in just as a three-point ride, but good signs if she can pick up on one that runs down the beach a little longer. Yeah, and well, you know, you see this heat right here. It's obviously a bit of the Master the Apprentice type style. Philip Randerson, very you know experienced, long-time veteran in the com competitive scene. We saw her get a wild card into the Newcastle CT event last year. We know she's uh, been on the QS a long time, and she's come up just short so many times at that qualification. So, you know, you would say the experience of Philip Anderson a big favourite in this event. But uh, the likes of Ellie Harrison, she, you know, she hasn't really done a lot of QS com like competitions in the past few years. She's been competing, but that's a great turn for Philip Anderson. You know, last last few years with Ellie, you know, she's a uh, in 2017, she was 379th in the world. 2018, 327, 28. She's only doing one event those two years. So now, in 2021, she did a few events. Didn't really get better than a 17th. But this year, she came off a third at Phillip Island. We'll watch this wave roll through with Philip Anderson. Nice carving turn there through the suds. Holds the rail nicely. And it sets up perfectly for this end section turn. And, well, that was a really explosive kind of fin drifting Close out maneuver there from Philip Anderson, making her way back to the rip to get back out. But Ellie Harrison, obviously, this year now getting a third at Phillip Island and then coming off a good result up there at Boomerang 13th. And now she's into a fifth place result here, minimum. So, you know, she's really going from strength to strength. And this has definitely seemed, seemed to be her breakout year. 
Absolutely, yeah. We love seeing the young competitors dipping their toes in for a few years and then really pulling the trigger and going, you know what, time to focus really hard. And it seems Ellie's doing that this year, but she does have a tough task on her hand right now. Philip Anderson opening up with a 5.5. Strong surfing. I really like that second turn that she held it all the way around, bounced off the foam, and obviously that last turn was money. So opening up with a 5.5, Philip Anderson's going to be happy with that. Paddling back out in that little southern corner. Strong rip in the corner. We do have coming up in the next quarterfinal, Nixie Ryan, last event winner up at Boomerang Beach, taking on Brittany Nickel, whose voice you've been hearing sitting next to myself and Chris. The last couple of events here in the commentary booth. So the commentators having a good little run here at the event at Port Stephens, the Gage Roads, Port Stephens Pro. Yeah, well you would say they probably watch more heat than anyone in the draw. So maybe getting to figure out, you know, the intricate details just with that experience of watching all the heats unfold and seeing what is happening in the lineup, breaking it down properly. And, you know, it's great to see Britt. She's been a long time competitor on the QS and uh, making her way through the draw into the quarterfinals. That's going to be a great heat. And then, yeah, I'm um, tell you what's going to be some great heats. I've just been handed the heat sheet for the men's quarterfinals. And before we go to that, I'm going to quickly get in touch with the last heat winner who had a phenomenal heat. Took a while to get started, but we've just been told we're going to be waiting one second until we get some audio for Sarah Baum. While we wait for that audio, I'll let you know about these men's quarterfinals. Doesn't get much more stacked than this. So quarterfinal number one, we've got Harley Ross Webster, or Harley Ross versus Kalani Ball. Quarterfinal number two, Chris Zaffers, Joel Vaughan. Quarterfinal number three, Mikey Madonna, Reef Hazelwood. And quarterfinal number four, myself and Kobe Clements. So it doesn't get much more stacked than that. There is not an easy heat. And no. we're going to see some huge scores, dare I say, as these conditions continue to get better as this tide draws out at the beautiful One Mile Beach in the corner here. Yeah, I feel like it has been an easy heat since the round of 64. It's been stacked and obviously, you know, so many good competitors falling out of the draw already, but we have you know, some stacked quarterfinals and it's setting up to be a really exciting finals day in both the men's and women's event. 10 minutes on the clock here. Philip Anderson out in front with that single 5.5. Ellie Harrison in second three-point ride and a 0 0.6. So an important next score to lock in for Ellie, you would say, holding on to priority here. And Philzy looks like she's going to get busy and keep putting the pressure on. No time Wasted here for Philippa. Straight back into another wave. Wrapping this one's around. Getting into the power pocket. I like this. Nice and steep there. She's just wrapping this one through. Spent a lot of time on some point breaks. Probably at Merriweather too. And that right hander. And I know she spent a lot of time up the coast too. Surfing those point breaks up there. and Looking very comfortable. Philippa Anderson. Yeah, great flow on that wave. She's really connecting the dots quite well. There, is been, there has been some downtime on her waves, but she's really kept her flow. She's not standing there and pumping. She's moving from rail to rail and moving all the way through to the inside. We see Ellie Harrison out the back by herself with priority, having a little sniff at that one, unfortunately. Not getting into it. Philip Anderson, last wave, 4.75. So quick start. 10 minutes and 40 seconds gone in this one, and Philippa has taken out a really quick early lead as we see Ellie Harrison out the back, the younger competitor, a little bit lost right now, just with a three-point ride, but she does have priority. She's still got plenty of time, nine minutes on the clock. So we'll wait for a fight, wa fight back wave here for Ellie Harrison as we pick up another wave replay powered by Destination New South Wales here. This is Philip Anderson, first turn. Brings it around, keeps a flow on it. Didn't give it too much of a steep section. I like this one. She holds through here, banks off the whitewater, and then gets a nice square up here by hitting that whitewater. It put her right back deep. I like this one. She holds it all the way around, gets the rebound and then gets that one last nice little turn. So 4.75 there for Philip Anderson. That was a nice little wave just to back up her wave. She doesn't want to be looking for something right at the end of the heat, as we've seen plenty of competitors get a little bit stuck needing something right at the end. Yes, they have. And, well, there it is, Philip Anderson keeping the pressure on. So backing up her five with a 4.75, 5.5, 4.75, and... Well, it's making that job just that little bit harder now for Ellie Harrison. Looking for a 7.25 now. And we can see the experience of Philippa just under priority, finding waves and keeping Ellie honest as well to make sure she has a look at every single wave here with priority. And uh, well, Philippa understanding the situation, knowing that she just wants to extend that lead, make that number a little bit harder for Ellie to obtain. And with Ellie just holding a three-point three point ride, 
She's going to want to start getting moving soon. Probably want to slot in two more numbers, you would say, in this heat. And this is a nice looking wave. Got a bit of size to it. We'll see if this one's going to hold up for her down the line. Yeah, there have been some that double up. So we'll wait and see. What has she seen down the line? It looks like now she's starting to get a bit of open face. Brings that first turn around a little bit. Pumping to get around this one. It might stand up on the inside for her. Just to bounce off the foam. Not a very high quality wave, unfortunately, for Ailey. She waited a long time for that one too. So we might see her paddle back out along the edge of the um, outside of the right rather than the rip. And as we were talking about before, Chris, there is some good opportunities over there. So she might get lucky on the way back out without priority as we see Philip Anderson P just popped up next to her name that means she does have priority she's just hit back out the back so Philip will be out the back looking to put a bit more pressure on better that 4.75 you can see her sitting there waving out it's very difficult to hear right now we have a strong onshore wind I was out there recently and unless you're sitting very still listening very closely it is hard to hear the update from the beach commentators and as surfers we really base our heat on the commentary it makes a big difference when you can hear what scores you have you can really change your tactics and change your strategy if you don't know what scores you have you're kind of surfing a little bit blind and it makes it a bit hard to know where you're at in the heat know what sort of scores you need because if you need a really big score you've got to push a little bit harder but if you only need something small it kind of gives you an indication on what you need to do on your next wave and for philippa what she's listening out for right now she wants to know her two scores and that way she knows what the judges are scoring her waves like. She knows what she did on her first one, what she did on her second one. She'll hear the scores of both, and it'll allow her to maybe try and push a little bit harder than those waves if she wants to get up higher than that 5.5 mark. Yeah, definitely. We see we saw Philippa then we saw her making her way a little bit wider, so maybe a bit of experience coming to play here, knowing that Ellie has only got a small score locked in. Philippa puts herself, you know, relatively close to Ellie. She can make sure that she's on the next best wave that comes through and. Well, Ellie, like we said, is probably going to be looking for two more scores here if she wants to win this heat because we can probably bank that in the next five minutes, Philippa will extend her lead at some point. So Ellie got a nice left, a rare left at the uh, at the point break here. We'll see if the judges, you know, like this. A few nice backside whips. Obviously going to grant the grain a bit here at a, at a right point break, but finding one of those wider, wider kind of rights that break back into the point. So... With obviously offering a left on it. Yeah, she wants to maybe get back over and use that little elevator paddle back out. Trying to find her way back into the heat. We'll see what the judges think of this. We haven't seen a left ridden today. So she does a nice little first turn just to get to the bottom of the wave. Hooks it around on the second one. Holds onto it a bit. Not super clean. And then a little bounce off the foam. So we'll wait and see what the judges think of that one. It's going to be an interesting score as it is the first left we've seen today. It was quite a small wave. But it was more of a positioning wave, I think, for Ellie. She might be able to just edge over that three. We'll wait and see. 3.85. So that brings her a little bit more into the heat. It takes that requirement of a 7.25 down by 0.85 for her. So she's going to be looking for something in that 6.4 range. And we'll wait and see if she gets an opportunity to get something like that. It is always nice bringing that requirement down. It means you don't have to push quite as hard on that next wave. Yeah, that is right. And Philippa would have heard that situation. Oh. So, like you said, looking for a 6.4 now. Mathematics is in <laughs> your heritage, coop. <laughs> That's pretty good, wasn't it? That was right on the money. So, good uh, good brain Quick mathematics math. there. Yeah, yeah. On, the, on the fly. That's good to see. And four minutes on the clock. But Philippa will be sitting out there now. She'll hear that number if she can. You know, we said hearing the scores is a little bit hard. But she's sitting still out there. So, I reckon she should be able to hear that number. And... Uh, She's got two options here, Coop. She either, you know, she either plays the patience game, waits for Ellie to get back out the back and just make sure she's on the next best wave, which I think would probably be a good option. Or she tries to roll the dice quickly here and extend her lead further and put more pressure onto Ellie. But she doesn't need to catch a wave. She's got the lead, you mm. know, so she can hold on to that lead. She can stay patient, wait for Ellie to burn some more time off the clock as she paddles out. Well, there we go. She is waiting for the situation. So maybe she hasn't heard yet, but... She's probably just waiting to hear what the score of Ellie is, so yep. she has a good indication. Okay, Ellie needs a 6.4. As long as I can sit near her for this next three minutes, and if anything looks like it's got the opportunity for over a six, I'll take it off her. Like you were touching on, she doesn't necessarily need another wave, but if something of really high quality comes through right now, she's going to have to take it because she is only trying to better a 4.75. If she can bump that up to a 5.75 or 6.75, she's going to make the task really hard for Ellie. So... We'll wait and see. Now, Ellie looks like she's waving her hands too. She wants an update. So we've got both competitors out the back. Three minutes remaining. 
Ellie Harrison is looking for something a little bit small here. I think she's going to need a good set wave. 6.4 would be the best wave of this heat. Yeah, if you're Philip Anderson, you can see Ellie sitting close to the rocks over there. I'd be very happy with that because the waves closer to the rocks, you know, they've been offering fours and fives all day, but they haven't been offering those bigger, steeper sections. And I think we've only seen one really good score coming from that deeper section. That was Kobe Clements' wave earlier in the day. But a lot of the other bigger scores have come a tiny bit wider. So, you know, Philip Anderson... You can see her experience right now sitting right near Ellie. She's going to be on whatever wave comes through. And you can see Ellie now frantically trying to get the situation. She wants to know what she needs to take the win and move on to the quarterfinals. But it is the experience of Philip Anderson with a bit of a stranglehold on this one right now with just those, those two mid-range scores and Ellie holding the pocket threes, searching for a 6.4 as it comes down to just under two minutes remaining, Coop. Yeah, this is, of course, the stop number two of the Vistler New South Wales Pro, Sur Pro Surf Series 2022. This is the Gage Roads Port Stephens Pro. We couldn't be doing this without our amazing supporting partners, Port Stephens Council, Newcastle Airport, Destination New South Wales, the World Surf League, PID Real Estate, Port Stephens, Chaos Surf Shop, and, of course, Surfing New South Wales, who have been dealing with that rain. It was pouring rain as we started the day this morning it's cleaned up a little bit now it's looking quite nice out there right now to be honest we can see a bit of sun on the foam as we see this big set washing through and also mad max and volkswagen for bringing you this webcast so competitors copying a couple on the head here as we're coming down very close to this mad max minute which we have seen plenty of action over the last few days we will be seeing hopefully a few more waves from the competitors if something after this cleanup set comes through yeah that's right coming down to the Mad Max Minute. We'll see that burrito start spinning. There it is. And Ellie Harrison looking for a 6.4 to, well, you'd have to say upset one of the biggest names in the draw in Philippa Anderson. But it is Philippa using her experience. And we can see her there. She is closer in than Ellie. We'll have to see. Did she catch a wave there? Or she's just paddled under a set maybe? Uh, she didn't. That's a bit she, of tactics. Yeah, you so sit underneath and then sit, if... Yeah, sit down the line and if Ellie does take off on a wave, it's going to give you the opportunity to take off on that wave after she stood up. So that's a very experienced move there for Philip Anderson. Here comes a wave and it does look like it's got a good steep wall on it. Where is Philip Anderson? Is she going to use her priority here? Oh, she couldn't get she it. Couldn't get it. One get it. So big first turn. Is this going to reform for her? Doesn't look like she's going to get around it. Maybe something on the inside. Strong first turn. We'll wait and see if this one opens back up for Ellie Harrison. She's fighting her way to the end. Might give her one more. Big turn up into the lip. Can she hang on in the layback? Unfortunately not. And that is going to spell the end of the event for Ellie Harrison. Good result. Quarterfinal finish. We will be seeing Philip Anderson marching on through to the semifinals. Don't go anywhere. We have Nixie Ryan and Brittany Nickel coming up right after this break in the Gage Roads Port Stephens Pro. Some say we've got engine oil in our veins. Smell that in a fair bit of dust. Sure, these wild utes are hard work, but it's no job. The roar of them. Pure. Take some rare skills to settle one. A band of brothers and sisters. Where man learns from machine, learns from man. Those that visit are transformed almost as much as the V6 Amarox. It's like this place rubs off on them. You gotta see it to believe it. 
something only you'd reared for the road. Welcome back. This is, of course, the Gage Roads, Port Stevens Pro. We are here at the beautiful One Mile Beach. Been raining all morning. Sun's come out right now. We are up to quarterfinal, heat number four of the QS 1000 event. We have Nixie Ryan in the red, last event winner up at Boomerang Beach in some serious form right now. Coming up against Brittany Nickel, one of our fellow commentators, marching on through this draw and having a great old time. My name's Cooper Chapman. I'm joined in the booth by Nathan Rivland. How good's this one going to be? Yeah, Coop, absolutely can't wait. Obviously, Nixie and, and Britt both in some epic form. Uh, Nixie taking out the last event, the Carve Great Lakes Pro, down at Boomerang where she was absolutely rampaging, just surfing so well and... Uh, well beyond her years with that powerful forehand hack. So, and Britt Nickel with a with another powerful forehand uh, hack. So I can't wait for this one. Both very powerful, strong surfers that are uh, definitely deserve a spot in the quarterfinals and have been standouts the whole event. Yeah, I'm excited to watch this one. There's been some really fun waves the last few heats. We saw Philip Ranson surf a very strong and strategic heat in that last one, taking down Ellie Harrison in the first heat. We saw. I believe Charlie Hurst made through the first heat. Yes. Yep. And then Correct. we had Sarah Baum with a very, very strong performance. So this is the last quarterfinal right now in the water. We'll be picking up our last semifinalist. So in the first semifinal, we will see Charlie Hurst versus Sarah Baum. In the second one, Philip Randerson will be taking on the winner of this heat. So we're getting down to the very pointy end of this competition. A few hours left today, so don't go anywhere. This is going to be a really exciting afternoon of waves. It looks like the tide's getting lower, conditions are getting better, and it looks like it's cleaned up a little bit right now. You're just out of the booth. How was it looking yeah. down there? You know, it definitely, it has definitely cleaned up, Coop. It's, uh, the faces are definitely looking a bit more lively. There's some more critical opportunity. It's not sort of the, the tide might have been chewing it up a little bit earlier, but as the tide's dropped out, it's definitely getting a bit more bowly, and you can see some of the waves are running a lot longer through as well. Yeah, you can see the face has cleaned up a lot. This morning when we were down here, the wind was literally blowing the rain completely sideways, 90 degrees rain, and the competitors were saying it was really tough. They were paddling out, copying little daggers to the face on the paddle out, whereas now the rain stopped, the conditions have cleaned up a bit, and Huey seems to be on our side because... Change, but it, yeah, probably over a year now, and it's, yeah, it's amazing. We had school sport today and yesterday, but got cancelled this morning. Um... <laughs> But yeah, it's it's yeah. I have a whole new perspective on life. I was always pretty open and like really thankful and fortunate the life that um, I've been able to live. And now, kind of yeah, I'm my own boss, so it's really nice. I get to take some time off when I need. But yeah, it's so cool just to give back to little kids because I forget how yeah lucky we are being around the ocean. And yeah, just yes, yeah, super happy with how everything's going at the moment. And take some time off to do these events. Um, I feel like I'm enjoying it a lot more because I'm like, yeah, work phone's at home. I don't have to work. <laughs> so it's good. <laughs> Unreal. Philip, it's Nathan up here in the booth. Um, coming into this series, you've had obviously a lot of great QS events uh, uh, and results over the last couple of years. What was your sort of goal coming into this series? Is it to yeah get back on the Challenger series? And I know you had some uh, CT experience last year. Tell us a bit about what your goals were coming into this event. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I was not really sure December. Uh, me and Cooper are away for the Challenger Series and I just feel I didn't perform at all for kind of the level that I, I know I surf at. So I was actually pretty low in December. Um, I wasn't sure if I wanted to get back on the board. Um, and then, yeah, I took a, a couple of weeks off. I didn't touch the surfboard. I was just working at school and then it kind of just changed, yeah, taking that time away and I got back on the board and then I was fired up again. And like you said, I've had a few CT experiences and watching all the young girls now kind of smoke the older girls. Um, yeah, it kind of shows that like anyone can do it. So that's kind of the goal again this year to do well in these um, regionals and then do the challenges again. There's a few more spots, um, one in South Africa, so that would be nice to qualify and go back home. But yeah, like I said, I was pretty low in December and it's really nice to turn that around and yeah, have a goal, but really realising um, it's yeah going to be heat by heat because I think the challenges, yeah, was... Yeah, four events back to back, so it was a bit of pressure. So just kind of learning from that. Yeah, I know all about that, Philzy. Yeah, it, was, it was a bit of a grind, and yeah. I mean, I felt the same. Maybe underperforming based on our own expectation, but it's yeah. great to see that you're back here. It's nice to have this New South Wales Vistula Surf Series, nice and local, gives us the opportunity to focus on both of our businesses, and yeah, yeah just travel <laughs> sure. locally. But I'll let you go get some rest. You're going to be coming up in semi-final number two very yeah, shortly. Awesome. So well done, Philzy. We'll see you out there very soon. Cool. Thanks. Good luck, Coops. Don't go the big ones. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs>
That well, was I don't know. Maybe now it's a time, time change. <laughs> oh, I'll work it out. <laughs> great to chat right. to Philippa. Thanks, boys. Oh, I love that. Honest yeah. conversations are so beautiful. It's so great to see people like Philippa passing on that knowledge. You really see people once they're aligned to their purpose and attached a business to their why, really get a lot out of it. And it's great to see Philippa yeah, chasing that surf school dream, sharing that knowledge and taking that bit of time off. I think it's important sometimes to reflect and really focus on what's important. And it's great to see her back here competing, looking like she's in a good headspace. And it looks like, yeah, marching on through this event, it'd be great to see her up in the final and picking up a win and really build that confidence going into the Challenger Series this year. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, her surfing's right there. And she's, uh, yeah, she's been at the higher level um, on multiple occasions. So she's, uh, yeah, really hoping she can get back there. And she's uh, looking like she's in some great form heading into the uh, semifinals. Yeah, and speaking of semi-finals, we will see one of these athletes out in the water right now. We do have Nixie Ryan in the lead in the red singlet with a 5.1 heat total. Just a four-point ride and a 1.1. A little bit of a sleepy heat for the women out there right now. Just had Chris Andover walk in the booth and let me know the conditions are changing a little bit. There is some nice wide ones. The women are sitting deep on the peak still. So we'll see what they can come up with here. Britt Nickel up and riding in the blue. So Britt just milking it back to the white water, just waiting for an opportunity to arise. On the inside, this one going a little bit soupy. Uh, she links another carve back to the wash. And see the girl, the ladies getting a couple of these smaller ones, trying to bank some mid-range scores. Um, we can see, seen in the back of the webcast, there's a couple of really nice sets coming through the lineup, nice and wide. So hopefully we'll see Nixie and Britt take advantage of that as we've got a destination New South Wales replay here of Britt Nichols' last one. Yeah, so a little bit of a smaller wave here by Britt. It is getting lower tide, so I've just been told by Chris Enover, he came in the booth and had a little whisper in my ear, and he said, tide's getting low, and over deep it is quite getting a bit smaller. So yeah. as we see Britt Nickel, that is a very small wave compared to what we've seen. Doing her best to milk all the juice out of that one, but we'll wait and see the score. I think it's going to be quite a low one, but it's going to keep her in this heat. Just a three-point ride, so she'll be back out there, and might have taken her up into the lead just for the moment right now, but we're not going to see... We'll see these scores pop up back on our screen very shortly. and Might have been a smart score, two or three. It has been super slow. Obviously, the sets are where the, where the scoring potential is. Nixie doesn't really have a backup yet, only a 1.1. She only needs a 2.5 to advance. So Britt would know that she needs to get out there and get another good score under her belt to, uh, to make sure Nixie doesn't catch her. Yeah, Nixie Ryan only looking for that 2.5. We saw her up in the last event at Boomerang Beach, I think back to her quarterfinal, or her semifinal, dare I say, against Sierra Kerr. She needed a score right at the end of the heat, and she picked it up on the buzzer. So very capable and knows how to perform under pressure. And we just have seen a score come in for Nixie Ryan, a 3.1 on her last wave. So she's jumped up into the lead, leaving Britt Nickel down in second, once again needing a 3.61. This is, of course, the Gage Roads Port Stevens Pro Stop number two on the Vista New South Wales Pro Surf Series. Quarterfinal number four for the women's. Next up, we've got the men's quarterfinals. Exciting draw coming up. We have in the next heat, Harley Ross in the red and in the blue, Kalani Ball, two seasoned competitors. Very, very experienced guys, and they can put on a massive performance. Both of them have been standouts this whole event. Kalani yeah. Ball yesterday put on a few huge scores, pocket sevens. We've seen Harley Ross put down sevens and eights all event long as well so keep an eye out for that one don't go anywhere after this heat that'll be coming up and then in quarterfinal number two we've got Chris Saffers and Joel Vaughan Joel Vaughan ratings leader and Chris Saffers a surfer who has spent time on that prime series now the challenger series and he wants to get his spot back on there and then in quarterfinal number three this one I'm looking forward to Mikey Madonna and Reef Hazelwood Reef Hazelwood, one of the most exciting surfers in Australia, and I think Mikey Madonna is going to be a big threat once he gets that breakthrough onto the Challenger Series. His surfing is very suited to the Challenger Series. He has a really nice forehand grab. Looks a little bit Mick Fanning, Ethan Ewing-esque, and today, out wide, if he can pick up some of these right-handers, this could be his breakthrough result. And then quarterfinal number four, yours truly. I'll be coming up against Kobe <laughs> Clement, so... Action-packed. Kobe's been on fire at the moment. Back-to-back yes. -back quarterfinals in the first two events of this Australia Oceana qualifying series. First event down at Phillip Island, which was taken out by Jacob Wilcox. And second event just last week up at Boomerang Beach, taken out by Joel Vaughan. So stacked quarterfinals. I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to get out of this booth and out in the water. But we still have a few more heats to get through. Right now, out in the water, Nixie Ryan up and riding in the red. So this is Nixie approaching a pretty s sweet section on the inside. Cracks it off the top. Just manages to uh, scoot around the white water, but she uh, that next section just closing out on her. 
Um, we didn't catch the first turn, but uh, she didn't wasn't able to get that one all the way through to the inside like she was able to on her first one. So we'll see how that score fares. But we've got two and a half minutes to go, so still a bit of time for Brit Nickel with priority as we approach the Mad Max minute. There's been plenty of action going down in the last minute of the heat, and uh, a lot of heats being turned on a dime. Yeah, absolutely, and. That was a little bit bigger wave as we pick up this Destination New South Wales wave replay. Nixie Ryan, a bit bigger set. I think this was the second turn. Gets it up into the lip, and this third turn just can't quite get around that section. So we'll wait and see what score comes in there. She is only looking to better something in the three-point range. So if she can better that, she will make it a little bit harder for Brit Nickel. Looks like scores have come in at maybe not even bettering her score. So door is wide open for Brittany Nickel here. Only looking for a 3.61, very achievable. She did have pocket fives in her heat this morning. So with one minute 50 remaining, Nixie Ryan working her way back out the back. She might be able to pick up something off the end, but Brit Nickel out the back. Pressure's in her court right now. She's looking for, and there we go, 4.25 for the last of Nixie Ryan has just come in. So bigger wave, Judge is really appreciating that. And out the back by herself now, Brit Nickel looking for the 4.75, very achievable score. And we'll wait and see this... Mad Max last minute is going to be absolutely incredible once again as we continue to see that last minute throwing down some big excitement. Yeah, we saw Britt knock down a couple of fives and six-point rides this morning, so she's uh, certainly capable, knows which waves to go to get that sort of score and knows what she needs to do, so hopefully for her sake she'll get an opportunity needing a 4.75 with one minute remaining, so getting towards crunch time in this one. And Nixie Ryan, she'll be looking to continue her form and get hopefully get through this heat uh, after a event win at uh, the Carve Great Lakes Pro at Boomerang. Yeah, carrying some serious form through this Vista New South Wales Surf Series. She would have a stranglehold on the series if she could make it through this heat with an event win last week up at Boomerang Beach. Now, minimum of the quarterfinals finish. If she can dodge a bullet, Britt Nickel with priority sitting out the back. 30 seconds remaining, looking for a 4.75. We'll wait and watch anxiously at the end of this one. I know all the crew up at Lee Bar will be watching and cheering for Nixie, cheering for Mikey Madonna coming up a little bit later today. So with 20 seconds remaining, let's see if Britt Nichols going to get a shot at this 4.75. She's having a bit of a look. It looks like a small wave, but she's going to have to go with just 15 seconds remaining. Yeah, looks like she's not going to be able to get the opportunity on that smaller one. She's sitting pretty deep, to close to the point. And it looks like time's going to elapse for Britt Nickel and uh, Nixie's going over, Britt's going over to Nixie to say congratulations. And uh, Nixie will move through to the semis and continue her awesome run of form in this uh, Vizsla New South Wales Pro Surf Series. Yeah, you are watching the Gage Roads Port Stevens Pro. That was quarterfinal number four for the women's event. We'll be bringing you the men's quarterfinals right after this break. skills to settle one, a band of brothers and sisters, where man learns from machine, learns from man, and those that visit are transformed, 
almost as much as the V6 Amaroks. It's like this place rubs off on them. You gotta see it to believe it. The only Ute reared for the road. Welcome back. This is the Gage Roads Port Stevens Pro. We are in the corner here at One Mile Beach. Quarterfinal number one of the men's division. Right now we have out in the water Harley Ross Webster or Harley Ross in the red singlet and in the blue singlet Kalani Ball, two seasoned veteran competitors, two guys who I'm great friends with. I've been competing against for many, many years and I'm sure they are ready to throw down in this heat. We do have some great conditions here. My name is Cooper Chapman. I'm in the booth with Nathan Rivland, who you got in this one, bro? Gee, it's going to be a tight one. Both have been in super good form. Based on yesterday's uh, heat, where we had that little break in it, I think Kalani Ball's my favourite in this one, but Harley Ross, obviously, we know he's an epic surfer and he's doing a good job at uh, linking this wave together and getting a couple of golden opportunities there with that little fin drift at the end. All right, I'll take Harley then. Harley's my good <laughs> mate. Both of the boys are my really good mates. I've been competing against these guys for a long time, but Harley missed the event up at Boomerang. Busy at work with the Beecraft boys. I'm sure they're all tuning in. Shout out to the Carey family and all the Beecraft crew for letting Harley have a bit of time off work, and he's putting on a stellar performance as we pick up this first wave replay. A bit flat at the start of this one. Just getting the feet in the wax. Brings it all the way around. Squares up nicely on this second turn, brings it around. A little bit caught. Gets a strong finish, though. Nice cutback here, and then as we saw this last turn up, vertical, fins out the back, 4.25. So quick start here, quarterfinal, first man-on-man -man heat of the event for Harley, and, yeah, getting something on the board. Yeah, I guess seeing pr judges probably setting the scale for the, uh, for the men's here. I did think that score, pr maybe because it was a smaller wave, I did think that potentially had the uh, effort to go a little bit higher. Um, did really dig into the rail with those couple of turns, but 4.25 is a solid foundation. I think it was right. I think they know it's quarterfinals. The judging has been quite critical in these first few events of the Australia Oceana qualifying series as they want to see some more. We want to see the sport progress and we want to see the athletes have to push a little bit harder. And right now, Harley Ross, 4.25 first wave. The start of it was multiple cutbacks. Once you're doing cutbacks, it's very hard for the judges to score you high. Very critical and amazing last turn, don't get me wrong. But with the waves we have out there today, we saw Sarah Baum on a couple before with multiple major manoeuvres, and that's exactly what the judges are looking for right now. So watch for Kalani and Harley to find maybe a bit wider on the bank. I was speaking to Chris, and we saw Philippa talking about it then too. There is some good waves out there if we can, yeah, see the athletes on those bit bigger ones with a few multiple critical sections. We're going to see those scores way up into the eight and nine point range. Yeah, obviously both these guys seasoned experienced competitors. We know Harley's had a uh, semi-final finish before in the in the Great Lakes Pro and the uh, Carve Pro as well. So he uh, he has some good results behind him and Kalani as well, being on the doing the Challenger Series and the uh, and the QS for a long period of time. Both these guys are definitely uh, deserving of being in the quarterfinals and uh, would yeah hope be hoping to walk away from with this event with a win. Absolutely, both of them very capable surfers and they're going to have their hands full because we do have some very stacked quarterfinals. In the next one, we've got Chris Zaffers in the red singlet and Joel Vaughan, series leader by quite a way with a first and a second place in the first two events. So yet to not make a final as we see a couple of Dolphins cruising throughout the back here as we see Kalani Ball up and riding, first wave of him, cracks it off the top, a bit more critical first turn, throws it up through the foam on the second turn, gathering some speed here. This one's going to open up again for him. Big wrap, adding a bit of variety. Stands up again for him here. Boom, big fin ditch out the back of that one. And once again, it stands up for him. Huge layback. So that's wow. what the judges are looking for. Five major maneuvers. First few just off the sides. I love the little mix-up turn in the middle. Added that bit of variety, full rail carve. And then hits it hard, thinks the wave's over, lifts his head back up and gets one more bonus section and really leans into it. So... That's how you want to open up your quarterfinal campaign for Kalani Ball. Absolutely. Where do you see that score sort of heading, Cooper? I'm going to say seven, seven flat. Yeah, I reckon around. I think the first well. two turns were great, but they were kind of off the foam and didn't really have that big bowly section that the judges are looking for. But then the th last three turns were really critical. Nice wrap. And then back to back big turns off the end. So you can take us away with this replay. What did you think? Yeah. The uh, first turn from Kalani, obviously connecting really nicely with that foamy bowl section on the top. 
And the, from this camera angle, you would have thought he was too far behind, but this wave just kept reeling off for Kalani Ball. Got a solid wrap in there, and then this one's nice and money in the money spot. Gets another good one, and that was a bonus section at the end. So, yeah, I reckon around that seven-point mark that we were mentioning, uh, big thanks to Destination New South Wales and Volkswagen for the replays there. 6.5 for that one, so we gave him a little bit more than we thought. We spoke to him yesterday after he absolutely blitzed one and only got a 7.5. So the judges aren't being very harsh today, but we love that because it's going to make everyone push a little bit harder and make the viewing even better. So Kalani Ball backing it up real quickly. Nice quick second one. I think what the judges maybe were a little bit harsh on that one. The first two turns did have to come off the foam and didn't throw too much spray. I really like the third turn. He brought the wrap all the way around. And even the fourth turn, once again, kind of hit it just that tiny bit late. Didn't have the spray out the back. And I think the best turn of that wave was the last turn, the bonusy, where he hit it a little bit early, really pushed the back foot into it. And that brought it up to a 6.5. As we pick up this little replay here, nice little wrap, setting it up. A little bit of jive at the end of that one, at the end of that carve, like it. And then ditching the fins, that mayhem. Is it a mayhem under his feet? Oh, no, it's Channel Island under CI. his feet. Yep. Looking spicy right now as he kicks off his quarterfinal campaign against Harley Ross. Backs it up with 3.5, so he's going to be doing the runaround, sucking in a few deep breaths. I had to do that before, and I did two runarounds in my heat before, and far out, I was buggered, so I know he's going to be feeling it, as we see Harley Rice out the back. Bigger so, wave. Yeah, Harley getting a solid turn in on that on that section, but that wave just uh, fizzling out in that sudsy part as it went down the line, so... Harley Ross's last one, we can see it's come through at a 4.9, so he's hot on Kalani Ball's heels, uh, needing a uh, mid-range score to overtake Kalani. This is quarterfinal one of the men's draw. We've got some epic heats to uh, go through in the next couple with quarterfinals uh, two to four after this, and then we'll be heading into the semis and getting towards crunch time on uh, finals day here at the Gage Roads. Port Stevens Pro at One Mile Beach. Yeah, action is heating up. Kalani Ball out in the lead in this one, 6.5 and 3.5. Harley Ross, nice little last one, 4.9, edging his way back into this into this heat. 4.25 is his backup. He will be looking for something up in that 5.1 range if he wants to catch up to Kalani Ball right now. But I think the tail of the tape right now, that last wave of Harley, bit bigger wave. Yeah. 4.9, not a huge score, but. I think it's a clear indication that the judges want to see the surfers on the set waves really attacking those big sections. Yeah, for sure. So we are about the halfway mark of this heat. And Kalani Ball putting up 10 points already in this heat with a 6.5. And that backup of a 3.5. So obviously if he can find a couple of set waves, it's going to hold him in good stead. Whilst Harley did have one of those bigger waves. Has priority out the back. Good position to be in. And knows that he's, he's done two turns to get that 4.9 if he can... Make sure he gets a couple more turn, a couple more critical turns, and he's uh, going to be going a long way. Yeah, but the most important wave right now is that 6.5 for Kalani Ball, the one we thought could have been a little bit higher, but it's set the scale for this heat, and it's going to be a tough one if Harley Ross wants to get something up into that 6.5 range now, because the scale has been set. Kalani Ball, five nice turns, picked up a 6.5, but we know seriously how capable Harley Ross is. He only needs to do two, and he can put something well up into that excellent range. As we see some big sets rolling on throughout the back here. We are in the southern corner at One Mile Beach. Fun little wedgy right-handers. A bit of a point break. It's really nice getting to compete on a point break. So we'll see what the athletes can come up with here. See Kalani using that rip in the southern corner, getting sucked out the back. We'll see if we can pick up Harley Ross out the back, looking at this set wave right now with priority. Yeah, so nine minutes to go. It is good to see the surfer surfing a point. Obviously... I don't think we're surfing any other points in the uh, Midland New South Wales Pro Surf Series. But uh, whilst we've got a little bit of a break in between with nine minutes remaining, just wanted to throw a massive shout out there to the uh, supporting partners of this event. Events like this don't happen without them. So big shout out to the Port Stephens Council, Newcastle Airport, which is just down the road from here. Destination New South Wales for all the amazing replays and the work they do with all the beautiful images of the coastline. The World Surf League, PRD Port Stevens, doing some great real estate work down here in the area. Chaos Surf Shop just down the road. Surfing New South Wales for all that they've done with this event in the rain and uh, all these f funny conditions that we've had. And then, obviously, webcast partners in Mad Max and Volkswagen have uh, been there for us all series. So big, th big shout out and thanks to those guys as well. Yeah, what an amazing group of sponsors that we have here taking care of us. Amazing 
Surfers chasing that big dream of qualification onto that Challenger Series, which will be coming up a little bit later this year. Of course, this is the first stepping stone. This New South Wales Regional Qualifying Tour, or the Australia Oceania Qualifying Tour, we will be seeing top nine men and top six women making it onto that Challenger Series later in the year at Snapper Rocks. And it is the stepping stone. The winner of this event last year in the men's division, Jackson Baker, we all know, has stepped up onto that world tour, and it all started right here. Great showing on the Challenger Series by not only Jackson Baker, but multiple of our Australian young surfers in Callum Robson, Liam O'Brien, Geordie Lawler, and also seeing Connor O'Leary jumping up back through with a huge win on the Challenger Series last year. So it'll be epic to see a few more young Aussies qualify, maybe a few more older Aussies like myself qualify, but would love to see someone like Kalani Ball. There's a huge first turn and oh. a big second turn. That's what the judges are looking for. Absolutely. Bigger waves, cool. bigger turns, and we'll wait and see if we get bigger scores. Yeah, it's de I think it'll definitely go into his top two. It'll uh, it'll eclipse that 3.5, but if it goes ahead of that 6.5, I don't think so. He did get five major manoeuvres in on that first one. So, But... Like I think it's going to be close. I think the judges are liking the bigger wave. So this first section. turn, nice steep section, bit of a check snap, but he had to do it if he wanted to get up here, and that was massive. Up and over the lip. Didn't give him the reform on that one, but we'll wait and see. This is going to give us a really good indication of how the judges are going to score the bigger set waves, bigger turns. So here we go. Judges scores, patiently waiting. Kalani Ball on his paddle back out. What's great about that right now is he gets to paddle straight back out off the end. Didn't have to do the big paddle around. And he is going to lock in a really solid score here, which is going to put Harley Ross needing a big score. So there we have it. 5.85, just the two turns. But second best wave of this heat. He is holding on to the best wave of this heat, a 6.5. So stranglehold right now. Kalani Ball. Ball's in his court. Yeah, absolutely. Good little pun there. I liked that one. <laughs> so Harley Ross, yeah, we'll be sitting out the back with priority. His brother Corey down here supporting him. He'll be pacing around. <laughs> hoping that Harley can get another one. So, yeah, we can see Harley's needing a 7.45, so he's going to need a pretty strong score to move up into the lead in this first quarterfinal. Yeah, we do, of course, have coming up in quarterfinal number two, Chris Zaffis in the red singlet and in the blue singlet, Jolly Vaughan. He is a man that is very hard to stop right now. Some serious momentum yet to not make a final in this Australia Oceana qualifying series. He's had a second and a first, but... If anyone can stop him, it's Chris Zaffers. He's been on fire this event. Multiple massive scores. He is no stranger to a right-hand point break. Grown up down in Aunt Gary, now residing on the Gold Coast, so, Gold Coast. So he knows how to surf a right-hand point. He'll be licking his lips for an opportunity to take down the event or the series leader right now, Jolly Vaughan. So that'll be coming up in five minutes as we count on down to the yellow flag popping up in this heat. Harley Ross sitting out the back with priority in the red singlet, looking for a 7.45 if he wants to chase down Kalani Ball with a solid performance so far, 6.5, 5.85. So, yeah, we're under five minutes remaining. Harley Ross is waiting, but Kalani Ball getting one as he's just paddled out. And nice carve, roundhouse carve back to the white water and just waiting for some opportunity, a nice critical section to bowl up for him. And pumps the brakes on, gets that section, rides out chest over knee and... Uh, He'll net another solid score. We'll just wait and see if it goes into his top two. Yeah, great surf from there by Kalani. That's one of those wider waves that Chris and I have been talking about. The tide is getting low and the bank is starting to move across. I was speaking to a few of the locals last night at one of my mental health workshops and they said conditions will get good today, but be careful. As that tide drops out, it will shift. And we've seen Kalani focus on that shift, adapt a little bit and pick up a nice wide one. A lot of face surfing, but really smart and then a very critical last turn. So... We'll wait and see. I think maybe Eclipse is 5.85 yeah, just. We'll go close. Bigger wave, a few wraps on the face, but really smooth. Really smooth critical surf. Not super critical, but really smooth connecting it until getting to that last turn. And the last one was extremely critical. So it was a bigger wave down off the end of the peak. So this is going to be a really good trendsetter for the rest of the quarterfinals coming up. Maybe to shift a little bit wider and pick up some of those ones that are breaking further down the beach now as the tide gets a little lower. For sure. So we are awaiting the score from Kalani Ball. But I think, yeah, it will be in that ballpark of what he had on his uh, last score, which was a 5.85. We'll be around that, I think. Yeah, he'd love to eclipse that and make it a bit more difficult for Harley Ross. With 3 minutes 30 remaining, Harley must have caught a wave right now. We do not see the priority next to his name. So 
We'll wait and see, but if Kalani can put something, and there it is, 6.25 for last of Kalani. He's increased his score by 0.4 and made it a little bit more difficult for Harley Ross as we pick up the Destination New South Wales replay. Harley Ross, what's he got? Big Findich on that first turn. On this deep section, you see it goes a little bit more small and soupy. So, oh, just from what I'm seeing, that is definitely not going to be the score yeah. for Harley. So he's going to zip back out, maybe shift his mindset. He's got... Two minutes and 50 seconds remaining. He is looking for that 7.85 now. So he's going to have a bit on his plate. He's going to need the best wave of this heat. And, yeah, ball's in Kalani's court once again. Yeah, he's going to need a pretty strong score here, Harley Ross. He's got priority, so he's going to hopefully get another chance to get something. But, yeah, maybe try to target one of those bigger outside waves. And it's, yeah, the 7.85, it's going to have to be far better than Kalani's 6.5, which he was able to do five majors on. But... If Harley can do sim something similar to that on a set wave, he's going to go very close to getting that score. Yeah, so it'd be nice to see Harley get a shot at this one. I know all the Beecraft boys, shout out to Jacko and Lockie and Brucey. I'm sure you're all watching, cheering on Harley. Hopefully it's Smoko and no one's slacking off on the job site. <laughs> bit of rain probably down there, so maybe a bit of a rain day. We might be everyone in the office watching their boy Harley. So phenomenal right now. He is on the ropes here, though. He's looking for a 7.85 with two minutes remaining in this one. Kalani Ball has a stranglehold on it. We'll wait and see. Looks like a nice set wave. Nice set roll on through. Harley Ross just paddling over the back of that one. But there's waves on the horizon. He's going to get another shot here. So let's wait and see what he can find. And here we go. Last roll of the dice. Harley Ross rolling into it. Doesn't look very interested, and he's in and out there. So It's a very soupy one, that one, from Harley Ross. So... Minute and a half left, approaching the Mad Max minute. We're going to get close to the crunch time here. Harley's needing a really strong score to move into the lead. So Kalani Ball's looking like he's in the prime position at this stage. And uh, if he can hold on, he'll be marching into the semifinals and bank a good result in uh, this second event of the Vizsla New South Wales Surf Pro Series. Yeah, this is, of course, the Gage Roads. Port Stevens Pro, and right now we are coming down to that Mad Max minute. Harley Ross did get priority right now, so... Not all dire straits for him right now. He does have one minute on the clock to pick up a 7.85. It would need to be the best wave of this heat. Very capable surfer, but time is the enemy right now with just on 50 seconds remaining. First priority is with Harley Ross, but he is chasing down that 7.85. So we count this one down. Had that burrito clock come in, making me feel super hungry, Cooper. <laughs> yeah, seriously. It's almost lunchtime. What is it? Almost. Getting close. Be getting getting close. close. So Here Kalani Ball. Kalani Ball off the end. This is what we've been talking about, Chris and I. That one's not going to do it, but no harm, no foul for him. He is holding on to a 6.5 and a 6.25. Very strong commanding lead right now with 20 seconds remaining. It's looking a little too late for Harley Ross. We'll see if he can pick up something with that first priority he is holding. But right now we see Kalani. He's calling it a morning. He'll be coming back up. It looks like in semi-final, number one for the men's qualifying series, 1,000 event, this is the Australia Oceana qualifying series. Stop number three on the qualifying series. Stop number two on the New South Wales Vistula Pro Surf Series. This is the Gage Roads Pro. We will be right back with quarterfinal number two, Chris Saffis and Joel Fawn coming up right after this break. <laughs>
Welcome back to the live action here for the Gage Roads. Bruco Port Stevens Pro Men's and Women's WSL QS 1000. This is the second stop on the Vistler New South Wales Pro Surf Series for 2022. We are now into the men's quarterfinals. Quarterfinal heat number two, Chris Zappas in the red. Joel Vaughan in the blue. On screen there, that is Harley Ross in the red, making his way in from quarterfinal heat number one. Joel Vaughan is locking in a point five so far. Sitting out there with first priority. My name is Britt Nicol, joined in the booth with Chris Enova. How are you going, Chris? Yeah, I'm great. It's uh, rain's starting to fall again, but the waves have definitely started to show their teeth. And, well, this point break's looking really fun here at One Mile. And very excited to see this uh, men's quarterfinal action rolling through. And here is someone who's been a standout in the Australia Oceania qualifying series events so far this season. Joel Vaughan, well ahead in the ratings. Uh, he's going to just extend his lead after this result too. He certainly is. He's been on fire and looking in form the entire event. And, well, so far kicking off 2022. Joel Vaughan in the blue. Destination New South Wales replay. Just a couple of stage cut back there. Linking back to the pocket. He was hoping that this one was going to stand up. Kind of working his way through, and it just flattens off on that inside section. So tricky conditions out there this morning. We are, of course, at One Mile Beach. Just a two for the surfer in blue, Joel Vaughan. Conditions have shifted a bit, Chris. I uh, I just surfed my quarterfinal with Nixie and got a little bit lost in the lineup. We both kind of just sat a bit deep, missed the wide ones. Yeah, that wide section's really starting to show itself. And, you know, it's, it's tricky too because... You sit up deep. You want to you want to get the inside position so you can get obviously the first wave of the heat, and then it kind of creates this rhythm where the surfers keep going back to that same spot, and you know, it, and the the current obviously just drags you out the back as well. There's a bit of a reverse current here too, so there's a few different elements that kind of can cause the surfers to you know end up a little bit deep, and it's just that natural instinct, I guess, when you're surfing on a point break, is you want to be the deepest, you know, so you can be the first in line for a, a good wave off the point. Um, the further you are at the point, obviously, usually you think you're going to get a longer ride. So, but here, there's this, there's this split in the bank. There's a deeper spot, but then there's also these wider sets. And with the south swell and or kind of the southeast swell now wrapping around the point, you know, the ones down down the line a little bit, they end up being a little bit bigger. And they've got a bit more kind of substance to the wave and allow you to go, you know, a bit more vertical, especially on the end section, um, and kind of really hold your calves through. And you know, it was a big, a bigger wall going to look a little bit more impressive to the judges you're certainly right it's yeah it's easy to get caught on that middle bank cop a few sets on the head and it was lining up well this morning but yeah with the conditions changing those insiders are kind of flattening out a lot more than what they were we have an outgoing tide now we had high this morning so conditions should continue to improve throughout the day this is of course finals day here at one mile beach for the gauge roads bruco port stevens pro wsl QS 1000 for both the men and the women. Exciting times here. Chris Zaffis in the lead. He's locked in a 5.5 so far. Joel Vaughan just a 2 and a 0.7. Yeah, so Jolly Vaughan obviously taking off on this wave here. We see him racing a line. He's on the wider peak and he found a wave earlier on this sect on this wider peak at the end of his heat. And it was one of the highest scores of the day. And you can see the size of this wave. It's a lot steeper, and that was a huge turn. Fortunately, the reverb getting him, I mean, he's been icing those turns in his sleep. You know, there's a free surfer behind him, so he's actually quite far down the point, and that looks like one of the free surfers on the end section. So that goes to show how far down Joel Vaughan was. I'd be very surprised if those free surfers are allowed to stay out there. Obviously, hanging on that end section there, but... Uh, yeah, I reckon those free surfers will be moving on because that section where Joel Vaughan is, you could see it wasn't too far down the beach, very much in sight of the judges and the camera angle. You see this one, Britt. Look at the size of this wave compared to what we've seen up the point. It's well overhead, you know, nice wrapping carve. And this one here, this is looking like one of the biggest sections we've had, you know, the whole day. And had he landed that, I think the judges would have really loved it. He threw everything at that turn. And, well, here is Mr. Chris Zaffis, big, huge rebound off the phone almost a backside fin blast and tagging this one spends a lot of time at the Gold Coast now originally from Angowry another good turn so this is a better looking wave and we can see they have moved onto that wider pink and 
well, it's paying dividends straight away. The, just the size of the wave and the way, the speed they're carrying through the wave is pretty phenomenal. That's surfing, a bit of a leg burner. Surfing so far down the beach now, as you can see. A couple of things in front of the camera there. Well, he's cheering himself. Chris Saffis in the red. He's happy with that one, Chris. Yeah, he is. He is. So, well, I he's going to come in for the runaround on this one. You know, I wouldn't actually mind. I guess he's he's found his spot in the lineup. You know, I was I was saying to you know, a lot of people earlier, I kind of like seeing people paddle back out at this spot because it allows you to paddle wider, gives you an opportunity to maybe find one of those big ones paddling back out. But if the men have found their position in the lineup, it is easy to get out next to the rocks, you know, elevate a rip back out, a quicker paddle, and then you paddle across wide as long as you don't get caught too deep. But look at this replay. He just was rapid fire on this wave. Just managed to link this one all the way through. Strong turns out the back. And he was looking for this inside section. He managed to get it really steepened up. A series of good turns there from the man in the red. Finishing off on this little frothy section. And we'll watch him just, you know, clap himself on his way in. So Chris Zaffis in the red. We'll wait for those scores to be locked in. As we see him running up the beach. Fitness a key here, definitely. So he's an experienced QS veteran, Chris Zaffis. He's been around for quite a while. We see that uh, spicy Dylan shapes under his uh, arm there. He's looking really good under his feet. I know he's got some good relationship going on with Dylan. Dylan Longbottom is obviously Dylan Longbottom, a big part in the uh, big wave scene, and also creating some uh, some of the best high performance boards as well with uh, team rider Chris Zaffis. Just uh, detonating that last wave, and well, you know Chris Zaffis, he's he's uh, probably didn't have the results he was looking for last year. You know, he's been, uh, he's, he's done many years in the QS. He had a break, bit of a breakthrough year on 2019. He had a good result in Prime over there. Took down some big names with some big heat totals in Erisera. That was the 10,000 um, back when we used to do the Prime Series. He got a ninth there, and uh, he's had a maiden win back in 2016 in the Mentowies. We had a Mentowies Pro many, many years ago, and... Uh, Well, we're going to be rolling in to an interview with Last Heat's winner, someone who's uh, had no trouble winning heats. It's a uh, very powerful surfer, Kalani Ball, mate. Congratulations on the Last Heat win into the semifinals. How does it feel? Yeah, good, mate. Um, super tricky conditions out there right now, so uh, just stoked to find a couple of sixes in that one and kind of open up on the face and, yeah, got it done. Yeah, nice, nice. Obviously, last year, you know, had a... Bit of a breakthrough result over in Haliva, you know, loving those rights. You know, you really showed your powerful surfing there, and must be good to get it with a bit of swell here and find a few right-handers on this point break. Yeah, definitely. Um, I kind of prefer the other beach, but obviously this um, big southerlies come through, so this is a really good option to um, have it as a backup. But yeah, long run and right, so you can't complain too much about that. Yeah, nice, nice. So, how, how do you adjust? Obviously, you know, you probably haven't done any free surfing out at this spot at all, you know, as the event was based at Barubi. Now come around to one mile, how do you make the adjustment? Do you change up any boards, any equipment, or is it just pretty similar? Yeah, on the same board, um, I feel like it's still a pretty similar, like, slope to the wave as Barubi, so it's just a heavier end section and um, obviously a bit more size today, but yeah, just riding the same board and yeah, it's going really good in these waves, so stoked with it. Yeah, I definitely can notice, I feel like a sense of getting some momentum rolling. You're getting kind of, you're looking very comfortable. Every heat, the management's really good. You've got getting plenty of waves, and you really seem to be dialed in with everything at the moment. How does it feel, obviously, with this series that's going on right now to build some momentum as we move towards the Challenger Series at the end of the year? Yeah, it's good. I, um, I went up to Boomerang last week and made one heat and then lost, and... I don't think I've ever made it more than one heat up there, so <laughs> it kind of tr wigs me out. And then, I don't know, I come into this event, I got third here last year, so, um, uh, yeah, pretty confident at this wave. And it was out at one mile last year, so I've definitely had a few reps out here before. So, um, yeah, and it's just really good to get these comps. Like, the, the people in this event are just so gnarly. So even from the first heat, you're like, oh, crap, like, <laughs> it was hectic. But, um, yeah, so it's just uh, these guys are some of the best in the world for sure, and it gets you ready for the Challenger Series. Yeah, perfect. Well, we're frothing to see you surfing. It's looking really strong, really confident. Uh, rest up, mate. You've got a semi-final coming up with one of these two surfers in the lineup now. So we're looking forward to seeing you back in action soon. Yeah, thanks, guys. Cheers. So that was Kalani Ball, last heat winner.
winner of the quarterfinal number one. He took down Harley Ross, who was in great form rolling through this event. And, well, it looks like right now Chris Zaffis out in the lead. He got a 6.75 for that first long right hander. Well, Joel Vaughan's just gone. He's done it all event. Just gone, you know what? Whatever you can do, you poke the bear. I'm just going to throw one straight back at you. Two nice big whips in the pocket there, Britt. Really blowing the tail on that turn there, Joel Vaughan. In the blue on the destination, New South Wales replay is just sticking with this one. Looking for that last section, really throwing it up there. He's so impressive. He's just got such a, a natural, talented style, Joel Vaughan. He is one of our New South Wales juniors that's gone through the system with surfing New South Wales. We're pretty, pretty stoked to have Joel Vaughan into the quarterfinals. He, of course, just coming off that win from the boomerang. Carve Great Lakes Pro in fine form for 2022. I feel like everything he touched turns to gold at the moment. Like, he can't put a foot wrong, you know. Obviously, could have very easily won the event at Phillip Island. That would have been, you know, he, he tied for first. So, we'll give him a, a 1.5, maybe. Or <laughs> he got second on account back there. Wins the Phillip, uh, wins the uh, Great Lakes Pro up there at Boomerang. He wins the ABB for North Shelley. Power surfer. Power surfer as well. Just everything he is doing right now, just can't put a, put a foot wrong and... We talk about breakout years. He is definitely having one of them. And, you know, he's going to be a big, big asset for Australian surfing moving forward. He's very young. And, uh, well, you know, last year he finished 29th on the QS. Missed out on the Challenger Series. But this year he's just well out in front of the ratings. And it's kind of catch me if you can. Joel Vaughan. Of course. And, well, later on uh, in a few weeks we do have an event at Avoca on the Central Coast there. Joel Vaughan is from the Central Coast, North Shelley Board Riders, so I'm sure that, you know, he'd be comfortable at home there, sleeping in his own bed, staying at home. I feel like he's going to be very dangerous going into that Vista Central Coast Pro QS 3000, one of the bigger events. So he's moving his way through the draw here, gaining momentum. Looking yeah. pretty good for those Challenger Series events. Yeah, he is. And obviously these events are 1,000s, so great, you know, stepping stones into the 3,000 Evoca. That means, for everyone out there who doesn't know what that means, if you win this event, you get 1,000 points in towards the ratings. The Evoca comp, obviously a bigger rated event, so 3,000 points goes to the winner of that event, and that scales down throughout the whole, um, I guess, the whole competition there. We go to Newcastle and Tweed, they're 5,000 events, so the winner gets 5,000. So we start making our way up through these events. They get more important, more critical, but... I always say that rhythm and momentum is a huge factor when you're rolling through events. And Joel Vaughan definitely has a lot of rhythm, a lot of momentum, and a lot of confidence coming off these results at the start of the year. And, you know, going to those events, he should just keep doing exactly what he's doing. And the events are going to be pretty similar, pretty similar stacked fields. We might have a few CT guys put their name in the mix here and there. But, uh, I mean, these events are so stacked. So it's, it's just pretty much a replicate it and, transition into those events and he'll be looking really good for a Challenger Series qualification hopefully come that time. He certainly will well in this heat we have just over five minutes on the clock Joel Vaughan in the blue that is a surfer we've been talking about currently sitting in second position chasing a 5.61 to take the lead from Chris Zappas in the red he's locked in a 5.5 and a 6.75 the surfer in red sitting out there with first priority that is the P on the left of the names there up on the screen, meaning that Chris Zaffis in the red does have... But one thing that is huge, like you said, the P next to his name, it does mean he's in the driver's seat. Joel Vaughan will have second look at any wave in the lineup. So right now, essentially Chris Zaffis doesn't need to catch another wave. But you knowing Joel Vaughan, he's very smart, very composed. He will be finding another wave at some point, and he will be keeping Chris Zaffis very honest and making him think about every wave that he looks at. Uh, Chris will be trying to very experienced QS cam campaign a lot. We said he'll be looking to put himself on the best wave that comes through in this last four minutes. Well, when he rolls the dice, we'll have to wait and see. You see that set rolling through. Three minutes, 50 on the clock. You're not wrong there, Chris. It's going to be crucial that Chris Zaffis, any wave that he takes off on, he's looking to improve on that 5.5. Anything less than that, he's not going to extend that requirement. So if Chris Zaffis can utilise that priority and get something better 
to improve that scoreline. It is going to make it harder for the surfer in blue, Joel Vaughan. Well, he's having a look at this one, trying to scratch in and opting not to take off. Probably a smart choice there from the surfer in blue. Yeah, well, he'll go, here goes Chris Zaffis. He has rolled the dice. A bigger looking wave. Tags it through the lip. That was a great first turn. We haven't seen many vertical first turns at the back. So good point of difference here. Can he keep it going down the line? Carving it back. Looking to stay in the power source. This one's kind of running away from him, but here we can see it steepening up and, well, bang, through the lip. Two critical turns. I love that he got very vertical at the back, right in the pocket. Bit of downtime. We'll see where this one falls in. This is a tricky number here because you've got the two critical turns at the start and the finish. Bit of downtime in the middle. Could see it going, you know, look at this wave. Nice and tight. Got through the lip. Carved back into the pocket. It's one of a funny. It was a funny one. It's like it kept looking like it was going to run down the line on him. So he got a little bit away from the power source for a bit, but you know he knew what was coming down the line and just iced that end section. So very strong surfing, Chris Zaffis. It could be around his first score, the six point five mark, maybe. That's what he'll be hoping. We'll have to wait and see. I'm fine. I feel like it might go around that six point five mark. Or. The, Judges might really love it because he got really furred at the vert on the start of that wave. We'll have to wait and see. Early signs. It looks as though that might be a 6.7 dropping in. We'll wait for those other three scores to drop in from the judges. 6.2. What will it average out to be? Well, that's a 6.5 at the moment. There we go. It's a 6.45 for the man in the red. You're pretty close <laughs> there, Chris. We're in the wrong booth. Oh, it's easy in here. <laughs> Much easier said than I done. Know. But they, the judges, put a lot of time and effort into finding those scores and getting them right. You do get a bit of a rhythm for it. It's key, that word. <laughs> and, uh, well, Chris Zaffis, he did exactly what he wanted to do. He wanted to extend the margin for Joel Vaughan, and now he's extended that margin out to a 6.56. So a minute 26. This is the real test for Joel Vaughan. He hasn't, you know, he's been so perfect, perfect and he's just, being pretty much 100% in strike rate in any situation he's been put in. So one of his biggest tests so far in 2021 on the QS series, Joel Vaughan looking for a 6.56, and it is the Mad Mex Minute coming up. There's the burrito clock about to drop in and spin around. <laughs> Chris Zaffis in the red. Well, he's put together a great heat so far. He locked in those two scores and then just continued to build, use priority when it counted making that requirement a little harder now for the surfer in blue but we can't rule out Joel Vaughan because a 6.56 he's more than capable with just under 40 seconds on the clock will he get another opportunity yeah will Huey throw something well, his younger brother's named Huey it sure I'm not is. talking about Huey I'm talking about the god of the ocean Huey will he send him a wave Sure, Huey at home's cheering him on, hoping a wave gets sent through. And there's a little lump presenting itself. Will it eventuate into something? It looks like maybe he's paddling for this one. This will be his last opportunity. Where is Jolly Vaughan? 10 seconds. We've had a priority shift. Well, we have. So Chris Zaffis using priority. Joel Vaughan must have paddled for the wave before. And, well, that is a mistake, unfortunately. And, well, look at this wave he's missed out on. This very well could have been the 6.5. And... <laughs> Oh, wow. Chris Zaffis has just found himself on an absolute gem. And that is a way to finish your heat. A victory lap and a half. So, unfortunately, a bit of a mistake there from Jolly Vaughan. Paddling for a wave and missing it. And handing over priority. And Chris Zaffis paddle back out. Got himself in the lineup. It was a long paddle. And, well, took that last wave off Joel Vaughan. And I dare say that's probably going to be the best wave of the heat. And he'll be moving on through to the semi-finals. So, unfortunately, the ratings leader of the Australian Oceania QS Series goes down there. And uh, the gap will narrow between him and the rest of the field. But congratulations to Chris Zaffis. Moving on through to the semi-finals. He'll have a big matchup with none other than last heat's winner, Kalani Ball. We'll be right back with semi-final number three action after this. Myself, Chris Sandover in the booth with Britt Nickel. Don't go anywhere.
Some say we've got engine oil in our veins. All that and a fair bit of dust. Sure, these wild utes are hard work, but it's no job. The roar of them. Pure. Take some rare skills to settle one. A band of brothers and sisters. Where man learns from machine, learns from man. And those that visit are transformed almost as much as the V6 Amarox. It's like this place rubs off on them. You gotta see it to believe it. The only Ute reared for the road. with live action it's been a very exciting finals day so far the rain is falling up here the weather's shown up but the action is still very red hot this is the world surf league gauge roads port stevens pro men's and women's qs 1000 event it is a stop number two of the new south wales Vistler pro surf series and uh, we're into the quarter final action of the men and well this is someone who loves a right hand point break it is the surfer in red mikey mcdonough you know, very Mick Fanning-esque style that we look at. He's polished his uh, style on those point breaks at Lennox Head. And, wow, look at that carve. That was just absolutely perfect. I mean, look at his style. It's just so clean and crisp. And, well, can he hold on to that when he can't? But a lot of damage was done prior to that. And so this is quarterfinal number three. Mikey McDonough in the red against... Well, it's a doozy. Reef Hazelwood in the blue. So we'll see the two contrasting styles. We've got the goofy and the regular. Reef Hazelwood, goofy stance. Back to the wave. Mikey McDonough on his forehand. And uh, 6.25 with a fall on the end of that wave. So maybe a little bit left on the bone there. Had he finished that wave, could have gone well north of the sevens. Myself in the booth, Chris Enova alongside Brittany Nickel, fellow commentator and competitor. Worked on through to the quarterfinals, Britt. Great result in the series. And uh, unfortunately, just went down in the last minute there. But how was it out there? Talk us through the lineup and uh, how's this event as a whole? It's actually quite tricky out there, Chris. Uh, Nixie and myself, we kind of sat a little bit too deep. We missed these wider ones that the men are now surfing. And we've been watching it all morning and, and somehow we still got sucked up the point. Reap Hazelwood on his backhand, trying to link this one all the way through. Condition's still really tricky. It gets quite flat through that middle section before it stands up on the inside. And if you can get there, it's definitely worth this last little section here, Reef. And Mikey Madonna out the back in the red, answering straight back. Belts that section. Kenny right out of it. The man in the red, he's already locked in a 6.25. He's looking to follow in Nixie's footsteps, already qualifying into the semifinals. Yeah, definitely. So Lennox Head having a very good showing here. And... Uh I'll be hoping to go 1-2 in this event. In the oh, Sorry, 1-1. One, one. He'd actually would love to go and take the win in both the men at men's and the women's. I know Mikey had a good showing up at Boomerang. Just come up short. He's been very unlucky in a lot of his uh, events this year and last year. He's always right thereabouts and just coming up short or you know someone pipping on the post. Here's Reef Hazelwood's wave. You know, a few nice turns out the back, like you said, Britt. Goes a bit flat and sleepy through that midsection. We're going to see it get better as this tide keeps dropping throughout the day and tags this one and sets up this last steep section and well, this goes bingo on the end section there. And uh, this is a bigger wave. See the size of these waves, these wider ones. They've got a lot more size to them, a lot more steepness, especially on the inside section. They don't tend to, you know, taper out to the end section like we saw the ones deep up the point do. They kind of grow down the line, which is obviously very exciting everyone at home and the judges and especially when you get that big end section allows you just to kind of put a big hammer down that's, that's what the judges want to see it certainly is and Mikey Madonna in the red he's just locked in a 5.85 so 
Surfing Red off to a quick start. It's one of those situations where, as you just mentioned, Chris, they grow on that inside bank. So you can see a lot of surfers getting a couple of turns out the back, weaving their way through that inside section, almost stalling a little bit and really waiting for that last hammer section at the end. Yeah, exactly. And one thing I like about this heat so far, which I've seen, the men haven't opted for the runaround. So what that does, it allows them to paddle back out, you know, see the lineup, and they are wider as they paddle back out. I know a lot of people have been opting for that run around, but what it does, it puts you up quite deep next to the point. And like, like we were saying before, it's very easy to get stuck there. It's very hard to paddle up the point and then just dart wide. We saw Chris Zaffis do it really well in the last heat. He got back out the back. He did the run around, got straight back out the back, and he paddled wide. He didn't get caught deep. But uh, Mike McDonough and Reef Hazelwood both opting for the paddle back out and you know, hopefully giving themselves an opportunity to find one of those wide sets as they're paddling back out. Because obviously if you're paddling off the rocks... You eliminate that chance. You miss that opportunity, and it's always good to be paddling into the wave. And you can you can see where the takeoff is. You can see what the face of the wave's doing, and it it really does give you that extra kind of insight into what the lineup is doing. Whereas if you're going out off the point, you're getting sucked straight out, and you end up too deep instantly. Yeah, and you can pa end up too far out as well because you're paddling from behind the wave. So sometimes you lose kind of the feel of how deep to go because you are already are so deep, and then you're paddling wide to it and. Whether you paddle wide enough, you don't know. But if you're paddling up the point, looking at the waves coming at you, you can kind of see those sets breaking. You can get a feel for how far out you want to go, how deep you want to go, and you can get your positioning really dialed in. So I like the, what the Reef and Mike have done here, giving them a uh, opportunity. And that's kind of the word that's key, is giving yourself opportunities in this heat. In a lineup, it's hard to figure out. It is a bit tricky to figure out, and... The last couple of days of the competition, we have been surfing at Barubi Beach. We had a location change this morning. We are now at One Mile Beach. We are in a beautiful part of the world, Port Stephens. Mikey Madonna actually had a 13th here last year, so he's already on his way to his best result here so far. Up and riding, current heat leader, the man from Lennox Head, carves around that section, hits the foam. He's looking for this stand-up section here. Oh. And just unfortunately blowing the tail a little too much. So, Mikey Madonna in the red, in the lead. Reef Hazelwood in the blue, currently sitting out the back, looking for his second wave. This is, of course, the men's quarterfinal heat number three of the Gage Roads Bruco Port Stevens Pro WSL QS 1000. Yeah, and we'll be rolling into quarterfinal number four after this, and it is a Northern Beaches affair. Long Reef versus North Narrabeen. We've got Cooper Chapman in the red versus Kobe Clements in the blue. So you know, there'll be a uh, some uh, intense little battles there. These guys know each other pretty well. And Battle of the Beaches, it should we call on. it? It's on. So I'm sure all the Longy crew will be tuning in and all the North Narrabeen crew will be tuning in, cheering on both of their surfers. You know, Kobe and Cooper are big members of the uh, the teams at the ABB event. Up there at Newcastle, you know, saw Kobe Clements was the power surfer for Long Reef. Cooper Chapman, a big part of the North Narrabeen Club for many years now. Got the club to a few big wins and uh, being from North Narrabeen myself, it's always uh, good to see them go well. I was waiting for it. I was waiting for you to drop that. <laughs> yeah, and taking on the team you? manager role actually these days, so it's been fun travelling with the team and seeing them all excel. I know we're missing one of the men in the draw that we saw was a standout last year, Dylan Moffat. He's uh, you know, going through a bit of a knee injury, tweaked his knee, unfortunately, and you hate to see that, but hopefully he's going to be right and uh, back to 100% because he was looking for phenomenal form. We saw him in the Narrabeen event do damage. And uh, someone else who's doing a lot of damage is this man, Reef Hazelwood. Just surgeon-like approach on these waves. Two big turns. Lost the back foot, but he manages to hold on. And, and well, another big turn there, so... Reef Hazelwood, looking for a 6.85. Wait and see what the judges think there. So big first turn. Second turn was a bit soupy, but he almost lost it, then held on. And uh, then finished off with kind of the foam climb. What are your thoughts, Britt? Well, here we have the destination New South Wales wave replay. Bit of a foamy section, but he managed to stick with it. Comes behind here and really just blows the tail. But unfortunately for Reef, he almost came unstuck. And I feel like... The judges are going to hold that one in their minds and a little hung up on that last turn. Still great surfing there from the man in the blue from Moffat Beach on the Sunshine Coast. Probably similar to his first wave. 
And there it is, 5.15. So Reef Hazelwood still in second position. Now chasing a 6.85 to move into the lead. Definitely can't rule someone like Reef out of this game. He normally goes big or goes home. He's definitely one of the uh, most impressive surfers to come through through the ranks in here in Australia. Yeah, definitely. And well, you know, you look at this heat on paper, and you'd probably say Reef was a bit of the favourite going into it with the experience he's had. But I've spoke to a few of the competitors today, and, and thought we everyone knows what Mikey McDonough can produce on on a right hand point break and. Once you get onto a right-hand point break like this, you know he, he cements himself as a favourite to win this whole event straight away. He could take it out in a heartbeat. And like we said, it's just him trying to have that breakthrough result and get some momentum rolling and building. And you know he started off this heat really well. Two good numbers to kick things off. And it just it's just going to he's just going to be able to build now. The back end of this heat, he's got eight minutes. It's pretty much served a perfect heat till now. He's got himself in the lead. He's got two scores. One over a six, one in the high five, so good numbers. And now I think he's just going to try and really put a nail in the coffin and lock in something, you know, in that excellent range he'd be looking for. Mikey sitting out there with first priority. He's going to make the most of it, I think, with eight minutes on the clock. He'd be looking to improve on that scoreline and make those requirements harder for the surfer in blue, Reef Hazelwood. This is, of course, the men's quarterfinal heat number three. Coming up next, Cooper Chapman, Kirby Clements. Another exciting matchup, as we were talking about earlier. Yeah, definitely. And obviously, we came from Barubi over to One Mile now. You know, different conditions shift in kind of the waves we had. I feel if we're at Barubi, Reef Hazelwood has a lot more arsenal power because, you know, you have those really steep sections, the punchy right-handers in with the wind blowing into it. We know he can go to the air. He's one of the best aerialists in the world. Uh, and Reef just can literally do any type of air at, with any section and you know coming to this wave here one mile obviously more of a point break style wave we uh there's not many air sections out here so it's really taking back to the rail surfing and that's where mikey you know really kind of starts to edge ahead of reef maybe with being on his forehand then coming from a right point break growing up on lennox head points just having that polished style with those big rail carbs. 100%. He's got the flow. He's got the style. And, yeah, it really allows him to open up on the forehand there. And I think it, that's definitely going to be a benefit for Mikey Madonna in the red. Growing up at a place like Lennox Head. Can't complain about that one. Beautiful part of the world. In that far north coast region. Well, another beautiful place we are currently in is Port Stephens. For the Gage Roads at Brewcoat, Port Stephens Pro. Extremely lucky to be here. We've had beautiful conditions throughout the entire event. Obviously, the weather has shifted a bit today, but still plenty of scoring opportunity out there in the lineup. And as you mentioned, Chris, completely different ball game to what we've been watching over the last couple of days at Barubi Beach. A punchy little beach break. We've been blessed with swell, though. Yeah, we have. We got lucky last year, too. We Boomerang was bombing last year. We had... Huge swell there. We had to go to South Boomers because it was just huge south swell. And then came down here and we surfed one mile because it was macking out. And we got some really fun waves here. And we even had to go to Tunkari at the end of the uh, Boomerang event. We got some crazy waves there. Reef won that event last year up, up at, at Tunkari. And then he had a good result here. So he was, you know, right up there, you know, challenging for, you know, the lead of the series at this point in time. And we're looking forward to Maroubra. Last year, Maroubra was tiny. We That was the one stop we had really small waves. Dylan Moffat got the win there. But this year's looking solid. It certainly is. And up on the screen there, we have Mikey Madonna. And that is that open face carve that we were talking about. Bit of a check turn there as he waits for this section to really oh. stand up. And oh my God, Mikey Madonna in the red. That was like Mick Fanning kind of style, I reckon. Oh, I keep saying it. Put some blonde hair on it. It's just Mick all day <laughs> of the week. Same sponsor. You know, he's just, I think it, it, Mikey does say he was his, his biggest idol growing up. And Mick is a huge advocate for Mikey McDonough. I know he talks very highly of him because why wouldn't he? Because you know, that big wingspan carve we've seen and that, the way he resets and gets low on his bottom turn is really reminiscent of Mick. And that was a huge layback carve. I've seen that done at J Bay so many times. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we've got Mikey Madonna doing it out here at One Mile Beach. 
We'll wait for those scores to be locked in. I'm sure the judges are all up on their toes up there. And there we have it. Early signs of a nice score. Mike Madonna in the red from Lennox Head at 7.5 on that last wave. Well deserved. Excellent surfing, particularly that last turn. Yeah, he surfed a flawless heat up till now, Mikey. And uh, now his old, old boy be frothing on the beach. He'd be pumped up seeing him locking some good scores. He's just gone from strength to strength this heat. You know, first score, he locked in a six. Then he got a backup of a 5.8. And now he's just improved on that. So we've, he's laid the foundation. Now he's starting to build the house on top of it. And what it's doing now is it's starting to make life very difficult for Reef Hazelwood. But look at this wave again, Britt. That first nice wingspan carve. The way he brought that back up around was absolutely perfect. And then he just waits patiently and just see him lay the hammer on that one. Drifts the tail. That was just all power. His board never looked like burying on that last one. So he's got a good DHD under his feet. Yeah, another, another sponsor, same <laughs> as me. <laughs> oh. Well, Mikey Madonna in the red. Making it harder for the surfer in blue, Reef Hazelwood. Now looking for an 8.5 to advance. I'm sure the entire crew from Levar up there at Lennox Head would be cheering with Mikey Madonna potentially moving through to the semifinals. You had Nixie Ryan move through to the semis earlier, coming off that win from the Boomerang Carp. Great Lakes Pro last week in fine form. Producing the goods. The crew from Lennox Head. Yeah, they had a good result at the ABB to Lennox. They got to the final. Fortunately, came up just short. Mikey McDonough was obviously a standout for them, being their power surfer. And uh, it's just... He just hasn't put it together in the QS up, up till now. I feel like it, he's, had, he's had a breakthrough win years ago in 2019. He won the Cape Naturalist Pro over in West Oz. He was very young then, and he's still very young now, but... The way he's surfing now, it's it looks like as soon as he can get this roll going and as soon as he can kind of get the momentum and everything kind of shifting his way, he'll be unstoppable. There is a lot of maturity in Mikey surfing at the moment and you can see that he's been working hard in that kind of off period with the contest back at home. And yeah, I think he's going to be a force to be reckoned with throughout this entire series. Especially if the swell keeps up. He's really good when the swell gets solid because you see the type of calves he can do in the rail game he's got it's it's hard to match and uh you know i felt like last year sometimes he maybe let his emotions get the better of him in a few heats when things got tough you know he got he wears his heart in his sleeve but i can see a lot more calmness and maturity about his surfing now and well here's reef up and riding brit here we go reef hazelwood in the blue looks as though they might be surfing a little bit further up the point and just unfortunately uncharacteristic Maneuver there for Reef Hazelwood. Just blowing out the tail that little too much. He knows he's looking for an excellent score of an 8.5. Looks as though Mikey Madonna in the red. He's got first priority. Is he making his way over to Reef? Yeah, I think he is. And we saw Reef there. I think that was a classic example of being sucked too far up the point because we saw that wave. It was bending back towards the point. It wasn't actually pushing down the point. All those bigger rights that have been growing are the ones that kind of break, they push down more to the left. Um, the ones that seem to bend back more to the right-hand side of the screen, they're the ones deep up the point, and they don't link up with that end section. So we can see Mikey really paddling hard to get over wide. You know, I'm sure he's going to stick right to Reef. I wouldn't be surprised to see Reef go in the inside section and just try to huck the world's biggest air. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's definitely more than capable. We've seen it before. We are into the Mad Max Minute. The burrito clock on the screen there. 30 seconds remaining. Wind a burrito right about now. It is lunchtime. I know. We've just been gifted some good stuff from one of the cafes around there at Barubi. Crest. Crest Cafe. Thanks for all the support. Getting us our food and coffees. It's been great all week, but we count this one down. It's coming out of 15 seconds. And, well, Mikey McDonough, he was due for a big scalp, and this is one of them taking down Reef Hazelwood if he can't find a score in the next seven seconds. And it looks like... You can see the body language. He's looking pretty happy. Old Mikey, he's rolling into the semifinals and he'll be coming up against the winner of the next semifinal. That was semifinal, quarterfinal number three to a close. We'll be right back with quarterfinal number four from the Gage Roads Port Stephens Pro here at One Mile Beach.
Some say we've got engine oil in our veins. All that and a fair bit of dust. Sure, these wild utes are hard work, but it's no job. The roar of them. Pure. Take some rare skills to settle one. A band of brothers and sisters. Where man learns from machine, learns from man. And those that visit are transformed. Almost as much as the V6 Amarox. It's like this place rubs off on them. You gotta see it to believe it. The only Ute reared for the road. We are back to the live action here for finals day of the Gage Roads Bruco Port Stevens Pro Men's and Women's WSL QS 1000. This is, of course, the second stop on the Vistula New South Wales Pro Surf Series for 2022. My name is Britt Nickel. Join in the booth with Chris Ennevar. Off to a quick start here. Kobe Clements. Yeah, the longy lad, Kobe Clements. Racing down the line on this one. Looks like it's a bit of a flatter wave, so maybe one of those ones caught a bit deeper up the point. But we know Kobe's an absolute frother. He's not going to let any section go untouched out here. And just tags that end section there. So nice finish to that ride. First score on the board. We're seeing him make his way in. I'd like to see him paddle back out. But that's me, me putting the coach's hat on a bit there. But Kobe will make his way in. Paddle back up the point. And uh, we'll see the replay of this one. So see that one a little bit deeper up the point. Tags that one through the lip. Fades back. Stays nice and close to the power source. And the surfing was great in this wave, but it was just the wave that kind of let him down a little bit here. Went really flat through this inside and didn't have that grower section that we've been seeing Mikey and Reef take advantage of in the last heat. You know, you look at the size of this wave compared to the size that we saw Mikey and Reef hitting those end sections. It's noticeably different. So I think that's going to be a big, you know, point of difference what the judges are looking for. And obviously just gives you, allows you just to do a so much bigger turn on the end section when you have the section available. It does, Chris. I think Kobe's going to head back out. If you're listening to that score, a 3.5, like obviously you managed to get a fair few turns in, but it was one of the smaller waves out there today. So he'll be looking to make his way back out and potentially move further down the point. Found that a few people are getting a little hung up. Catching waves too deep. Small and mid-sized ones were the ones this morning, but conditions have shifted. And uh, someone who was able to make good use of the lineup was the winner of the last heat. We're going to throw it to him very shortly, but... Uh, like you said, out in the lineup, 15 minutes, 50 seconds on the clock. Kobe Clements, first wave locked in, 3.5. He's back out in the lineup almost. Cooper Chapman sitting out there waiting patiently for his first ride. So, battle of the beaches here. North Narrowin versus Long Reef. These guys know each other very well. And uh, they'll be looking to pick the eyes out of the lineup. And uh, someone who picked the eyes out of the lineup was none other than the winner of the last heat, Mr. Lennox Head, Mikey McDonough. Mate. Talk us through it out there. How was it? You looked really at home on those big right-handers. Yeah. Um, felt really at home, Chris. Uh, big south swell burgery rights. It's pretty well Lennox Point down to a T <laughs> on its day. So, um, yeah, just trying to channel that. And, um, yeah, I'm stoked to move through. I was fired up. I feel like I'm building. And, and yeah, I just want to keep it going. Yeah, I really noticed that. Me and Britt were talking about it last heat. You really, like, it seems that like you're getting some good momentum and obviously, I noticed you're looking very mature and calm out there. Last year, you know, we talked about it a lot yesterday. You yeah. didn't get the results you wanted, but you're always thereabouts in every heat you've had. You've had so many close results go just against you, pipped on the posts a few times. Yeah. Very close results. And it's only a matter of time before you can get that momentum going through an event and just keep it rolling. How does it feel now to be in the semifinals and get some momentum and looking very calm and confident? Yeah. Um, I feel like last year, I... Uh feel like maybe I slacked off a bit and I probably wasn't putting in the work I should have been doing and um, this year I got down and gritty and um, yeah put in the hard yards and uh, yeah hopefully it pays off I feel like um, yeah I feel like those heats where you get pipped at the end or something goes wrong um, just comes down to you know I've done the hard work and and uh, yeah I guess that sort of pays off. Well you talk about that hard work that's great to hear Who, who's the support you know crew behind you anyone you want to say thanks to um, you know that's been getting you ready and prepared and you've been doing the hard yards in the background with? 
uh, yeah, obviously my dad and then, um, yeah, the main man, James Wood and uh, Pete Roberts, my trainer, and uh, obviously Darren Hanley, who's shaped me, um, yeah, I feel like the best boards I've had in a while, so. Yeah, that's right. The boards looked amazing out there. Everything looks like it's coming together, and we'll let you rest up. You've got a big semi-final matchup coming up with one of the winners of this next quarter. But keep it going, mate. You're looking very strong, very comfortable, and uh, we're rooting for you to go well. Yeah, thanks heaps, Chris. Cheers, guys. Cool, calm, and collected. Yeah, he's looking really confident, isn't he? He just sensed that aura. Quietly confident, I think. Yeah, it was like... You know, yesterday when I was trying to get it out of the hog, some excitement, but... Poker face. Poker face. He's, uh, that's really good to see, though. And, you know, he has been working closely with Taipan, James Wood, up at uh, Lennox. He coaches a lot of the crew up there, and he's very passionate about those lads. He'd be tuning in. And he's got a great crew behind him and he's, that he's working with, and uh, it's good to see. Once you have that support network dialed in, it makes things so much easier to get into that flow state, and you just got to think about just your surfing and... You know, managing his emotions, it's good to see. He's looking very mature now. and I can't wait to see him back out there because the surfing he was done there, I, you could see that surfing on the CT. He'd be hard to beat. He'd be hard to beat. Getting the right waves out here in this right-hand point break, it's it's going to get very interesting. Depending on who gets through this quarterfinal heat number four, Kobe or Cooper, who will it be? Yeah, so Kobe... Kobe, obviously, with a quick start. This this heat seems to have gone a bit sleepy. We had a lot of action in the last heat. Mikey and Reef found themselves on quite a few big, you know, running rights down the point. Uh, this one's been pretty slow, but Cooper, looking at this wave, he's going to get into it, those big wings, Aww. get himself in. Will he get around this wave and get in the line, as we see, and tags that one through the lip, and he's got another section here. So this one's just going from strength to strength down the line. That was a great turn, and... Well, commentator's curse. We've just cooked him there. He just looked like he'd lost his footing on that second last turn and maybe just the fins a little bit further than he would want would have wanted. Yeah, he's checking the fins there, Chris. Cooper Chapman in the red. Off to a start here for quarterfinal heat number four. It's a five point oh. I feel as though he might have just been a little bit out of rhythm with that wave, Chris. He it's a really, really late paddle into this wave, like he scratched into it. Way behind the section. Yeah, we saw him have to take that airdrop and it put him a bit behind the section, but we did see him get back out in front of it. It was a bit bumpy and funky, and he was, you know, started to get some momentum going here, and it did steepen up for him. Oh, unfortunately, we lost the end of that one. But Kobe Clements up live action, so we'll come back to that one again, but Kobe Clements rolling down the line here. This is a better looking wave than his first one. It's starting to grow. Again, a little bit out of pace there but now it starts to steepen up and well they go down again so a few quarterfinal nerves creeping on in and uh just still trying to figure out this wave i know they both were surfing more up the point in their earlier rounds first time they've shifted to this wider peak and it looks like they've both just been kind of caught out slightly by that growing end section here we have that Destination New South Wales replay for Cooper Chapman. Then he just had a little bobble in the wave there, but managed to regather himself. And it's really this inside section here where it started to stand up for the man in the red, Cooper Chapman. One of our fellow commentators. A couple of nice sections here, and they're the type of turns you want. And just unfortunately going back through the middle of the wave there. Here we go. Surfer in blue wraps around the one thing i really like i mean there's a lot of things i really like about kobe surfing but he has a really low center of gravity and if you watch this next turn here this bottom turn you can just see how on rail he is yeah he is and that's something actually kobe's had to work with for, for with a quite a bit over the years is you know he's he's not a huge man kobe he's uh he's, he's quite small but he gets so low and it makes him it's sometimes he almost look used to look too compressed and he used to struggle a little bit getting a lot of extension in his turns and he's worked really hard at his surfing and uh you know that low center of gravity sets him up for everything to come but he's really managed to learn to extend a lot as he comes up the wave and it springs him into those turns and it sets him up perfectly and it just looks like he's just ready to react at any moment um he holds that obviously a lot of leg strength to to hold that bottom turn so low and be in that such low crouch position but it does allow him to spring at any moment. And now he's got that extension in his surfing. You know, locked in a 5.5, best wave of the heat there. And, uh, you know, for the airs and everything, it just 
sets up perfectly. It's a great foundation for his surfing. It certainly is, Chris. Kobe Clements in the lead, in the blue, with a 5.5 and a 3.5. Cooper Chapman in second with a 5. Still anybody's game out there. Pretty on par right now. They both managed to do the last turn on both of their waves and come unstuck. So it'd be great to see these guys get back out there and get on one of those good wider ones. Yeah, they started to they find out the lineup, figure it out. They both got one of those growers that went down the line, so they, they seem to be in the right spot. Uh, Kobe's obviously pointy difference on his one. Get that big turn out the back, was able to get up and above the lip on that out the back section. Judges so love to see a good turn on the first section. And that just edged him a little bit further ahead of Cooper Chapman. And so you'd expect by the end of this heat, Kobe will be, will be dropping that 3.5. They'd probably want to be, you know, his 5.5 would probably want to be his backup, um, if anything. Uh, Cooper Chapman with the five-point ride. So he'll be looking to get out the back, and he is out the back now. He's holding priority, so he'll be looking to lock in, you know, something north of a seven, you'd think. For sure, especially being in, you know, the quarterfinals. You really know that you have to step up the game. And I, I feel as though even in the early rounds of these QS 1000s, they've been stacked heats the entire way through. So the depth of talent here for all of this New South Wales Pro Surf Series presented by Visla has just been insane. Like, it's great to have so many surfers come through the ranks and really put their shirt surfing on display. Yeah, and well, and I, uh, something to touch on as well is, you know, Cooper Chapman, he... He really would want to get a win in this comp. He's been around for so long. He still has the monkey on his back. He hasn't had that breakthrough victory on a QS ever. At, at any level of QS, he's he's made some big results. He's gotten you know second in a 6,000 over in Japan back in 2017. He got second in the Great Lakes Pro. And, well, this is a good-looking ride for Cooper. So nice big first turn. That's a good point of difference. That first big turn out the back, the judges love to see that. He's looking nice and patient on this one. He's setting this inside up. Huge layback jam. So he's really starting to put some turns together. Cooper, that's a good looking carve. As he works down the line here. Keeping very patient and ice that end section. So very patient, mature surfing there from Cooper Chapman on that wave. Cooper Chapman, he really had the opportunity to open up on that wave, Chris. It'll be interesting to see what the scores come through as a strong surfing there from Cooper. That last section just he almost airdropped through that lip line. Yeah, I feel like he held off it a little bit, was trying to play it safe. And then when you do that, you don't surf like that all the time. And it can be the curse sometimes, trying to surf it at 85%. I like that turn. He really gave that, you know, 100%. And I think he, after that, he knew he was under a good score if he just had to surf this wave. So we can see him just, you know, this turn here was really strong too. And after those two turns, you can see him holds back just a little bit on these turns. That was a nice carving turn. Cuts it a little bit short, but he works down the line here and then just tags that end section. I mean, you look at the replay, it was pretty impressive. That whole wave fit together really nicely. Lots of good manoeuvres, you know, good combination of manoeuvres, good variety. He had the big slash at the back, a carve, a layback. So had a bit of everything that wave, and that's definitely the best way of the a wave of the heat. And, you know, we said he wanted to try to go north of the sevens. I, I think he's done it. I'd probably like to see this go. I could see it going around a high seven, maybe. But all well, the judges are the judges, and we'll leave it to them. They're going to make the final decision. I feel as though Kobe will be sitting out the back looking for a pretty decent score now. Wait for those scores to be dropped in. And we mentioned earlier, Chris, surfers paddling back out into the lineup rather than doing the runaround. Maybe the smarter choice giving themselves the opportunity to see where those waves are breaking, see the wider sets, and look for those takeoff zones that you might not potentially see if you're paddling out off the point. You can tend to get sucked out too far with a rip, and then you're almost trying to fight paddling back in. So here's a replay of Kobe. This might have been while Cooper was up and riding. So Kobe on a nice wave it is. So we've gone to the other camera angle down the beach. A couple of nice turns out the back there, working this one through. Will it grow on the inside? He's carving this one around. Maybe a little bit slower down the line. A bit more sleepy time than we saw on Cooper's. This one's running off on him quickly. Tags that one through the lip with a nice finish. So a well put together wave from Kobe. And he's going to do the run around. So we see the two different approaches. Cooper opting to paddle back out. Kobe doing the run around. 
We'll see who gets back out the back first. But uh, there it is, Cooper Chapman, 7.5. So he'll be very happy with that score. You know, he did exactly what he needed to do. Got north of a seven and put the pressure right on Kobe Clements, who's now looking for a 6.81. And, well, if Cooper can get back out the back first, he's going to be in the driver's seat with priority. We don't see any P's on the board just yet, so no one's been awarded priority. But the rain is teeming down here. And it's been a bit like that over the East Coast. And obviously a lot of thoughts go out to everyone up north, all of our friends in the Gold Coast, Brisbane, Byron region, especially Lismore. They've been, you know, absolutely hammered with everything that's going on. And I know a lot of people have rallied from everywhere far and wide to help out. And thoughts go out to everyone up there. And hopefully everyone stays safe. And we're going to keep rolling on through this event right now. There it is, that rain pouring down. Kobe making his way out through that rip. The elevator rip, we call it. I feel as though Kobe's strategy here might have been the fact that he hasn't got much time left on the clock. So if he was to paddle out after he'd caught that wave, he probably would have got caught in that inside section and potentially not have actually made it back out the back. So I feel as though with two and a half minutes on the clock, he's in a position now where he'll get dragged out the rip and should be able to get back in time to hopefully catch another wave. Yeah, so there it is, the P next to the name, Cooper Chapman. That means priority. So he'll have the first pick of any wave. So he really is in a strong position to, you know, close out the back end of this heat. Kobe Clements will be making his way back out there and he'll be trying to find any type of set wave that he can. But Cooper Chapman has first pick of the litter out there. He'll be uh, staying very close to Kobe and making sure that any wave that has the potential of a 6.8 one on it, he'll be taken first. Looks as though we might have a bit of work on our hands. Chris, considering Cooper's still in the draw. <laughs> yeah, I might have to... Uh, we've lost the commentator. We've lost one, one down, so you might be hearing more of my voice as we roll on through into the semi-final action. Well, it's never over until it's over. One and a half minutes on the clock. Kobe in the blue, still chasing a 6.81 to take that lead from Cooper Chapman in the red. Red having a look, utilising his priority on this one, looking to replace a five from his scoreline. That's a big, nice first turn. Lots of spray out the back and a second. So I was wondering whether he was going to catch a wave. He didn't need another wave, Coop. He just had to close out this heat. But this might be the way to do it with a uh, a good score to close out things. And caught a little bit behind here. Will he get the bonus section on the inside? Looks like he will. And that's a huge turn for Cooper Chapman. Fortunately, can't hold on. So we'll have to wait and see. What the judges think, those two big turns at the back, does it get more than a five? Because what it's done is it's left Kobe Clements out the back looking for a 6.81. And well, I feel Cooper could have just waited out there, held priority, because Kobe wasn't in position for that wave. So he didn't really need to catch it. But time is of the en enemy for Kobe Clements with 30 seconds on the clock. So we're going to get the wave replay here. And it was a nice looking wave. Cooper Chapman up and riding. Take it away, Britt. I love this second turn here. He just throws so much energy in and into it. Cooper Chapman, he's really starting to find his form in this event. He's been surfing great throughout the entire contest. But as you mentioned earlier, Chris, he's trying to get that monkey off his back and try and get a great result. So he's on his way here to a really good result. Belting that last section and just unfortunately coming unstuck. But Cooper Chapman throwing everything into it. Yeah, and so that was in the background. We heard the who to go. So we'll have to wait and see if Kobe Clements had an opportunity to get a wave in the very dying stages of that heat. We'll have to wait and see. He's up and riding there. So whether that was before the hooter or after, I think that was after the hooter and uh, we saw the body language there. Wasn't looking too positive from Kobe. So it looks like the man from North Narrabeen, Cooper Chapman, will be taken on the winner of the last heat, Mikey McDonough, in semi-final number two. Congratulations, Cooper Chapman, moving on through, taking down Kobe Clements. Another great result for Kobe, though. You know, last year, he didn't get better than a 33rd in the QS, and now he's locked in three fifth pace place finishes to kick off the year for 2022. And... He's right up there in the ratings and got some great momentum moving on into Mad Max. Marubra Pro, where he'll be a force to be reckoned with. He's got a great relationship down there. Named after one of the uh, Bra Boys, Kobe Abbotton.
That's a little fact for you too. So we're going to take an ad break and uh, we'll be right back with more action. We're going to be rolling on through to the women's semifinals right after this ad break. This is the Port Stephens Pro here from One Mile Beach. Some say we've got engine oil in our veins. All that and a fair bit of dust. Sure, these wild utes are hard work, but it's no job. The roar of them. Pure. Take some rare skills to settle one. A band of brothers and sisters. Where man learns from machine, learns from man. Those that visit are transformed almost as much as the V6 Amarox. It's like this place rubs off on them. You gotta see it to believe it. The only Ute reared for the road. We're back. This is the World Surf League Gage Roads Port Stephens Pro here from One Mile Beach. We've made the move around from Barubi Beach with that big southerly buster coming up overnight. And we're at One Mile. We've got some great waves on offer. We are rolling on through to the women's semi final. And there's going to be some great action ahead of us. But uh, speaking of great action, he couldn't get back on the mic quick enough. Look at him. Cooper Chapman taking out quarterfinal number four. And uh, surprised you didn't take the mic out there with you, mate. Talk oh, us through it. How was it out there? <laughs> Maybe take the mic out for the semi. Um, yeah, it was, it was a tough heat, but I know Cobes has been ripping. He's been um, in real good form this year. It's good to see the young fella doing really well, stepping up against us older guys and giving a real good run for our money. But, yeah, I was like, wanted to keep that quarterfinal monkey on his back for a little bit longer. <laughs> He'll get there. But, yeah, it's been a long time since I've met at this deep in an event. So it was nice. It was a bit of a slow start out there. Kind of couldn't find much right at the beginning. Um... It was funny, when I was paddling out, I clipped my fin on a rock, and I was like, my first wave, my back fin, I don't know, my fins felt weird. You know, you get that feeling sometimes when you knock your fin or you hit it with your leg or something, and you think, oh, is my fin loose? Um, so the first wave felt a bit wobbly. You saw me, like, pull out the back at the end of that one, and I was like, oh, did I do something? And then that second one was a really nice wave. It kind of allowed me to open up a bit more and gave me some steep sections. And then, I mean, I got a pretty good one at the end and blew it at the last turn. It kind of bottomed out. I wanted to get a bit more aggressive on that last close out Rio, I know I'm going to have to go pretty hard against Mikey in the next heat, so yeah, felt nice to get some long waves, and after watching everyone rip some, it was good to rip some myself. Yeah, we've seen those conditions really improve, and you know, people are starting to figure out the lineup out there now, and we, we were talked about it before, those wider, those wider sets really coming into play, and I know you spent a lot of time up at Lennox as well, and around that region on the points, and you know, Mikey as well, so it's going to be a ding-dong battle between the both of you, and, and what's the tactic kind of going into the next one? Yeah, I think I, I'm just ready to step up a bit. I, I was funny, I was thinking in my head before when I was running to my car to get ready, I was like, if I want to be making it to the World Tour, for some reason I had Felipe Toledo in my head, I was like, I need to start ripping waves and actually leaning in and attacking it. I feel like I pull back my surfing a little bit for comps and subconsciously kind of do that, whereas I'm like, I need to be real conscious of that and push a bit harder, which I felt like I did a bit on my 7.5 and even on that last wave, I felt like I tried to push a bit harder. Obviously, I fell on the end, but um, no more of those falls in the next round. And, yeah, my boards feel amazing. MG has made me some amazing boards. This is a good human model. And, yeah, I obviously talk about it quite a bit, but good human factor is my little mental health thing. And it's great that he supports that with these amazing boards. But, yeah, they feel really good out there. I'm riding a round tail. A little bit of a step down, actually, but it's been feeling really nice out there. Yeah, nice, nice. Well, less thinking, more ripping in the <laughs> semi-final. Cooper Chapman. Let's, uh, I'm looking forward to, to see this battle between Mike and McDonough. It's going to be a doozy. And uh, rest up, mate, and get some, uh, get some order into you because it's going to be a crazy matchup. And 
Hopefully keep going through the event and get that monkey off the back. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Chicken Boy. Have a good one, guys. There's Cooper Chapman, man of many words. So he's, many uh, words. He's uh, he is great value and yeah, doing lots of good stuff with the community. And you know, did a workshop up here last night. I know the hog got down there and uh, checked out his good human factory um, function that he did at Barubi and they had a good turnout for that. So lots of good things Cooper's doing in the world and. Well, moving on to the semi-finals, he'll be stoked with that performance, and he's going to be running into a red-hot Mikey McDonough, who probably had the performance of the round just then. And uh, the waves are looking really, really fun out there. And we just saw Sarah Baum kick off this heat with a six-point ride. She's got a backup of a 4.25 up against the fellow Goofy Footer in Elise Cooper. So a Goofy Foot matchup here to kick off semi-final number one, Britt certainly is. What a matchup we have here between Sarah Borm and Elise Cooper. Both been in form the entire event. It'll be interesting to see who takes the win here. Very similar styles. Sarah Borm off to that early start with a 6 and a 4.25. Elise Cooper with a 3.5. Currently chasing a 6.75 to move into first and through into the finals. This is, of course, semi-final heat number one. Still plenty of time on the clock. Just over 17 and a half minutes. Sarah Baum, we have heard someone speak earlier, Tessa McKenna, on the beach commentary. He mentioned that he sees Sarah here quite often. Pretty sure she's living in the Newcastle region and surfs this break a fair bit. So I feel as though Sarah would be feeling a little at home out here at this right-hand point break. She's got a really strong backhand. Lise Cooper on screen there, just getting a little caught on that inside section, but she's opted to do the paddle out, which we've been talking about, Chris. Yeah, you are right. Well, if you touch on the word experience, there is probably no one more experienced in this event at all than Sarah Baum. You know, Philippa Anderson would come close, but Sarah Baum has been around for so long. Back in 2010, she kicked off her, her start of the World Qualifying Series, you know, and that's, look at 12 years ago now, and she's just going from strength to strength. And, well, the past four years, 2018, 19, 20, 21, she's had some breakthrough performances. She's you know, landed a win in both 2018 and 2019. And then she got two wins in both 2020 and 2021. So she now has found some great rhythm, great momentum. And, you know, she founds like, I think she's really found herself and her surfing. And it's all just coming together. And coming out of South African, from, from South Africa, from Durban, now residing over in Australia. Yeah, so it's uh, it's really starting to click for her. She's, uh, yeah, she's been living in Australia for a fair while now. So uh, Sarah Bourne making Australia home. And she's been knocking on that door for quite a few years. She came really close to qualifying one of the years in particular. And I know that Sarah, uh, at one stage, you know, she had major ba sponsors, major backing, and lost that for a while. She kind of took a step back, regathered, reset, come back to competition and now she's just ready to go again. Great to see a sticker on Sarah's board again. She's picked up another major sponsor. So Sarah Baum, she's uh, looking to show the younger ones that she's still here. Yeah, I feel like she's kind of like the Maddie Banting of the women's. Like, obviously, she's been around for, you know, Maddie Banting had the same situation happen. He was big-time junior competitor, you know, great sponsorship. Looked like he was going to go well on and truly with it. And... You know, held the record for the most junior finals ever made in a row. But, you know, then he had to step away from it, Matt Banting, for a while and, you know, regained himself, regained his, and found himself, refound the, his passion for surfing. And since he's come back, you know, he's been so mature with his approach. And that's the same as Sarah Baum. You know, she's done everything but qualify. And, you know, she's looking for that breakout year. And, you know, she's starting to get some sponsorship again. Everyone knows that when she's in any event, she's pretty much the one to beat. She certainly is. She's got one of the most lethal backhands, like, on the women's side of the draw. But you definitely can't rule out Elise Cooper because she's also a goofy footer, another strong backhand surfer that we will see on this right-hand point break. We are, of course, at One Mile Beach. We've been at Bruby Beach the last couple of days, so we did have different conditions, lefts and rights. Nice little beachy, but we've moved location today for finals day here of the Gage Roads Bruco Port Stevens Pro. And both of these goofy footers going back to back. Yeah, and 
Well, Sarah's run into Elise Cooper in the semi-final here. You wouldn't want to run into her on a footy field. She's a rep footy <laughs> player. She'd absolutely flatten you because she's a great touch football player, great rugby player as well. And I know she has a lot of work back at home with Maddie Cattle um, in Sydney. And uh, she had a great win over there in Crewe in 2018. She got the win over there. And you know, she has a special relationship with Indonesia. She got a second in NIAS in 2019. So they're kind of her best results. So she has had that taste of victory. Both these women have won events, and this is that powerful approach to the back end you were talking about. Unfortunately, there's two turns there for Sarah. Nice carving down move, and then set up that second turn. That probably won't go into her top two, so it's going to give Elise Cooper an opportunity now to uh, try and lock in a solid score. She's going to want to find something above the six-point range of Sarah's and really put herself back into this heat. Give herself a good opportunity in the back end of the draw. Let's her in the back end of this heat to uh, find another backup. She's certainly more than capable. Just a 6.75. It would have to be the highest single wave score of this heat so far. Sarah Baum looking to replace a 4.25 as the low score in her scoreline. We have the destination New South Wales wave replay powered by Volkswagen up on the screen. Probably not the wave that Sarah Baum was looking for. It didn't really provide much on that inside section, so she's going to make her way back out there. But Elise Cooper sitting in second place, patiently waiting, holding down priority. Will the ocean cooperate? Yeah, you can see that the foundation of Sarah surfing. It's so, it's such a great, perfect, you know, style she has for for a power surfer. Really low really compressed, and she just drives through those turns and holds her rail really well. Uh, there's Elise Cooper having a little look at a wave at the back. We're on 12 minutes, 20 seconds on the clock. We're going to roll on through this heat, and then coming up next will be a great semi-final matchup. Philippa Anderson looking to go one better than last year. She got second in this event last year. She'll be up against the winner of the last event at Boomerang, Nixie Ryan. So... Two surfers with some great results under their belt. More of the master versus the apprentice again, you would say. And uh, I'm sure Nixie Ryan would be very excited to get out there against Philip Anderson and uh, look to go back-to-back -back wins. Could be a uh, Lennox head final for both the men's and women's. Yeah, Lennox have a great showing in uh, both the men's and women's draw here. They are forced to reckon with that club. and Obviously, uh, all the safety to all of them up there right now. I know there's uh, some crazy times going on up north. So we're thinking of everyone up that way that's affected by the floods. And a huge thanks to everyone helping out. Yeah, I've seen some of the live vision of it, and it's just insane. It's so devastating and heartbreaking to see what people are experiencing with those floods. We've had uh, yeah, a heap of vision of people in boats trying to get saved and pets and... Yeah, it's, it's really devastating to see what's happening up north. And our thoughts go with everybody experiencing those floods. We're starting to get a bit of that rain here now. We're hoping that it starts to ease off on that north coast area, but I'm sure it's going to be a massive clean-up and there's going to be all hands on deck. That's right. Right now we are semi-final number one of the women's event in the Port Stephens Gage Roads. Port Stevens Pro, the tongue twister. Put on by World Surf League. It is a WQS men's and women's event. Stop number two of the Vistler Pro Surf Series. We're going to be rolling down to the Mad Max Maroubra Pro, and there's plenty of swell on the horizon. Britt, you must be excited for that event. I'm actually not heading down not to the Chris. Well, I actually don't know what I'm doing now because I am not in that event. I'm not working on that event, but my plan was to drive home late this afternoon and... At the moment, I can't actually get home because I live on that Tweed Coast, northern Coming New South, South Wales region, and I don't know what to do. Well, maybe, maybe there's a spot. <laughs> my, my plan was Late to focus entry. on uni. I'm back at uni next week. I'm sure we can squeeze in some uni work between a few <laughs> heats, you know? <laughs> Especially after a quarterfinal finish. I had an entry in, and then I decided to withdraw it. But, uh, yeah, now I'm on the road, I think, for a little bit longer. Yeah. Uh, well, all the best. And uh, I'll be down at Maroubra watching, uh, <laughs> watching the surfers do battle down there. And, yeah, we've got a big east swell looking like it's going to uh, present itself for that event. So that's going to be very exciting. And uh, right now we are dealing with a southeast swell and lots of rain and wind. So we've moved around here to one mile from Barubi. 
It's been a great decision from Surf New South Wales staff and the WSL to utilise the beach here. And well, Upper Port Stephens, there's so much coastline here that has different opportunities, faces different angles. So we can get out of the wind whenever we need to. We can get out of the rain. Well, not out of the rain, but we can dodge the wind. I mean, we're out of the rain at the moment because we're in the broadcast booth, but it is quite chilly in here. We've got aircon on. Yeah, freezing. Keep, I was in the water earlier. <laughs> Trying to keep warm in here. Well, back to the live action in the water. We have a surfer having a look. Elise Cooper trying to scratch into this one up on her backhand. Just carving around that first section. Looks as though she's waiting for it to stand up and elects to get off that one. She knows that that's not the 6.75 that she is looking for. With just over eight minutes on the clock, it is currently Sarah Baum in the lead. With a 6 and a 4.25, she's currently holding down first priority too. So Sarah Baum sitting in a good position at the moment. Holding off the surfer in red, Elise Cooper. Still chasing that 6.75. Still plenty of time on the clock. Plenty of opportunity out there today at One Mile Beach. Beautiful part of the world in the Port Stephens region. Yeah, it is. And we roll into 7 minutes, 50 seconds on the clock. Sarah Baum, the powerful goofy footer from Durban, now residing in Australia, is in the lead. Six-point ride and a 4.25. And, well, a bit of a mistake there from Elise Cooper. And we'll see if Sarah can make her pay for that. Nice tag through the lip. She's going to drive around that one. I love that bottom turn. Very patient. Patience has been a big key on these right-handers. Nice float the boat. And will she get down the line on this one? That'll be all she wrote for Sarah on that one. Three turns. Could see it falling in maybe just above a 4.25 in between those two scores of hers. So she might extend her lead slightly and increase her back up. That's what she would have, that's what she would have been definitely looking to do. We have the destination, New South Wales Wave Replay, powered by Volkswagen. Up on screen now, that is Sarah Bourne, the current heat leader. Placement was perfect for that lip line float there, but just unfortunately not able to make her way through and down the line for that next section. As Chris mentioned, looking to replace a 4.25 as her low scoring wave for semi-final heat number one. Originally from South Africa, now residing in Australia. Good to see Bormy with a, you know, some some uh, support, some sponsorship on the nose. Now she's been just dominating the QS for quite some time and you know that's very warranted. It's also as good to see Kalani Ball. He was someone as well that you know, didn't have that sticker on the nose of his board. He's been a standout in the QS for Australia and put a big result over there in Hawaii at the end of the year and yeah now we see some sponsorship and backing on his surfboard too. So that's great to see you know these surfers getting recognised for their talents. And well, Sarah Baum locking in, like we were expecting, above that 4.25. I think it was around the high five, mid to high five mark. 5.25, I think it was for the last of the Surfer in Blue. So extending that lead, the Surfer in Blue, Sarah Baum, Elise Cooper in the red, still in second place. We'll now be looking for higher score. She only locked in a couple of mid-range scores at the moment. I think for Elise, she probably would have been hoping to break those two scores down into two separate waves. But as we approach the five minute mark, she might be left out there waiting for the one decent score that she requires. Well, speaking of sponsorship and backing, Chris, as you were, this event, of course, would not be possible without our supporting partners, Port Stephens Council, Newcastle Airport, Destination New South Wales, World Surf League, PRD Port Stephens, Chaos Surf Shop, Surfing New South Wales and our webcast partners Mad Mex and Volkswagen. We wouldn't be sitting here today bringing you all the live action of finals day, the Gage Roads, Bruco, Port Stephens Pro. And this is, of course, the second stop of the Vistla New South Wales Pro Surf Series for 2022. We were in Boomerang Beach last week for the Carve Great Lakes Pro. That was the first stop on that series. And, well, as you mentioned, Chris, we'll be heading to Maruba next week. Well, this week, actually. Yeah, very excited about that. It's going to be really interesting to see what this swell does and how it eventuates down there at Maroubra. You know that that place can handle some good-sized swell. Has the opportunity to be up in the north end if the swells, if, this, if this, the wind's coming from the, the north. They can shift down to the south end as well if the wind is coming from the south. So 
options there to stay protected and uh, get the cleanest conditions possible. Really long stretch of beach too. I lived in Maroubra for a few years and uh, it always was so crowded. I thought home was crowded up on the Tweed Coast, but Maroubra was like next level. I'd go for a surf. I'm like, wow, I'm, yeah. I may as well be back up the Tweed Coast. But yeah, for the event, it'd be great to see the competitors out there all in their lonesome without that crowd. Yep, definitely. Plenty of swell. It'll be interesting to uh, yeah see how competitors approach the swell. We've been pretty blessed with the conditions so far on this Vistler New South Wales Pro Surf Series. We had waves in Boomerang last week. And, well, well the first two days of competition for this event here was at Barubi Beach. Now at one mile for finals day. Elise Cooper up and riding. Belts that section in just the one turn with 3 minutes 20 on the clock. Should be looking for another score. But that will reduce the requirement. Sarah Baum in the lead with a 5 2 5 and a 6. We're coming down to three minutes on the clock. Well, it has been a bit of a slow heat for Elise Cooper. Locking in that 4.9 for her last ride. And here's Sarah Baum having a quick in and out. So we don't see the priority shift at the moment. Looks like she might get out there first. There's Elise Cooper on the inside. So that will be a regain of priority for Sarah Baum once she establishes herself in the lineup. Expect to see that P next to her name any second now. And coming out of 2 minutes 30 on the clock, this is uh, well and truly in Sarah Baum's hands to uh, take control of and really try to see at the end of this heat. And, well, with turns like that, she definitely is on her way to doing it. This wave looks like it's setting up nicely. Two big backside turns. Will she get a bonus section down the line, Britt? This is looking <laughs> very exciting for and, Sarah Baum. And she does. So Sarah Baum just a bit of a victory lap here, I feel. She makes her way through this inside section. It's always been such a strong, goofy footer for the women's side. And she checks the timer there with two minutes on the clock. She'll be happy with that one. That is, I feel, I mean, I'm no judge, but I feel as though that's going to go into the excellent rate. And there it is, an 8.75 to Sarah Baum. Well and yeah. truly in the lead for semi-final heat number one. Some amazing surfing there from Sarah, and that's what we were expecting from her. We knew if she got the, one of those running rights, she could just tee off on it. And that first turn was so explosive. It was unbelievable how much power she put into that turn. And, you know, this is the type of surfing we could see on the CT for sure. And... You know, look at the composure she shows down the line. Love the back kicked in knee style and very patient, very powerful. Drives through that section, lots of spray there, and that's a tricky section. And then hits that last one, and then puts the pressure on the back foot, not to nosedive. So very mature surfing from Sarah Baum. And I love that turn in the soupy section. It looked really hard to, to do, and it's always so hard to throw a lot of power into that section. And she just absolutely just destroyed it she did destroy that wave so much power and so much energy but the, the thing about Sarah Baum is she's got a strong backhand attack like that and obviously a strong forehand but she's also got the progressive side she can throw down airs as well yeah I've noticed that and she did bring out a few progressive moves last year some reverses and we've seen her go to the air a few times as well so to have that up your sleeve you know, it's only a matter of time, like we said before, she has a few breakthrough results in some bigger events and gets the start on the Challenger Series and is able just to kind of put a few of her heats and events together and give her a shot on the CT. I think she'd be around there for a while. She certainly would be, and I'm sure that there would be a few few women on that tour be uh, yeah, shaking in their boots if they seen Sarah Baum in the draw. Definitely. With that experience, you know, that composure and... She really is built for the, the championship tour, and it's just a matter of getting there for her. That's the, that's the, been the issue for so long, and give her that chance. Um, I'd love to see her there. And, well, Sarah Baum taking out semi-final number one into the final, and looking to get another couple of wins under her belt this season. She takes down Elise Cooper, and we're going to roll into semi-final number two. We've got 25 minutes coming up, but myself, Britt Nickel, we're going to take a break and be right back with more action. Don't go anywhere.
some say we've got engine oil in our veins. Well, that and a fair bit of dust. Sure, these wild utes are hard work, but it's no job. The roar of them. Pure. Take some rare skills to settle one. A band of brothers and sisters. Where man learns from machine, learns from man. Those that visit are transformed. Almost as much as the V6 Amarox. It's like this place rubs off on them. You gotta see it to believe it. The only Ute reared for the road. Welcome back to the live action here at One Mile Beach for finals day of the Gage Roads Bruco Port Stevens Pro Men's and Women's WSL QS 1000. This is, of course, the second stop of the Vistla New South Wales Pro Surf Series for 2022. We just wrapped up semi final heat number one. It was Sarah Baum taking the win over Elise Cooper. We're now into semi final heat number two of the women's. Philippa Anderson in the red. Nixie Ryan in the blue. I'm sure this will be another amazing matchup between these two women. Philippa Anderson, you could say that she is the local in this heat. She is from the Newcastle region. We're not far down the road, Port Stevens. And Nixie Ryan, well, she's had a lot of momentum already this year, coming off a win last week at Boomerang Beach for the Carb Great Lakes Pro. So Nixie Ryan from Lennox Head, she's also off to a great start for 2022. My name is Britt Nickel. I've now got Chris Enover back in the booth with me. How are you going, Chris? Yeah, good. Just went out to have a quick check of conditions, see what's happening out there. And, uh, well, someone who uh, is definitely in tune with the conditions is none other than last heat winner. Winner of the semi-final number two. Semi-final number one, actually. Sarah Baum, congratulations. Thanks so much. Um, yeah, waves are super fun. Yeah, talk us through it out there. I know it's been a bit of shifting conditions, obviously, coming around from Barubi. You know, we had the lineup this morning here at One Mile. It, took, it felt like it took a few heats for everyone to figure it out because um, how was your transition from Barubi to here? Yeah, um, it looked super fun this morning. And then when I got out there, it was like quite choppy and quite wobbly. And I was like, oh, you know, I've got to um, pay attention here. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I'm just kind of still trying to find my feet out here and um, uh, just trying to snag a couple of little insiders that I keep that just keep running down the bank. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the final. Yeah, well, you definitely have started to do that. I mean, that 8.575 was one of the, the biggest scores of the women's event so far. Um, you're looking very comfortable on your back end. What are you riding? What's uh, under the feet? It's looking magic. Um, I just got this um, from the Smith Shapes guys here in Oz um, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, the other day was the first time I'd surfed it. And it's absolutely amazing. Just like a little 5.8 uh, Pixter model. Um, it's just nice and sharp and holds the rail really nicely. And um, yeah, it's going really good. So I might just put it in the cupboard after this. <laughs> Oh, I think that's a good idea, Sarah. It's Britt Nickel here. Uh, we know that we, you went a few years without a major backing, major sponsor. Great to see a sticker on your board now. What does it mean to you to have su have that support? Oh, it feels so much. Like, a huge thanks to the guys here at, from O'Neill and um, Bainey is looking after me. And, um, yeah, it just feels so good to, like, paddle on my board and see that there's, like, a nice big sticker there. And, um, yeah, it just gives me so much more confidence and a lot more, like, less stress on my shoulders as well, knowing that I have them backing me and, and with such good equipment as well. So, yeah, big thanks to them. Yeah, well, it seems like it's all coming together, Bormi. You've obviously been around for a long time, you know, doing the QSs. You've had some great results in the past couple of years. You've had a bunch of wins. So you know how to get that victory and get it done. Um, you know, I was saying to Britt before, you, you, got, you were built for the championship tour, and just to get there would be amazing to see. So, you know, hopefully you can keep rolling through this event. And obviously, is that the goal, end of the year? Look at those Challenger series and, and hopefully make a run for that world tour. 100%. Like... Yeah, the, the, t the tour is looking really good this year. We've got eight events now, so um, this is just a nice 
sort of not like a warm-up but you know hopefully I can uh, keep going from here and keep the ball rolling and um, get into those major events yeah well we're, we're backing you and uh, we think you're looking very solid on your board you, you've been the standout of the event and uh, all the best for the final um, hopefully get another win under the belt yeah cool thanks guys see you Bormi well, in that break, we had some action going on in the water for semi-final heat number two. Nixie Ryan and Philippa Anderson. Look at those scores. Oh, it was hard not to just jump <laughs> jump in and go, oh, my God, how are those turns from Nixie Ryan? And then, I mean, Philippa Anderson got this wave nice and vertical through the lip, wraps this one back around very nice and composed. And, well, she eyes off this end section and it just stands up for her. And look at this turn, just hucks the tail. You saw that grip pad just waft over the section and then well Nixie Ryan straight behind her I mean the wave was a bit funky at the start but then look at these turns down the line tags that one through the lip Brit and then she gets this end section and this was the money turn just loaded up and just threw the whole kitchen sink at it and well so there's the response from Nixie Ryan so two great numbers 8.25 she just goes Philippa whatever you can do I can do better and she's upped it Nixie Ryan, well, she's certain, certainly looking to maintain that momentum. She's come off a couple of great results already. Winner of the Boomerang Cup, Great Lakes Pro last week. So Nixie Ryan from Lennox Head. Off to a great start for her 2022 campaign so far. We also have another Lennox Head surfer in the semifinals of the men's side of the draw. Mikey Madonna, so great to see Lennox Head producing the goods. Great surfers in that region. And, well, Philippa Anderson in this current semi-final heat number two. You definitely can't rule Philippa out. She's been around for a while now. She lives just down the road. She's from the Newcastle region. And uh, she actually owns her own surf school now, Chris. Yeah, it's great to see Philippa giving back. You know, all that experience, that knowledge over time. And, yeah, putting it into a, uh, a surf school. Like yourself, Britt, you've got giving back a surf school. You do the mentoring and coaching. And I know Philippa's doing the same thing down at Newcastle. You know, you... Women have built up so much experience over the years and understanding of the, of the sport and the ocean and to give it back to people that, that love the sport, it's, it's really inspiring and it's really cool to see. And, you know, Philippa doing that down at Newcastle. If you're ever in Newcastle, go down and uh, get amongst Philip Anderson Surf School and uh, get, many pointers of off your, get as many pointers off her as you can because she is a book of knowledge. It's great to see too, you like... I've seen a fair bit of uh, stuff from Philippa's socials and whatnot from her surf school, and she's she is hands on. She's down there as a coach, surf coaching and and teaching kids and and other people coming through doing the lessons. So you find often that some surf schools, you know, someone might own it, but then they've got a heap of coaches underneath them that run all the classes. But with Philippa's, she's actually on the ground doing all the hard work as well. Yeah, she is, and it's not easy. I mean, long days in the sun, and um, you know communicating with people, pushing them into waves. It, it, it is a, um, a hands-on job. And I know she's giving a lot of, you know, experience behind her to do that. And I know she loves it. And it's a good project she's got going on there. And, uh, yeah, go check it out if you're in the new country. Right now we're up at the Port Stephens region, just up the road. I didn't know it was here if you didn't actually know where it was. It's a sneaky little exit just as, as you come over the bridge from Newcastle there. And, uh... Yeah, chuck a right and uh, or a left if you're coming down the coast and pull into Port Stephens and check it out. Big thanks to the Port Stephens Council and uh, Destination New South Wales and Newcastle Airport. You can fly in there and come just up the road as well. So plenty of opportunity to come check out this beautiful region. We're around at One Mile Beach. We've been at Barubi all week. You saw the sand dunes and that uh, beautiful region there. Very different to what you'd expect on the east coast of Australia. But now we've moved around to a protected right point break in one mile. This is where we finished the event last year. And with Philippa Anderson, she'd be looking to go one better than last year. She got a second. But she's up against the ropes with Nixie Ryan locking in at 8.25 on her first ride. And coming off a win at Boomerang. Now Philippa Anderson with a seven. So she's right thereabouts. Could be a battle of the backups as we roll into the back end of this heat, Brit. Sorry, I was just tuned out there for a second, Chris. <laughs> I was saying it could be a battle of the backups in the back end of this heat here. It certainly could be. Nixie Ryan, an 8.25, so going into that excellent range. Philip Anderson, a 7. Still plenty of time remaining, 14 and a half minutes. So, yeah, just to, I had to step out for a short moment. 
We are, of course, down a commentator, Cooper Chapman. How dare he go surf semifinals? Yeah, stop winning, Coops. Come on. <laughs> no, it's great to see Cooper um, rolling through the event. He certainly has been in fine form, but in the water we have semifinal heat number two of the women's. Nixie Ryan, Philippa Anderson, two natural footers on this right-hand point break. Who will get the bin in the blue from Lennox Head? Philippa Anderson on screen there. Just looking back towards the beach, she was locked in a seven. So interesting to note that on Philippa's wave, it was two turns. The last turn, really, really probably the money turn. And Nixie Ryan, well, she managed to get three turns in on that 8.25. The first turn was more of a setup turn, a bit of a check turn. Flat section, carved back into the pocket, and it was really the end of her wave too that stood up for her. And I think that was where the judges really... And this year, she did the same thing at Phillip Island, got a fifth. Then she gets the win up at Boomerang, finds herself at the top of the leaderboard on the Australia Oceana ratings right now, you know, after a couple of events. It must feel pretty special for her because, you know, this is definitely a bit of a breakout year for her. For sure. I think, you know, like Nixie coming off a fifth place and like you said last year as well, but coming off a fifth place and then having the win... For Nixie, she'd be coming into this event with a lot of confidence. And you can see it there in her surfing, Chris. And unfortunately, just the commentator's curse going down on that last turn. But Nixie Ryan, she'll make her way back out the back there. Still quite young. And uh, yeah, but she shows a lot of maturity in her surfing. And coming from that region at Lennox, she's got a great support network there from her family. And of course, that Lee crew from the Board Riders. Yeah, you can see she's perfected those carbs on the point break there at Lennox, just like Mikey, that big swooping carve, holding the rail right around and then getting those big end section turns like you get down the point at Lennox. There's two, there are two big turns in her repertoire that's, you know, really seen her get success this year. And uh, if she keeps it up, I mean, she's going to get a lot more success in the future. Right now, that was a 3.75 for that one big swooping carve and then she came up unstuck. So pretty much... 375 for one big wrapping carve. Chuck a couple of them together. You're going to be looking pretty healthy right up around that seven point range, and that's what she'll be looking to do. Philippa Anderson with priority. 11 minutes 40 on the clock. And she'll be looking for that 5.01 to take the lead back off Nixie. Nixie just waving her arms. It has That's, been. She's not saying hi to mum. She's actually <laughs> asking for the situation. <laughs> but Tash, I'm sure you're tuning in back at home. I um, had a few messages from Nixie's mum uh, at Boomerang last week. And there was a couple of really close calls there for Nixie towards the end of both of her heats. And uh, one of the heats, it was like, okay, I'm losing my fingernails. <laughs> and then the very next heat was like, okay, I'm pulling my hair out. So I feel like if Nixie goes home, her mum's just going to look completely different. Oh yeah, I know. I know that feeling down to a T. <laughs> Laura was, Laura always lot ended up on the uh, the opposite. Ever since her junior career, she always ended up on the opposite side of off the wrong side of those calls in the CT. Fall off last turn all the time. And then mum would be at home. Now she's going over the falls of jaws, and I'm sure mum's not <laughs> finding that any easier either. So certainly not. Probably worse. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess that's what we deal with as we uh you know you just, just support these athletes in the events. There's so many close calls, and the hard thing is there can only be one winner at every event. And, uh, you know, it's not a team sport. It's an individual sport, and, you know, you've got to learn to take those losses as well as you take the wins and learn from the losses. And, well, Nixie Ryan's definitely been doing that because uh, she's come out this year, and, you know, to get that maiden win would be really special and a big confidence boost. And you can just see her surfing's elevated instantly since the win. It certainly has. I mean, she's always been an amazing surfer, but you can just see that little bit extra flair that little bit extra energy on the waves that she's catching on her turns and she's really just putting everything into it and i think that's coming off that confidence boost from last week with that win chris yeah she just looks like she's glued to her board and can't really put a foot wrong and you know she's always been one to get good scores but to come out against someone like philip anderson who drops a seven and then you just lock in an 8.25 first wave like that's a, shows a lot of maturity in her surfing and you know, on a right point break, and to really step up and do that, it's great signs. Well, Philip Anderson would have been thinking, okay, great, I'm off to a good start here in the semi-final, and then all of a sudden, Nixie answers back with that 8.25. Well, live action in the water. Philip Anderson carves back to the section. She's looking for the steeper one here. Gets it up there. Can she get another one? 
just a little hung up behind here. She's going to race down the line, hoping to get in front of it. Only looking for a 5.01 at this stage to go into the lead. Got this inside Shorey here, Chris. It's going to grow. I just feel as though she was a little behind each of those sections in that last half of that wave. <clears throat> yeah, constantly chasing that one down. It just had such a good shape to it, and it was just it was right there to, to offer a huge score. And It wasn't anything Philippa did on that wave, but just the wave just had a bit too much pace to it. Nice carving turn back into the pocket. Sets her up really nicely for this section. She does a perfect job getting high and tight there. Comes around the section. You see that big whitewash section. She got around it and then foam climb there. And look, she could never really get out in front of it again after this and had to hop over that section. And then it just went real speedy on her. And, you know, if the wave was there. I mean, if you're on that wave, you'd probably be thinking this one's an eight every day of the week. And then just went a bit funky on her down the line. It'll be a backup. We'll have to see whether it gets that five-point ride. I know she'll be really hoping to get that lead back coming into the last 10 minutes of this heat. Nixie Ryan up and riding, looking to drop out of 375. She's well on her way to it now, and oh, maybe not. I don't think that'll be a 375 for Nixie. We'll have to wait and see what the judges think with Phillipers, and there it is. It's just gone above the requirements. So pressure shifts back onto Nixie Ryan. Philip Anderson got the job done there. 5.25. She got the lead, but it's only leading, leaving Nixie with a four-point ride. This will be a very interesting paddle back out. And here we have the Destination New South Wales replay. Powered by Volkswagen, Nixie Ryan linking this one. And just unfortunately, a bit of a smaller wave off the point there. Flattens out, and Nixie just gets on straight up and out. I, like Chris, I'm not sure that's going to be the requirement. She's looking for a four. Yeah, Currently trying to replace that 3.75. Yeah, I'm not sure if she's going to get it there. I mean, I feel like Nixie, if she had have heard that score of Philippa's getting a 5.25 going to the lead and Nixie needing a 4, I reckon she would have waited a little bit longer for a better wave. She has the 8.25. She doesn't need to get another 4. She needs to get another 8 and just put the nail in the coffin here. So get one of those bigger sets like we saw Philippa on there and, and just let it give her the opportunity just to surf um, and not try to manufacture a score. Because that's when, you know, the likes and the experience of Philippa will just gobble that up and go, you know, before you know it, Philippa will have another eight. and You'll be the one chasing your tail at the end. So six minutes 30 on the clock. And this is really important here. It looks like Nixie taking that wave. Definitely a mistake, I feel, because that puts Philippa out the back. She'll get priority. You'll see the P pop up next to Philippa. We see Philippa further out. She'll establish priority in the lineup. And uh, we'll see how she maintains and manages the back end of this heat. Nixie. Here we go. Nixie Ryan on this inside section. Puts it up there and just for unfortunately going down. So Nixie, she's going to have to regather herself, reset, find a way back out into the lineup. I don't think those inside ones are going to do it for her because Philippa Anderson's sitting out there with first priority. And I feel as though Philippa Anderson gets one of those bigger set waves. She's going to drop that 5.25 from her scoreline. So Nixie... I feel as though she just needs to paddle back out and just wait for one of those good ones. Yeah, I'd be feeling a lot different about the back end of this heat had Nixie been sitting out there with priority right now. She would have been well and truly in control and I would have had her as a red-hot favourite leading into the back five minutes of this heat. But now with Philippa out the back, Nixie's on the inside. So she's going to have to paddle back out, utilise some energy. She's going to hear that she needs a score and you know that's when the pressure starts building up and it's going to be a real test for her because... You've got the 825, and you know, we saw that Stuart Kennedy in Boomerang have a nine, but then Joel Vaughan just came back with two great numbers, and uh, he just wasn't able to find you know a six in the end of that heat. And well, Nick's only looking for a four, but with Philippa holding priority, she's going to have the pick of any way she wants. And I'd be very surprised if she just sits out there and plays the uh, con commander role and holds any better wave that comes off Nixie. Philippa Anderson, she's no stranger to competition. She's been around for a long time, knocking on that World Tour door. She is, I guess you could almost say, the local for this region. She is from Newcastle, just down the road. And Philippa, well, she knows how to play a strategic game. I feel as though she's definitely going to be sitting out there and just holding down that priority. However, the positive here for Nixie Ryan is the fact that she chose to paddle out and not use the rip off the headland. So I feel as though... There may be potential for Nixie to pick up one of those wide ones if a set comes through. 
Yeah, and we got to see Philippa Anderson mix it with the world's best last year. She got the wild card into the uh, Rip Curl Newcastle Cup, it was, and uh, she did not disappoint at all. She put up a great fight against Carissa Moore. Unfortunately, going down there to Carissa, who uh, yeah went on to win the world title. And there's Philippa Anderson chucking some innovation at it. So, was that? I love the intent. I love the uh, the go for it attitude with Philzy there. I just don't but know if she needed to take that wave, to be honest. Neither do I. It'd be interesting to see where Nixie is. I haven't seen Nixie the P pop up next to Nixie's name after taking that wave. So, there she was. She was paddling over that wave. So, nice big first tag. And just goes for it on that one with the big grab rail. Similar situation to what we saw with Cooper at the end of that heat. Took a wave in the last couple of minutes when he probably didn't need to. He probably could have sat there. She didn't need to catch another wave unless Nixie did. Which all she needed to do was hold Nixie off the best wave that comes through the lineup. Um, she could have sat there and controlled that back end of the heat, but now that's out of her control. So it all comes down to Nixie Ryan now. Nixie will hold priority for the back end of this heat. And she's looking for a four-point ride and well, you'd, you'd almost have to back her in after the, the results she's had and kind of the uh, heat management she showed up at Boomerang. Highly achievable. Just one big solid turn from Nixie Ryan and she'll definitely lock in that score. So only looking for a four. But yeah, keeping in mind that, that final in Boomerang from the Carve Great Lakes Pro, she got a high eight for one solid big backhand manoeuvre. So she's definitely more than capable. She's already locked in that 8.25, so she's got the highest single wave score of this semi-final so far. And holding down first priority, Philippa Anderson in the red, in the lead, but definitely would not be feeling safe at this stage. Yeah, and if you think back to the quarterfinal in Boomerang, she was against the ropes, Nixie, in the exact same situation. Sierra Kerr had her against the ropes, and right down to the last minute, here is Nixie Ryan on a bigger wave, and... Well, if she finishes this one, she's going to be well and truly on her way to a four-point ride. Two nice calves. I feel like she just needs to finish this wave, and it could be the number. Will it link up on this inside section? She's Will trying it? to stick with it. Yeah, it looks like it might give her a bonus section here. It's starting to double up. These ones do grow. And she tags that one through the lip. Oh, no. She doesn't ride out. So, I feel just like need to complete. I feel as though that last section was Nixie's bread and butter. She's been putting the board up there every single time. And just unfortunately getting a little hung up. But yeah, bigger wave. Bit bumpy. But yeah. she's managed it well. Two nice calves. She had to cut that one a bit short due to the bump. And this is where it goes really flat. So, you know, it just needed an exclamation mark on the end. She just needed to finish. And this inside track section's proved tricky for a lot of the surfers. She hops over it. Maybe just turned a little bit early. And she just needed a lip line and project out to the flat, out to the flats. I feel as though she didn't quite have the speed that she wanted either coming into that section. There it is, a 4.5, Nixie oh, Ryan. So the judge is loving the size of the wave at the back. And obviously the commitment shown on those rail turns, she does get the number. And uh, I'm not sure what where the time is at and what this one's doing. So we're in the Mad Max minute. So pressure now put on to Philippa Anderson. Looking for a 5.76. And is she going to be the heartbreaker again, Nixie Ryan? She did it to Sierra Kerr up at the Boomerang in the last minute. She's put Philip Anderson in a position that she needs to score. Nixie Ryan on screen there, the surfer in blue from Lennox Head. She's just come off a first place finish at the car of Great Lakes Pro last week. We are 18 seconds away from finding out whether or not Nixie is into her second final of the year. Will there be another opportunity for Philip Anderson? Ocean looks like it's gone quiet, Chris. It has, and wow, she's done it again. She's just iced the end section there and uh, taken down that heat. And Nixie Ryan takes down Philippa Anderson in a very close matchup. It was a battle of the backups in the end, like we thought. And well, Nixie Ryan getting it done on a very last wave, and that is going to conclude the semi final. We are going to be back with more semi final action in the men's division. This is the Port Stevens Pro. Brought to you by Gage Roads.
Some say we've got engine oil in our veins. Smell that in a fair bit of dust. Sure, these wild utes are hard work, but it's no job. The roar of them. Pure. Take some rare skills to settle one. A band of brothers and sisters. Where man learns from machine, learns from man. And those that visit are transformed. Almost as much as the V6 Amaroks. It's like this place rubs off on them. You gotta see it to believe it. The only ute reared for the road. Welcome back to finals day here of the Gage Roads Bruco Port Stevens Pro. This is a men's and women's WSL QS 1000. The second stop on the Vistler New South Wales Pro Surf Series for 2022. My name is Britt Nickel. Joining the booth with Nathan Riverland. How are you going, Nate? Yeah, good, Britt. Uh, nice to be in here in the uh, in the warmth. It's pretty wet out there. Just uh, spent a couple of heats on the beach comms, just getting blasted by the rain, but... Uh, yeah, it's beautiful to be in here and uh, the aircon's on, but it's uh, it's nice and nice and toasty. I'm I'm the, I'm a bit chilly in here. You're a bit chilly. I just put my jumper on now. <laughs> just got put my jumper on, so I'm all right. Not too bad, but <laughs> I can show. Chris Zaffis is starting this one off with a uh, smaller wave on the inside. Nice wrap, controlled one back to the wash, and uh, he's waiting for an inside opportunity here. Just doing his best. Uh, linking this one all the way through the inside, drifting the tail out, oh, going down. Just unfortunately coming unstuck. That Dylan Shapes has been going really well for Chris Zaffis. In the blue, we also have in the red, Kalani Ball. This is, of course, men's semi-final heat number one. So exciting day here for finals day. Things really starting to heat up. We have the Destination New South Wales Wave replay. Talk us through this one, Nath. Yeah, so this was Chris Zaffis' first number. He was just trying to get some something going on a smaller one. We've seen a tactic of a lot of the guys and, and the ladies just to get a uh, mid-range score under the belt early and uh, build on that as a bit of a foundation. As you see Chris drive towards this, had that nice blow tail finish, but uh, unfortunately unable to ride out of that. So thanks to Volkswagen and Destination New South Wales for that last replay. Just a 3.75 there for the surfer in blue, Chris Zaffis. Off to an early start. These are 25-minute semi-finals, so still plenty of time on the clock. I'm sure Chris will head back on out there and just reset, regather himself because at the end of this semi-final, I feel like he's not going to want that 3.75 in his scoreline. Absolutely. I wasn't sure if you're talking about Chris Edover or Chris Zaffis there for a minute, and then I was like, oh, yeah, in the heat, Chris Zaffis. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, 3.75 for Chris. A little bit of a foundation to build upon for the uh, rest of his heat with just under 21 minutes to go. But, Britt, we speak about, you know, these epic competitors and Chris Zaffis and Kalani Ball, two of those. We'll come back to that after this last one of Kalani. But beautiful fin ditch on that first section. This one getting a bit soupy, so he's done well to get two sections out of that. But we speak about experienced competitors and Chris Zaffis and Kalani Ball, both both that. Kalani's had a couple of really good QS uh, semi-final finishes last year at Port Stephens and in the Mad Max Pro at Maroubra. And he also had a fifth in the uh, Halieva Challenger Series event last year. So he's coming off some really good form. And Chris Zaffis has also had uh, quite a number of podium finishes in the QSs over the last four to five years. So we're in store for an absolute cracker. Certainly the case here for semi-final heat number one, Chris Zaffis. Now residing in Queensland, originally from Angiari. Recently married. Oh, His wow. wife, Charlotte. So Lovely. congratulations to Chris and Charlotte. Yeah, now living in Queensland. They've he's just uh if you look at Chris's socials, he's got a new edit called Welcome Home and there's a heap of footage there on the around the Goldie and uh yeah. Really good waves. 
I feel like they've just scored for months and months and months. They have. They've had awesome ways. Been quite the opposite of what surf we've had in Victoria over the last three months. It's been absolutely terrible. Some some locals, uh, elders, have sort of been saying it's the worst summer we've had in 35 years of waves. So well, it's that's uh, well and truly beyond our years. Yeah, absolutely. So this is Chris Zappas on his second wave of the heat, coming off the bottom with some aggression. Jams it out of the pocket, and this wave's sort of getting a bit soupy and sudsy on the inside. He's doing a bit of work to try and stay on it. Conditions really starting to look tricky out there. Obviously, we're in the booth, but Nath, you just came off from the beach. Compared to what was happening earlier, like we've had conditions change, it went from being kind of the mid-range ones off the point, kind of inside a bit more, to then the wider peak uh, and further out. What's it looking like now when you were down on the beach? Yeah, it's definitely changed a lot um, out there, Britt. I guess the uh, the wind kind of seems to be... The wind's definitely strengthened and it's uh, coming up the face a little bit more. And we've seen, yeah, as the tide's dropped out, the bank has shifted to these wider, bigger waves as we've got a wave replay here, courtesy of Destination New South Wales and Volkswagen, of Chris Zappis's last one. So I reckon it's probably going to come around his first number around that three to four range uh might be just below his first one there was quite a lot of downtime on that one but uh he'll be uh back to the drawing board and uh, at least you know he's had his feet in the wax on a couple of waves already a lot of flat sections in this wave here for the surfer in blue just linking that one all the way through finishing off strong but like you said not much on offer out the back so chris zaffis in the blue in the lead with 3.1 and a 3.75 so much not much of substance yet in this semi-final heat number one. Still plenty of time on the clock, 17 and a half minutes. Kalani Ball out there in the red, holding down first priority, four in his scoreline. Only looking for a 2.85 at this stage to advance through to the final. Coming up next, we have the men's semi-final heat number two. It will be Cooper Chapman and Mikey Madonna. Wow. Going to be awesome. Good to see a fellow commentator in Coop. Making a couple of heats, so he's uh yeah, good luck to Cooper. Certainly made our afternoon pretty busy. It has. We've been in the booth a lot, you and I. I mean, you were surfing a couple of heats today as well, so Chris Chris has also had a busy day in here. But uh we love it. We want to see our fellow uh commentators do well and it's uh good. You can mix it up, you know, be a bit in the booth, a bit on the beach, getting a couple of waves. I feel as though Mikey Madonna would be a little fired up now after watching Nixie Ryan's heat. Both How from Lennox that? Head. There's a potential Lennox Head final there for the men's and the women's. Will it happen? We'll soon find out. But Chris Zaffis, Kalani Ball currently in the water. Yeah, so 16 and a half minutes remaining. That performance from Nixie and Philippa in that last heat, that was an awesome heat. We'll get back to that after this last one. Here is Kalani Ball. Nice smooth wrap to open up. Staying sticky in the wax here. Comes off the bottom with some aggression. And wow. Nice grab tail there. Links it back to the wash. And he's going to try and link this one through. Jeez, did some damage on those first two sections. So it's going to be, I'd say, the best score of the heat so far. Kalani Ball jamming the tail out in the uh, sudsy section on the inside. Throws at the layback. And uh, wow, that was a great wave for Kalani Ball. Absolutely making the most of that one, the surfer in red. Off to a great start here for this semi-final. He's going to make his way in and use that little elevator out the rock wall just to drag himself out. We have the Destination New South Wales wave replay powered by Volkswagen on the screen. Nice first opening carve there, really opening up the arms and the shoulders. Drives hard off the bottom, cracks lip, That's drips her. the tail, grabs the rail as well. So Kalani ball on fire here. Bit of a frothy section here. It can be quite easy to come unstuck as the fins disengage, but Kalani Ball definitely didn't come unstuck on this one. He's just kind of waiting for this inside section. And it finishes off. Yeah, he was super patient there on the inside. Didn't want to, you know, he was just surfing nicely, rail to rail, waiting for something to open up. So thanks to uh, Destination New South Wales, you can see Kalani Ball doing the run around. The waves are breaking, yeah, pretty wide, so... After the uh, surfer finishes off their wave in the shore, they've been yeah doing the runaround to jump straight back out, like you were alluding to. We have some judges' scores dropping in. We'll wait for those to pop up. And there it is, a seven for Kalani Ball, the surfer in red, now into the lead of semi-final heat number one. He's backed it up with a four. He makes his way back into the lineup. He'll look, be looking to replace that. 
and make the requirement harder for the surfer in blue now. Chris Zaffis on the back foot, chasing a 7.25. Yeah, so he's going to be a bit behind the eight ball with, you know, 10 minutes elapsed in this heat. Um, obviously, Chris is a great surfer, and he's secured a couple of uh, scores that have been above the seven-point range today, so he knows what he's doing. He's got priority, just needs one of those bigger, wider ways to unload on. Yeah, the man from Stanwell Park, Kalani Ball, on screen there. Just using the rip. That is the rock wall that we've been talking about. There is a headland there. So we did have a location change today. We've been at Barubi Beach for the first two days of competition. Some beautiful conditions, beautiful waves to be had. We had lefts and rights. But we are now at One Mile Beach. Right-hand point break. And competitors making the most of what's on offer. Yeah, so we saw those, yeah, those two female, the ladies quarter, uh, sorry, semi-finals in the water before. Action are plenty, and great to see um, Sarah Baum return to some form, and Nixie Ryan making her second final on the Visla New South Wales Pro Surf Series. She's in amazing, uh, amazing nick, and uh, she's looking great for the uh, to try and take out another title here. She's certainly looking like she uh, is in good form to take out the series if she can maintain the momentum. Be interesting matchup. Sarah Baum and Nixie Ryan, they've both been on fire this entire okay. event. Real power surfers as well. Just have showed off both their elite rail game. I've been absolutely loving as uh, being a goofy myself, watching the uh, lip line sort of rock and roll floater that Sarah Baum's been doing on the inside. Instead of sort of squaring up and going critical, she's sort of throwing a bit of a variation in there that no one's really been doing this whole event. Sarah Baum, she's, she's known for variety. She's... Got a great uh, forehand and backhand attack, but I mentioned to Chris earlier, she's not only got that strong surfing and that foundation rail to rails, but she uh, also knows how to get progressive. She can throw it up there in the air and, like you said, throwing those variations. She's definitely known for it, so it'll be interesting to see what she does in this final. It will. So we've got 12, just over 12 minutes to go. Kalani Ball currently leading this one with a seven and a four-point ride. Chris Zaffis. Holding priority, you can see the P next to his name. He's got a 3.75 and a 3.10, so small foundation to build upon. He needs a 7.25 to go into the lead and advance into the final. There we go, Chris Zaffis has first priority. Kalani Ball now with second priority. It's just come up on the screen there, so just to the left of the surfers' names on the screen in the top left-hand corner. If you're watching from home and wondering what the P and the 2 stand for, that is the priority system. So the surfer in blue currently has first priority, meaning that he has right of way to any wave in the lineup. The surfer in red, Kalani Ball, with second priority, meaning that he has to give way to the surfer in blue. So it'll be interesting to see. They're both sitting next to each other on screen now, both in shot, in view. We'll be waiting for a set. Still just over 11 minutes on the clock, so these 25-minute heats are giving those surfers more opportunity. Yeah, we speak about opportunity and with the, the field being halved and halved, even with, you know, having man on man and woman on woman heats, yeah, there is a lot greater opportunity. And uh, the surface can become a, a bit more patient and just wait for those set waves to come through rather than sort of like we were seeing earlier with the uh, four person heats, surfers going to the inside, getting a bit deeper, going some of the smaller ones just to keep the mo that momentum flowing when they weren't in priority or weren't close to being up in the top order. It all comes down to rhythm and consistency, and they're the, they're the people who have been getting through the heats. So Chris Zaffis and Kalani Ball, they've both been in rhythm. They've both been consistent, which is why they're in the semi-final. This is, of course, semi-final heat number one. Up next, heat number two, Cooper Chapman, fellow commentator, and Mikey Madonna from Lennox Head. This is, of course, finals day here. Plenty of action and exciting times ahead. For the Gage Roads, Bruco, Port Stephens Pro. This is, of course, a men's and women's WSL QS 1000. The second stop on the New South Wales Pro Surf Series presented by Visla. We were in Boomerang Beach last week for the Carve Great Lakes Pro. That was, of course, our first stop. And after this event wraps up, it will be to Maroubra. Yeah, heading, heading down south a bit further. So, yeah, really looking forward to that one. Obviously, a bit more action to go here. We're going to crown our event champions. Obviously, Nixie Ryan already she was went into this event number one on the um, Australia Oceania rankings and uh, 
be fair to say she'll keep that ranking with either a first or a second in this one. And Kalani Ball, wow, big critical turn to start this one off. Generating a bit of speed down the line. Throws a bit of spray there. Squares up for this whitewater section. Lay back there and he'll jump on out of there. Got some damage done. Britt, take us through Chris Zaffis here. Here we go. Chris Zaffis in the blue, answering straight back, straight oh. up into the section. And he oh. is happy with that one. I mean, I thought Kalani Ball's wave was pretty excellent. But Chris Zaffis just showing us that he's certainly still in this heat. That was an unreal exchange from both surfers. And they've pulled up <laughs> right next to each other. Bit of a paddle battle. It's almost like, well, if you're going to do it, I'm going to do it too. So they waited patiently. The set finally came. They went back to back. We've got the Destination New South Wales re Wave replay here. Powered by Volkswagen. Just drives hard off the bottom. He's really waiting for this last section. But Chris Zaffis in the blue managed to get a couple of those turns. But this one here wow. just laid straight into it. And, well, that Dylan Shapes under his feet looking really spicy. This guy here also looking super confident. Kalani Ball in the red, currently in the lead. This wave just stood up and just taps that last section. I feel as though the first two turns were the strongest there for the surfer in red. Which way do you reckon it's going to go? Who would get the better of that exchange, do you reckon, Britt, between red and blue? I mean, I was thinking that that wave was pretty strong for the surfer in red, but then mm. I, that that last turn of Chris Zappas, if he hadn't done that last, last turn, I would have probably said that red got the better of that too, but... I feel as though Chris might get the better of this exchange. Yeah, I totally agree. I think we didn't see uh, the first two two turns of Chris um, when we were on that Kalani Bolt um, wave before. So um, I was just concentrating on that last turn going, okay, that's going to be a, a banger of a score. But we saw the two turns in that replay. And um, wow, I think Chris Affis will probably get the best of that exchange. Yeah, you're not wrong. I mean, we're certainly not judges, which is why we're here in the webcast truck in the booth bring you all the live action here of finals day of the Gage Roads, Bruco, Port Stevens Pro, and things are certainly heating up here for the men. Semi-final heat number one. Judges' scores are starting to roll on in. Who will get the better of that exchange? Pretty even matchup between these two surfers. They've both been in form as they make their way back into the lineup. They'd be listening pretty intently to the beach commentators and wow, wow scores are starting to drop for the surfer in blue. It is certainly going into that excellent range, and, well, we can see why. He knew it, too, with that claim at the end. So, yeah, we can see one of the judges already dropping in one of the scores. Wow. That's probably, if it looks like, if it's going to be around that 9.3 mark, it's going to be the top score of the day. Probably the top score of the event so far. And it's great to see that in finals day we are having such high scores rolling on in. I feel as though that was certainly the biggest turn of the event so far. For sure. He almost disappeared in the white water, didn't he? Such a heavy section. And, well, Chris Zaffis just threw it up there. Strong, committed surfing. He certainly didn't hold back. Backed his ability. And we'll just wait for those last scores to lock in. Rolling in through. Judges probably deliberating over those ones. Watching those replays. He's going again here. Passes around the white water. Squares up, lay back on that first section. Going to get another bowl here. Hits it out of the top, jams the tail into the white water, and just get the one-two punch on those first two sections. But wow, what a heat this one is. Kalani Ball slamming those first two sections. Oh, going for another lay back. Jesus, an entertaining one as we approach the uh, twilight of this heat. Did so well to even manage that last turn there, the surfer in red. Well, red's locked in a 7.5 and a 7. Chris Zaffis, a 9.15. He's still in second place, but he did just catch a wave. This is the destination New South Wales wave replay. He's looking for a score. Holy dooly. 9.15 for that one prior to, prior to that replay. That's insane. So the judge is really rewarding him for getting... So critical, especially on that last section. Easily, I think, turn of the event. If not turn of the Vizsla New South Wales Pro Surf Series. It was up there with Nixie Ryan's massive turn at Boomerang on her backhand. But Kalani Ball getting, I think this was his 7. Was he 7.5? Might have been 7.5. So we'll wait and see. We're awaiting a score from Chris Zaffis. Uh, and we'll see if he can retake the lead. Did have a 9.15 as... 
his highest wave before. So he'll still have one score to drop in. You can see Kalani balls Carly in first with four and a half minutes to go. So Chris Zaffis is doing the run around. He'll try and get a couple more waves before the end of this first semi final. But wow, Britt, it's been an absolutely entertaining one. It has. Things went a little bit sleepy through the middle of this semi final, but all of a sudden the men just going back to back to back to back, throwing down those excellent scores and really firing up for semi final heat number one. I'm sure that would have fired up the two competitors about to head out for semi final heat number two. There it is, the highest top five scores of the event so far, Chris Zaffis. Well, that's what we just watched, a 9.15. He's also got the fourth, an eight, earlier on in round of 64, heat number eight. So Chris Zaffis appearing twice there. He's definitely remaining consistent and showing us why he's in this semi-final. Absolutely. Big thanks to the Fresh Air broadcast guys for uh, all these amazing graphics that they've been putting together and keeping us warm in the webcast uh, little truckies. So... Shout out to them. They've also been doing a great job. This is, of course, the finals day of the Gage Roads at Bruco, Port Stephens Pro, men's and women's WSL QS 1000. And while we have the competitors there, utilising that rip, dragging them out into the lineup with a few minutes remaining, I'll take this chance to thank our supporting partners for this event, Port Stephens Council, Newcastle Airport, Destination New South Wales, World Surf League, PRD Port Stephens, Chaos Surf Shop, Surfing New South Wales, and of course our webcast partners, Mad Mex and Volkswagen. We would not be sitting in here bringing you all the live action without all of that amazing support. And I can't help but thank also Vistler for coming on board for the Vistler New South Wales Pro Surf Series for 2022. Well, live action, the scores have just dropped. A six for the last of blue. Chris Zaffis is taking him into first place. Wow. There's two and a half minutes remaining. Both guys are still in the rip, trying to get dragged out. Kalani Ball's actually behind Chris as well. So I feel as though Chris Zaffis is going to get first priority and he's going to be sitting in that box seat. I feel like this has to be one of the heats of the, of the event so far. It's so close. Both gentlemen just firing shots at each other, going bang, bang with, you know, excellent, almost excellent scores. So this is that 9.15, the replay of that. So he's jamming those first two sections. And how is the money on this last section? Wow, we and he knew it. He certainly did. You could see the, the competitor in red there, Kalani, all duck diving <laughs> as well. Like he would have just seen that he's last gone, oh, turn right no. in front of him, thinking, oh, I thought I just had a good wave, but that was pretty heavy. So Chris Zaffis there waving around on screen. For anyone viewing at home, the surfer in the water, waving his hands in the air. He's trying to get the announcement from the beach commentator, an update of the scoring, the situation, time remaining. It is quite tricky this afternoon out here at One Mile. It was also tricky to hear this morning, just with the onshore breeze that we've had and the way the location is set up. So we've got a, a, an amazing sound system out there, but it is still hard to hear some of the scores sometimes especially when you've got a, a fair bit of water moving in the lineup you almost have to just wait until there's a bit of a lull absolutely yeah it can get a little bit tricky to hear out there but the uh yeah surfing new south wales uh crew have been doing an amazing job at at making sure the sound is in uh prime condition uh for for all the events of the visla new south wales pro surf series we're inside the mad mex minute kalani ball needs a 7.66 to go into first have to be the second best score of the heat behind Chris's one two for him to go into the lead. I feel like this has been like a mad twenty five minutes. Not just a mad mex last yeah. one minute. It's like been a mad mex heat in general. So Chris Zaffis and Kalani Ball just going wave for wave. I feel as though Kalani Ball would be thinking, I've put together a pretty good semi final, yeah. but just unfortunately not able to match the scores of Chris Zaffis in the blue. The the, uh, the guys have just turned it up a notch, I think, in these semi-finals. A 14.5 total is going to get you through almost any heat. So, Kalani Ball here. I think the time may have elapsed. He's going left. Knows he's uh, he's walked away with a great result here in the semi-finals. Wow. Lovely innovation there <laughs> from Kalani Ball. But, unfortunately, a little bit too late there for the surfer in red. Yeah, he'll walk away with a semi-final result here. So, he'll definitely bank that as a good result. But Chris Zaffis keeping his momentum flying 
into the final. We're going to catch a short break. This is the Gage Roads Port Stevens Pro. We'll be back after this ad break. What makes a place your place? Is it a place to play, learn and watch your kids grow? A place to have fun, laugh and belong? A place to work, kick back and share a beer with your mates? You can't touch it, put a price on it. You feel it. It's not about houses and cars and stuff. It's about people. The people you live with and share your dreams with. Your place might be big, it might be small, but finding your place, well, that's the most important thing in the world. Port Stephens is full of special places. We're planning for the future of our places in a way that makes it easy for you to understand and get involved. Coming to your place soon. Find out more on our website. We're back and into semi-final number two. This is the Vista New South Wales Pro Surf Series. Stop number two. We're at the Gage Roads Brew Co. Port Stevens Pro and some men's and women's WSL QS 1000 event. And Nathan Rivland in the booth with myself, Chris Enova, enjoying all the action and we're into a doozy of a second semi-final. Yeah, mate. That last heat was an absolute banger. Uh, arguably... I reckon the best heat of the event between Chris Zaffis and Kalani Ball with Chris Zaffis getting the chocolates and moving through to the final. So uh, Kalani's netted a great result in the semi-final, but uh, yeah, great to see Chris through to the final. He's been absolutely rampaging through this Fizzler New South Wales Pro Surf Series. And uh, yeah, knocking he knocked out Joel Vaughan in the uh, quarters, who was our uh, current Australian Oceania rankings leader. So yeah, Chris is in some form and he'll be looking to continue that in the final. Yeah, he's been taking some big scalps, and you know, he's been around for a long time, and looks like he's got a great board under his feet, and he's looking very confident, and, you know, we talk about those little breakthrough results, that momentum. Chris Zaffis definitely feels like he's got it in this event. Into the final, and I know it's been a while between wins for Chris Zaffis. I think all the way back in 2016, he got a win in the Mentawis Pro in a 1,000. So he'll be looking to uh, get back in the winner's circle, you know he's had a he's had plenty of years on the on the QS and surfed some of the prime events. You know had a good result in Arasira back in 2019. He had a bit of a standout year that year. Had a few podium finishes too. And well, he's uh, definitely going to be stoked to be in the final here. And you know it's stepping stone make, and make a run towards the Challenger Series for sure in the back end of this year. Absolutely, looks like Cooper Chapman's going to get his semi-final underway here. Bit of a soupy wave driving off the bottom with some power. Jamming the tail in uh, into the suds on this one. Bit of a smaller wave to start off with, perhaps a little bit of a uh, getting the momentum going, getting the feet in the wax. Yeah, definitely there for Cooper Chapman. So that'll be the first score to kick off the heat. Nothing too substantial. But you touched on that last heat. That was an absolute banger. And, uh, oh, it was such a good heat. <laughs> yeah, it was such a crazy one. I mean... The waves just seemed to turn on for that heat, and the, they found themselves on some big sections, and the commitment they were both throwing into the lip was was unbelievable. So yeah, like you said, some of the best surfing we've seen this whole event. And uh, Chris Zaff was coming out on top. That end section hit he did was oh crazy. Gosh. The biggest turn of the event so far, and uh, well, the biggest single turn for sure of the event. And, you know, we've seen some big airs go down, some other crazy stuff, but 
that one turn of Chris on that big heavy end section. Land him a nine point ride and yeah, very well deserving to be moving on to the final. And well, one of these surfers in front of us right now, either Cooper Chapman or Mikey McDonough from Lennox Head will be joining Chris Zaffis in the final. And that'll be coming up after the women's final. Yes, that's going to be a cracker as well. So Cooper Chapman's just started off with a three-point ride, just a uh, low one to start off, just uh, yeah, getting his feet in the wax and getting some confidence going. Mikey McDonough's got priority. He's definitely been a danger in this draw so far. He's been taking some big scalps along with Cooper, and uh, both of these guys definitely uh, have been highlights and standouts of the event and uh, and of the series so far. So. Yeah, either either one of these guys will be very deserving of a finals finish here at Port Stephens. Yeah, Mikey McDonough, he couldn't put a foot wrong in his last quarter final. Looked very solid on his equipment. And he said he's been putting in a lot of hard yards in the off-season. Putting a lot of that work. And I love the maturity he showed too. He's had a lot of really close finishes, close results. You know, those results just don't go his way. And I feel like he's so close to that breakout result and getting the momentum and, you know, building the confidence and... Being the surfer, that's kind of unstoppable. You know, you see like Joel Vaughan this year. He's been that surfer and everything's kind of gone his way up until that one heat. You know, in this event, in the quarters, it's the first time he's, you know, really put a foot wrong and that came down to a priority mistake in the end and, you know, that ended up spelling goodbye for him. So, Mikey McDonough wow. just kicking off where he left off in the quarters. A big wrapping turn and another second jam. So, two-turn combo. Won't be anything too crazy, but you can see what he has in his arsenal. Very Mick Fanning-esque on those, um, especially on that first turn. And like we spoke about a bit earlier, that style's going to be super suited if he's one of those Australia Oceania ranking guys to get into the first challenger at Snapper. Yeah, 100%. Loves a right point break. And he said he's feeling really at home out here. Nice big wrap all the way around and then tees off for the second one. You know, I can see that going up around the 5-5 you know, five, five range. We'll see what the judges think. He might keep it a little lower, but we'll have to wait and see what they think. The judges, it's uh, this is going to set the scale for this heat, especially coming off what we saw in the last heat. You yeah. know, Chris Zaffis and uh, Kalani Paul throwing some huge hammers down. So yeah, we've got just over 17 and a half minutes to go in this one. So we'll have a strong score to drop through for Mikey McDonough. So Cooper Chapman's back in the priority situation, and. Uh, sort of having a bit of a chat to Cooper before this heat and trying to target those bigger outside waves where uh, it worked really well for him in the quarterfinal. He was able to sit a bit wider than his uh, com other competitor in the heat and uh, utilise those bigger waves to get the win. Yeah, spot on. And there it is, Mikey McDonough. So the judges did love it. That big wrapping first carve into that closeout turn, six points. So... Judge is loving his approach out here. I think it has to do with how long he holds his rail for and the amount of spray he throws. It's kind of second to none in this lineup. Yeah, 100%. You know, a lot, I feel like Cooper, Kalani, and uh, Chris in the last couple of heats, they've been really powerful towards the lip, but the time that Mikey spends on rail just is second to none out here. 100%. And, yeah, how, how long he held the bottom turn on that second one as well. Rode so cleanly and smoothly through that first one. And then, so you can see Mikey waving for the situation there. He's not waving to any of the, any fans on the beach or anything. That basically means he's wanting the situation. He wants to know what his last score was. And then maybe a little bit of a time check as well. So Mike McDonough getting a six to start off with. That's a really strong start to uh, build foundation for the rest of his semi-final here. Yeah, I think Mikey be feeling very confident after hearing that score lock in. You know, just a two-turn combo landing him with six points. You hear that score and you go, well, that turn he does in his sleep. It's really committed, but he, he's polished that turn off so many times up there on the Lennox head point breaks. And, uh, well, to land a six for just two turns, you know, put three of them together on one wave, which we can definitely see happening out in this lineup. You know, that's when we're going to see those scores elevate right into the excellent range. And, Spot uh, on. And he did land some pretty big numbers in his last heat. Mikey McDonough. I feel like he hasn't even had a chance to be on, on a really good wave yet out here. Yeah, I really hope he gets the opportunity to get on one of those wider waves that we saw Chris Zaffis and Kalani Ball take advantage of. Because uh, like you said, two or three of those big calves that he started off with, it's no doubt going to go into the excellent range. Yeah, that's right. And well, 
the other surfer in the heat, the surfer in blue, Cooper Chapman, holding priority out the back. And, well, Cooper would love nothing more than to get a win here because the monkey is still on Cooper's back. It's been a long, long time coming. He's been searching for that maiden QS win for many, many years now. And, you know, you would have thought, you know, with the results he's had, he would definitely have found that win along the way, even in a 1,000 or, you know, a smaller event. He's obviously won a lot of specialty events, had a lot of great results throughout his career. But, you know, 2015, he finished 23rd in the QS in the world. 2016, he was 35th. 2017, 45th, 41st. So inside the top 50 for multiple years in a row. And, you know, that, you know, obviously a lot of those events would have been doing primes and high-rated contests. So surfing against the best surfers in the world for many years now. You know, probably not doing a lot of the smaller events. He just he kind of came along really quick, Cooper, and he really hit that big big scene really quick in his career. So, you know, I feel like one of these results, getting a win is going to be a huge confidence boost for him because I feel like he's, like we said, there's only one winner in every event. He hasn't got that monkey off the back yet, but it's very close. So here's a good-looking wave. Big wrapping turn for Cooper Chapman. Fortune loses the back foot a bit there. We'll see if it keeps him on. That's a nice turn with a big drop out of the face. Wraps that one around. This one's starting to stand up nicely, so that's a good car for Cooper. See what this one offers on the inside. Wraps it back to the pocket. This one's going to double up on the inside and give him some bonus sections. Gone a bit sleepy here, but what will it offer him down the line? Racing, racing down the line. Floats the boat and, well, completes that one. So Good wave there for Cooper Chapman. Great wave there for Coops. Had a bit of downtime, but he managed to get the job done a long wave. He's going to be doing the run around, get those legs motoring up the beach. Take us through the replay, Nath. Yeah, so it's replay courtesy of Destination New South Wales and Volkswagen. Cooper Chapman getting a little bit stuck up on that first manoeuvre, but really squared up. Smashes that second section and gets a real nice carve back to the wash. And uh, like you said, there was a little bit of downtime in between these sections uh, as, he, as he approached that lip line floater at the end that... We'll wait and see. I reckon the score's going to... I'm not a judge, but I reckon the score will be around Mike and McDonough's first one. Yeah. Um, just the only thing holding Cooper back on that one, I think, was the variety. There wasn't a massive variety in his manoeuvres. Yeah, definitely. Maybe it could go just above in the 6-5 range. We'll see. I mean, the judges have been loving the big committed turns. So Mikey had two big committed turns, and it's going to be a good contrast. You look at Cooper doing about six or seven turns on that wave. And that's where professional surfing is these days. We reward quality, not quantity. But, you know, any free surfer would be absolutely over the moon to get that wave Cooper just got at one absolutely. mile. If you came up to one mile and you got a wave and did six turns on it, you'd be loving life. And, well, there it is. So the judges are going to keep it in check like we thought. You know, it's... I could have seen it going around the same score as Mikey's, but, you know, it just shows that they really want to see committed turns. So... I feel once Cooper hears this score, he might be, you know, a little bit disheartened because he did a lot of great surfing on that wave. Um, but it might actually inspire him to understand that Mikey, if he saw Mikey's first wave, just two big turns, that's all it takes. And Cooper's got big turns in his arsenal. And I he, think that that little where he had that little indiscrepancy at the start, and he just had that little bump. Maybe if he just squared up that first section, hit it super critically, that score is going to obviously go quite a bit higher. So. You can see Cooper's taken the lead with that five. He's got a five and a three in his scoreline. But Mike McDonough, hot in his heels, only needing a two. Yeah, and what I did as well, he did that first carve and he got stuck in the foam and it put him a bit late for the next section. So when he got up there, it was a, it looked critical, but he kind of got to that lip late. So when he hit the lip, it didn't throw any spray and he kind of air dropped out of it. But it wasn't, it was obviously would have felt really nice, but didn't have that wow factor to it, like that big fan yeah. of spray to the roof. Because he was there so late, he kind of had to, you know, tag the lip and it pushed him back down. He air dropped. And then the rest of the turns on the wave were kind of out in the open face, a bit flatter. He wasn't able to really finish that carve. You see Mikey's carve and he finished it right around. He got the tail kind of lower than the nose of his board. Yeah, correct. So we've got a Destination New South Wales replay here of Cooper Chapman's last this uh, surfing is powered by Volkswagen and Mad Max, who are both our webcast partners. So that was a nice turn there. Yeah, you saw him drop out of the lip. Carved this one around. Then the wave, obviously, was a bit flat there. You see, he cut that one a little bit short at the top. He didn't really, really get to hold his rail all the way around. That's a cut back into the foam. And then it goes kind of sleepy here. Carves it short. So 
nothing really too crazy had been done in terms of rail work along this wave. That first airdrop turn was the best, and then look, a nice floater, which is obviously a functional down the line manoeuvre. Um, and yeah, lands him a five point right. And here's Mikey McDonough. We'll see a contrast in styles here. Wow. So that was a see the fan of spray out to the out to sea there. And well, that's the two turns from Mikey. And once again, two big hammers. Yeah. So he might even try and stick with this one. It looks like he's going to get the uh, replay around the white water and stick with this as it approaches the inside. Bit of downtime here, carves it back towards the white water. One big banger off the end here. Rides through that. So, Mike McDonough, I don't think the scoring potential on those last few sections was huge, but nevertheless, gets a finish, gets the two critical sections out the back. It's going to be a, a strong score, and it's going to be a, a bit more of a uh, harder score to ch chase down for Cooper Chapman. Yeah, and we see the contrast here. So, Cooper multiple maneuvers. This one, he squares off in that big layback hammer. Throws sp spray to the horizon, and... Well, another nice closeout section. Hit that one. You know, with all the commitment came in that first turn, you just see how much more time he is spending on the rail than most of his competitors. Just drives through those turns and puts everything into it. Even that turn gets right back into the power source. It was only a small carve, but I love the way he's holding his carves and finishing back in the foam. And he comes at him with a lot of speed. I think that's something he's really perfected on the point breaks. You know, we saw Cooper on his ones when he was carving out in the open face. He was kind of cutting it short and being caught up the top of the wave a little bit Chattery, more. Yeah, I know what and you're he didn't get right back to the foam, you know, on those calves. So that's kind of where the judges break these down. They break it down in small, minute pieces and come up with a score. And, well, every judge on the panel gave Cooper a five. So it was a well-rounded decision for, for them. We'll see where Mikey's falls in. It could be very similar to his first. I, th I think it will be. Maybe, yeah. if not... A little bit high. I really yep. loved the variation in that layback at the start. He just threw so much spray on that. Yeah, and that would have looked like a wow factor. Like that gives that real wow factor appeal. The the layback with the spray. You know, it's hard to throw a lot of spray in a layback sometimes. And the w the way he did it, and the timing he put into it. Oh, and they really did love it. Wow. So eight point two five. It's uh, you know, gives that point of difference as well. We haven't seen a layback with with that much spray thrown. We th we saw, you know. Kalani Ball will go to a few good laybacks before, but they are more so in the open face where that one was just right in the pocket and full commitment. So, wow. I feel like Mikey McDonough would be feeling pretty good about himself knowing he did pretty much two major manoeuvres again on the wave, got the finish in the shore, a bit of downtime in between. 8.25, near excellent. Cooper Chapman's chasing an excellent score in the uh, nine-point range to go to first. Yeah, that's right. And... Well, I think if Cooper saw that wave, he'd probably be scratching his head a bit. He saw two manoeuvres, and, well, Mikey has dropped in at 8.25. Cooper got a long right hand to kick his account off and landed a five-point ride. So it's well and truly evident that the judges are looking for big, critical manoeuvres. They want to see you throw the kitchen sink at it and leave nothing for chance. Cooper has had a nice long right, but I feel if his tactics, you know, in the back end of this heat need to shift at all, it would be to find something that has a big, steep face so he can kind of throw everything at it. Just go for broke, I think. Cooper, Cooper's sort of in that situation where he really needs to do something special to uh, get back into the lead. A 9.25 is a pretty massive score. Obviously, he could chip away and get another two, but clock's running out, six and a half minutes. Yeah, I mean, if he can get a score before the five-minute mark, you know, you look at that total of Mikey's, 14.25, you break that down into two sevens, very attainable score. Cooper Chapman can get two sevens in his sleep pretty much. So it just depends if the waves present themselves and, you know, if if he can manage to sell Mikey into a wave and pick another one up himself. We saw him having a little paddle there. Unfortunately, that wave just going to roll underneath Cooper. But yeah, we've got six minutes on the clock, so Mikey McDonough's looking in pretty good control here with a near excellent score an 8.25 and a 6 for two major manoeuvres on both so he'll be feeling great about himself going into the back end of this heat and he's uh, yeah, definitely one of the informed surfers and he'll be hoping that he can uh, crawl on through to the final here thrive on through to the final I should say he's not crawling at all, he's thriving yeah he is Mikey, he's uh, found his feet in this lineup. he's looking very comfortable and surfing very mature 
So you can see Cooper Chapman with priority. So he's just waiting for one of those bigger, wider waves to come through for that 9.25 total. Uh, sorry, 9.25 uh, score to advance. Yeah, so it will need to be one of the scores at the event. We saw Chris Zaffis go up in the nines in the last heat. That end section turn that Chris threw down was one of the biggest turns we've seen in the whole event. So, you know, if one of those waves present themselves, a wave of that size, I'm sure Cooper will be throwing the kitchen sink at it. He did say before he went out there, he goes, he didn't want to leave anything to chance. He did want to just go for broke out there. And even in his last heat interview, he said that. So... But now he just needs the opportunity here to present itself and will we see a wave? I guess that point break experience is also sort of coming through for both Chris and Mikey. Mikey being from the Lennox area, a couple of great points around there, as well as Chris growing up in Angari, one of the best point breaks in the world. So uh, you can see that sort of point break experience coming through for both Chris and Mikey being able to secure excellent and near excellent scores uh, on this point break at One Mile Beach. Yeah, and they definitely get some size to them, those, both those points. They're not like they max out at small waves. Like They definitely get real sizey and real punchy. Here's Mikey, found a little inside runner. What's he going to be able to do on this one? Wraps it around. Just a nice, smooth cutback. This one looks like it's growing down the line. Tags it wow. with a big fin drift. and oh, It's just so pretty to watch, isn't it? Yeah. Just so composed and mature in his approach and how smooth he was between the transitions on that one. Uh, so, yeah, he's he's in some great form with three and a half minutes to go. Here's the uh, Destination New South Wales replay. Take us through it, Chris. Yeah, so gets into this one. Nice little double up. He has to wrap it back to get to the power source. And well, the eyes off this section down the line and watch this board slide. Bang, and he drifts the fins. And love his way how he clicks it the last minute and lets the fins drift and doesn't rush it at all it's just so patient through the turn but it's so critical the whole way as well so very pretty to watch and i mean he spent years perfecting those type of turns and i'm sure it has a, has a lot of mick fanning s to it 100 percent. so three minutes remaining it's getting uh towards crunch time for cooper chapman here he's got priority needs a 9.25 it doesn't look like that last score of mike he's gone into his top two so cooper's going to need an excellent score to go into the lead and move through to the final to meet Chris Zaffis. That's right. So what it's done as well, it's given Cooper a chance. Had Mikey locked in, you know, anything over a 6.75, Cooper would have been in combination land, meaning he would have needed more than one score to go to the lead. And, well, as long as it's not in combination, he's still within a shot. Still alive. Yeah, and he has, he has the big air game, Coop. He has very strong rail game. He's got all the tricks up his sleeve. Uh, will he get an opportunity to kind of showcase any of that in the back end of this heat? I know he'll be praying for something to come through very soon because it's getting down to that time where we'll probably only have one shot at it now. Yeah, we're getting close to the Mad Max minute. So big thanks to Mad Max and uh, Volkswagen jumping on as our webcast partners for this Vizsla New South Wales Pro Surf Series. Events like this don't happen without all our amazing supporting partners. Chris, take us through some of them. Yeah, we got, yeah, we got the Port Stephens Council, Newcastle Airport, bringing us all into this amazing place. Destination New South Wales, getting us all the amazing imagery and videos of this beautiful coastline in New South Wales. The World Surf League, PRD in Port Stephens, Chaos Surf Shop, and of course, all the crew at Surfing New South Wales for getting the event set up. We had a move from Barubi all the way around to one mile. So there's a full new setup in effect. It's been pouring rain. And uh, been. everyone's been walking around dripping wet, soggy socks, wet shoes, and uh, big smiles on their faces because the surfing's been unbelievable. And uh, obviously you were touching on our webcast partners. It's uh, great to see them backing us and uh, getting all this live vision to the fans around the world. We're down to the Mad Max minute right now. There's the burrito clock ticking away and it is the Lennox head surfer showing great composure and uh, well great display of power surfing a total of 14.25 and 8.25 is highest Cooper Chapman not having the semi-final he would have imagined before he paddled out he thought he would have been thinking I'm just going to get on some big right hand point looking raves and rip into them and just hasn't eventuated that way we see Mikey 
Maybe call for a pay change, in change in priority there, but it looks like the P is still next to Cooper Chapman's name. 20 seconds, so we're getting close. It's Mikey McDonough picking one up on the inside, perhaps a bit of a victory lap here for Mikey if Cooper can't get another one. Oh, wow. That was a searing layback jam and tags this one through the lip. Wow, this is just an amazing looking wave for Mikey McDonough. He looks out the back and fist pumps. So that is uh, looking like great signs for Mikey McDonough. He has got the job done and into the final. So the Lennox head lad is rolling on through to the final with uh, some great precise power surfing, some big layback turns. He got the win over Cooper Chapman, who will be taking home a third place finish here. And, uh, well, that's going to wrap up semi-final action for the men. We're going to be right back because we got the women's final about to hit the water. So don't go anywhere. This is the Gage Roads Bruco Port Stephens Pro. Second stop of the Vista Pro Surf New South Wales series. And uh, this is a QS from WSL 1000 event. We'll be right back. Some say we've got engine oil in our veins. All that and a fair bit of dust. Sure, these wild utes are hard work, but it's no job. The roar of them. Pure. Take some rare skills to settle one. A band of brothers and sisters. Where man learns from machine, learns from man. Those that visit are transformed almost as much as the V6 Amarox. It's like this place rubs off on them. You gotta see it to believe it. The only Ute reared for the road. We are back. This is live action from One Mile Beach. This is the Gage Roads Bruco Port Stevens Pro. And uh, well, myself, Chris Enover, in the booth, joined by Brittany Nickel. Had a great run through this event, Britt, into the quarters. And uh, now we're into the final of the women's event. Here we are. It's down to business time. Back into the event here. And we've got two great servers in the lineup. Take us through those two competitors. We certainly do. We have Sarah Baum in the red from South Africa, but has been residing in Australia for quite a number of years now. She is a goofy footer, so we are at a right-hand point break. No doubt that Sarah will be up on her backhand. And, well, we can't go past Nixie Ryan in the blue. She is from Lennox Head. She did just come off a win at Boomerang for the car of Great Lakes Pro. And Nixie Ryan is in fine form for this Vistler New South Wales Pro Surf Series. But Sarah Bormy definitely can't rule her out. She's been around for a long time, knocking on that World Tour door. That's right. It must be very special for Nixie. I mean, it's just all clicked and it's all coming together and you find yourself in two finals in a row, you know, especially coming off, you know, the past few years she's had, you know, a quarter final result here and there, but nothing too, nothing too much that stands out, you know, like obviously a great result at Mad Max Pro last year, but... Two finals in a row. She's just showing that she is an absolute contender every time she hits the water. And she's been taken down scalp after scalp. Big names. Like, these aren't easy heat wins she's getting. She's not just scraping through. She's doing it convincingly. And, you know, to go up against Philip Anderson, served in the CT last year at Newcastle. Been one of the 
you know, forefront of the women's QS surfing for many years and not phased one bit, just throwing down eights and sevens and big numbers the whole way through this event and last event. And Well, she has the opportunity to go back-to-back -back wins here and that would be something very special. It would certainly be special for Nixie. She's uh, still so young, but just such maturity in her surfing. And I feel as though she's really dialed into this right-hand point break coming from Lennox Head. She's no stranger to the perfect right. I mean, it's a little bit bumpy out here, but there's still plenty of scoring opportunity. We are, of course, at One Mile Beach in the Port Stephens region. We spent the first two days of competition at Barubi Beach just around the corner. Had some punchy rights and left. It's Port Stephens Pro. We have moved into 30-minute final, so plenty of time on the clock. As we see a wave approaching, but just competitors a little out of position. Conditions have been tricky finding your place in the lineup, but here we go. Sarah Baum carves his first section. Yeah, nice wrapping carve there. Sarah on this one. She's just kicking off where she left off last heat. Nice whipping turn in the pocket. And look at that bottom turn. Just draws it right around. Holds the bottom turn really long and is able to let to it. It allows her to just explode into the lip, and that was a huge turn and just catches that front outside rail. You know, I think at the end of that wave, she was just a little bit late to get into the section, and she hit it so nicely. But if that had of uh, she had to land that turn, I think she would have really set herself up for the final with a great score on the board. It's going to be a good score nonetheless. You know, we see her really nice carving turns, lots of power in her surfing. These bottom turns she starts to do are really nice. Gets her nice and tight there. This one here, I love how long she held it for. And then, unfortunately, the wave went a bit flat on her. And she was setting up for this inside section. It came. She's tagged it, just overcooked it a little bit. You know, we saw her do that exact same turn in the semi-final and nailed it perfectly. So just let the tail get a little bit too much release. And then it just exposed that outside rail. And we saw her go down and it's... Uh, Bit of a heavy wipeout when you go down like that with the outside rail. Bit of a head slapper. It certainly is, and it's been a pretty heavy section on that inside bank as the wider ones come through. There it is, a 5.25 for the surfer in red, Sarah Baum. Off to a quick start here in the women's final. Coming up next, we have the men's final. Who do we have, Chris? Yeah, it's going to be an absolute cracker in the men's final. Well, two of the standouts the whole event, and two big power surfers, you would say, uh, the likes of Chris Zaffis will be in red. And Mikey McDonough will be in the blue. That's going to be a great matchup. They've both been in you know, absolutely stellar form. Chris Zaffis showing lots of great power surfing taken down. You know, I thought was probably the standout competitor in the draw in Kalani Ball. And uh, Mikey McDonough, since we've moved around from Barubi to One Mile, he has not put a foot wrong. And, and I dare say, since I've seen him on this point break, he's looked like the favourite for this event. He certainly has, and I'm sure the Lennox head crew will be cheering on back home for their Lee board riders members, Nixie Ryan, in this women's final, but Mikey Madonna also from Lennox in that men's final. So great show from the Lennox head surfers. Obviously something in the water's up there, Chris. It is, it is. There's been a lot of water up there at the moment, unfortunately. It's been some pretty heavy times, but hopefully the two Lennox head surfers can uh, put some smiles on people's faces up there. They're doing some great surfing down at this event and uh, putting some amazing performances forward. So Nixie Ryan out there in the blue now holding priority. We've got 25-minute final. Oh, it's a 30-minute final, maybe. 30-minute final for both the men and the women. So we've seen nine minutes elapse so far. We're giving them as much time in the lineup as we can, which is a bonus for us and all the fans out there around the world tuning in. So Sarah Baum, 5-2-5 for her first wave. You'd have to think a little bit left on the bone there. Just missed out in that end section, which could have taken that score you know, up around that seven range, I think, because it was a really nice turn. I agree with you on that one, Chris. I feel as though if Sarah stuck that last turn, it would have went up probably even into the excellent range. So uh, she'll be heading on back out there. I feel as though 5.25, probably wanting to be a backup score for Definitely. this final. But in saying that, the semi-finals that have just gone past, Nixie Ryan locked in in high eight, and I think Sarah Baum did as well. So both women have been on fire throughout this entire event and the semi-finals that we watched not long ago. It's still going to be an exciting matchup between these two women. 
Yeah, it has been very exciting to watch. I do feel, though, is that both the semis in the women's side of things and obviously one of the men's as well, they all struggled to find the backup. You know, they had one great score. We saw Mikey with that 1-8, you know, then held a 5. You know, there's only been really one semi that's really put it together nicely, and that was Chris Saffis and Kalani Balls one. They just went hammer and tong, that whole heat, locked in big numbers, both of them. And, you know, you got to feel for Kalani Ball. I think he went down with uh, two sevens, two high sevens, or even an eight. So going losing with 15 points must feel pretty uh, pretty tough pill to swallow for Kalani Ball. But, you know, he'd be stoked with the performance he put on, and we run into a red-hot Chris Saffis, and, and that's what can happen. So... Chris Saffis coming up in the final against the smooth, silky style, the powerful style of Mikey McDonough. And uh, run us through the surface in the lineup now. We know you've spent a lot of time doing the QS. You know, you've uh, seen Sarah Bourne around for a very long time. She's had a lot of success in the last couple of years. What do you think that's, you know, what do you reckon the cause of that is? I feel like Sarah, she's, she has been around for a long time, Chris, and and there was a few years there where she was extremely close to qualifying for that world tour. And not long after that, I feel as though, you know, Sarah, she lost the main sponsor and, and probably le lost a little bit of groove. And, and I feel as though over the last couple of years, she's really started to find herself as a person and as a surfer. And here she is up and riding. The woman we've been talking about, Sarah Baum, in the red on her backhand. She's already locked in a 5.25 and not the wave that she's after. So she just jumps on out of there. But... Yeah, Sarah Baum, she's an amazing competitor. She's got a good head on her shoulders. She's a really nice woman. And I feel like she's got a lot of experience uh, with the strategic side, not just the surfing ability as well. So Sarah Baum, it'd be great to see her get a nice result here. But uh, you definitely can't take it away from Nixie Ryan. No, she's definitely not. I mean, yeah, you, look, you touch on that. Back in 2011, so 11 years ago, Sarah Bourne finished 11th in the world in the QS ratings. And, you know, with, when you take out the double qualifiers and that type of thing, she would have been only spots away. Uh, some of those years you have multiple double qualifiers back in, you know, in those days. So that's agonising close for her. Then she went 17th in the world and 18th in the world in 2012 and 13. So she was right thereabouts three years in a row. And then you see it go to 30th, 128th, and she kind of stepped away from competing and had those, you know, those few down years. And, but now she's come back into things and last year finishing 15th but you look at the results in the past four years she's had she's had four she's had two wins in uh, 2018 2019 and then in 2020 and 2021 she's won two events in both years she's certainly no stranger to winning so she knows exactly what it takes however we also have another woman in the water that knows what the winning feelings like and that's Nixie Ryan coming off that win last week at the Carve Great Lakes Pro moving into this event with a bit of confidence looking for an eight 17 and a half minutes on the clock so Sarah Baum in the red just in the lead with a 3.75 and a 5.25 Nixie Ryan having a look the woman from Lennox head has got a nice face in front of her just completely disappears with that bottom turn whips it around into the pocket what's she got on this next section it's a great fluid style here from Nixie Ryan on her forehand yeah she's really dissecting this wave nicely just perfect placement of her turns and that was a huge turn there fan of spray out of your screens and well tags this one clean and well holds onto that one and that is some very mature surfing from well a young and explosive competitor here we go answering right back sarah Baum up on her backhand just quick up and out but nixie ryan you just said it there chris wow i'm interested to see where these scores will go for the women's final because I'm sure the judges know what both of these women are capable of. We have the destination New South Wales replay. Yeah. Powered by Volkswagen. Talk us through this one, Chris. Yeah, I love that deep bottom turn there. We see a nice placement of that turn. She's just using the whole wave face. Really deep bottom turn. Carving right back into the pocket. Holding the rail nicely. And then this section stands up. And she just throws the hammer down. And lots of spray on that one. That was the X-Factor turn. And finishes that wave. Probably could have gone a little harder in the end section, but she knew the damage was done on the turn before. She holds on to that last turn, and, well, that pink nose that we've been accustomed to seeing and loving has been uh, just throwing itself around like absolute dynamite the last couple of events. And uh, maybe the Peyton and Nixie Ryan spray, we'll keep seeing that one because 
Every time that pink nose seems to come to the water, it's just pro providing magic. Adding that extra bit of flair and brightness to our screens. Well, Nixie Ryan locked in a 7.5, and what a way to start the women's final here at One Mile Beach as she does the runaround. Well, she did a couple of runarounds in that last event. She do a half marathon soon. She's that fit. <laughs> like, <laughs> lucky she's been doing all that training back at home. I know she has. And I mean, you run the point a bit at Lennox, don't you? You jog the path back up at the back. Lots of paddling up there. You have to be fit to live up Lennox and surf those point breaks and, you know, do marathon sessions there. But yeah, she's been no stranger to the run around and it's worked in great success for her these past couple of events. And uh, just when we thought, I had this fe had this feeling that. Everything was starting to flow Sarah Baum's way. You know, she was getting on a rhythm. She hadn't really iced a big score yet, but just when you feel like the momentum's shifting towards Sarah, Nixie just comes in, does, she does every heat, and just goes, nah, I'm putting a stop to it, <laughs> and just drops an absolute hammer. Stamps the authority. I feel like that turn that Nixie did, the, that second last turn, that's really her bread and butter. Like, she's got a really nice open face carve. But then as soon as those sections present themselves, she drives hard off the bottom and just really whips around that top turn. Like, it, she's been doing it the whole event. Yeah, it's been great to see. Taking a leaf out of Mikey McDonough's book, I'm sure, because, well, the rail surfing there have been producing those two has, you know, been definitely a standout in both the men's and women's draw. Getting on these long, reeling right-handers, you just see the difference that they can hold that rail for that little bit extra time and the judge is really rewarding it because I mean it's not easy to hold your rail and especially on a quite powerful wave that's running down away from you to hold the rail all the way back around into the power source and you know get that tail and above below the nose of the board we like to say and shows a full completion of the turn that's what Nixie and Mikey have been doing really well and uh, Sarah Baum she's uh, she'll hear that score and she knows that it's her, her, her turn to lock in something substantial. She's not going to win this final with fives. She knows that. So she's going to be thinking back to the semi and looking to you know, nail a few big backside hammers herself. There on screen we have, we're of course at One Mile Beach. That is the headland there. Right hand point break. Sarah Baum up and riding on her backhand. Strong first turn. Straight into a second. This is the answer back she needed. Oh, I've just cursed up. And just unfortunately blowing a tail. Sarah Baum in the red. That was, I feel like she was on her way to a really healthy score there, Chris. That was that was well and truly on its way to an excellent score. We saw Sarah with big first turn, nice second turn. And then the third one, she just squared up. And it's like she kind of hesitated for a moment. It's like she thought she didn't need to go so hard at it. And, you know, every turn she's been throwing down has been absolute dynamite. And she just kind of backed off that one and, Saw the board just come out the back. There it is, a 4.65. So ever so slightly increasing that lead over Nixie Ryan. Nixie Ryan in the blue now chasing a 2.4. Really not much. With 12 and a half minutes on the clock. So this replay there, we saw the big first turn. She comes around the section, carves it nicely, sets herself up for this one, and just tags it. She just went a little bit too high. I think she thought she was going to get more push off the lip to push her back down the wave and she went right up there nice and vert was expecting that kind of that push and that reaction from the lip but it was a bit whitewashy and the board just went straight through it and she's just come off the back of that wave and she'll be really kind of you know biting her teeth with that one because she knows that was a missed opportunity leaves priority with Nixie Ryan and well this could be the moment for Nixie Ryan to strike if there was ever one 11 minutes 45 on the clock you have the highest scoring wave of the final and you're in priority. Now it's the time to kind of show what you've been doing all series and just uh, put this final in a really tricky position for Sarah Baum. Nixie Ryan, she's, uh, yeah, she's definitely in position to strike here for the women's final. We are at One Mile Beach, just down the road from Newcastle. If you're looking for a nice little spot on the map, you can uh, yeah, check out Port Stephens Council and Destination New South Wales. You can actually fly into Newcastle Airport, so not too far down the road. And a uh, beautiful part of the world, beautiful part of New South Wales. We're extremely blessed to be here. We've had some pretty good conditions over the last few days. And, uh, yeah, great event here, the Gage Roads Bruco Port Stephens Pro. We do uh, have another supporting sponsor 
Surfing New South Wales, who are heavily involved in this event and running a lot of the event. They're actually running a Herwave Challenger Series next month in Newcastle on the 28th of March. And it's actually like a first ever. It's all women's tag team event. So you can, uh, it's got teams of eight women, four longboard, four shortboard. And it can be any age, ability, mums, sisters, aunties, grandmas, kids. It'll be all broadcast live on KO as well. So we've got the live broadcast happening again for that event. And if you're liking to uh, add a team, you can head to surfingnewsouthwales.com.au. That sounds su such a rad concept. You know, it's kind of like the ABB of the board riders, but for the women. And obviously, I heard uh, Carly Shanahan talking about it. You know, you can build these teams. And it doesn't have to be with the board riders club. You can come down even if you haven't surfed before and you want to get amongst something like that. It's, it's really cool just to promote women surfing and just to get more women into the water and just thrive off that fun environment of being in a team's environment. And, uh, yeah, if you're, if you're keen to come and be a part of it, whether you're a long border, short border, mid-length border, uh, you can definitely do so. And, well, there is Sarah Baum. She's not in a team's event right now. She's surfing for herself and the win in the final the Bruco, Gage Rhodes, Bruco, Port Stevens Pro. We got it there. And uh, 9 minutes 30 on the clock. She is holding the lead. So that is one positive, except Nixie Ryan looking for just a 2.4. She's holding on to that strong score of a 7.5. And well, you know, we've given these women a bit of extra time. Both finals will be 30 minutes. So we've had just over 20 minutes elapse. And... Uh, I really thought we we're going to see a few more bigger numbers on the screen by now, but it's just been a bit slow out there. And Nick's, the one kind of big opportunity that has presented itself, Nixie Ryan took advantage. Sarah Bourne was well on her way to a uh, an excellent score in that last one, but came unstuck. So you you, know, you look at that score, that four six five, it could have well and truly been a seven six five, and then you leave Sarah Bourne chasing you know a five as well. So that's when it gets interesting in the back of the heat. But right now. Nixie Ryan in the driver's seat. Just looking for a 2.4 to take the lead. But I dare say she'll be looking for another 7 and just going, shut the gate. I was about to say shut the door, but shut the gate. We'll go with it. Yeah. Well, Nixie Ryan, yeah, she's no stranger to competitive surfing. She's coming off a win, looking for a 2.4. I feel like if she has the opportunity, she's certainly going to get that and Sarah Vaughan's going to be looking for a score. We, uh, we were watching that semi-final earlier between Chris Zaffis and Kalani Ball, and their heat was actually pretty similar. Towards the midway, middle part of the heat, it went really lully, took a while. They were both sitting there patiently, and then all of a sudden, in like the last 10 minutes, they just locked in nines and sevens, and it was just it was flying everywhere. Rapid fire. Absolute rapid fire, back-to-back -back surfing. So we definitely can't rule both of these women out with just under eight minutes on the clock. Yeah, we'll, wonder, we'll wait and see here what Bormi does because, you know, she's very experienced. You know, I probably would rather see her sitting a little bit wider, to be honest, away from Nixie. She's sitting up the inside of Nixie, but that gives Nixie the opportunity to take off on any good wave that comes. And I reckon Bormi would want to lock in two more good numbers in this heat if she wanted to be really safe. So give yourself a chance if you move over just to the left of Nixie, sit a bit wider, you know, maybe pick up like one of those double ups we saw Mikey doing the last seat, he got one of those double up sections in a bit closer and threw down a couple of really big turns. A couple of two big backside bangers for Sarah could easily find herself in the seven point range. Oh, 100%, Chris. She's been doing it all event. It's just one of those tricky lineups. And as we mentioned earlier, like we, the last few days, we've been at Barubi Beach, which is a completely different setup that we've got here at One Mile. So the last couple of days, it's been a long stretch of beach and sand dunes and there was punchy rights and lefts, whereas now we're at one while. Most competitors haven't really been even free surfing here, Chris. Wow, did you just see what happened there? Sarah Baum sold an absolute lemon to Nixie Ryan, so... There's the maturity. There it is, there's the experience. Paddled into that one, you could see it had a nice bowl to it to start, and I was wondering if Sarah was going to do that, and well, that's why she stayed up the inside of Nixie, to keep her honest, and well, Nixie a little too honest there, because she was sold into that wave, and... Well, Sarah Baum now is six minutes on the clock. Every chance in the world to extend her lead and put more pressure on Nixie. And it's going to be interesting to see how she manages the back end of this heat because you've got Nixie needing a 
Six, six minutes, is that too long to try and play defense? Way too long, I feel. I feel like six minutes is, yeah. Especially in a lineup like this where there are waves coming through, there's different peaks, there's the opportunity to sit a little bit wider if Nixie wanted to. I feel as though Sarah really needs to look for a higher score because as soon as Nixie takes off and does one turn, she's going to get that 2.4. Yeah, we know what Nixie's like in the back end of a heat. She's just the ice queen at the moment. Like, literally just... She's uh, been almost flawless in her approach to the back end of heats, especially through Boomerang. And in this event too, we saw her in the semi-final. You know, come on, stuck in that last wave against Philippa on the last manoeuvre. That was the first kind of chink in the arm we saw, but the manoeuvres out the back were strong enough to get her over the line. She did it to Sierra Kerr at Boomerang. She's been no stranger to getting it done in the last dying seconds. But Sarah Baum, the more experienced surfer, campaigner. Sold Nixie into a lemon with just under five minutes on the clock. I feel as though Sarah Bourne will be looking for another wave because if a three-wave set or a two-wave set comes through, she can hold off Nixie for so long. But if there's more than one wave in a set, Nixie's going to go anyway. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Nixie Ryan could, you know, play the smart game right here. She could quickly take a wave, lock in the 2.4, get the lead. And then put the pressure on Bormy, but, you know, it's in the back end of this heat, you know, you really want to be sticking to big numbers. And I think that's what Bormy's going to do here. If she can, if she knows she can lock in anything over a six, that's going to leave Nixie chasing, you know, that mid-range four. And with four minutes to go chasing a mid-range four, anything can happen. you just got to give yourself the opportunity to be in the lead. And uh, we've seen stranger things happen in the back end of heats when ocean, the ocean is uh, kind of playing the... Uh, dictator. The ocean is certainly in control. Nixie Ryan and Sarah Bourne on screen there. Well, Sarah Bourne sticking nice and close to Nixie. Just a little reminder that she's there and got first priority. Here we go. Nixie Ryan having a look, but Sarah Bourne taking off. She's utilized priority on this one. Will she replace that 4.65? Oh, great start to that one. And a second hook in the pocket. So this is a good start to this wave. Sarah looking very loose on this one. She's going to tag this section again. Bang! That was very powerful. That's going to throw some X factor to the judges. And she's going to tag that one back. So l loose and explosive and really just fun that wave was. It was good to watch. I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed that too, Chris. It'll be interesting to see where that score sits. Sarah currently with a 4.65 in her scoreline looking to drop that and Increase that requirement for the surfer in blue, Nixie Ryan. I feel it was her best wave. I think that wave was her best wave. The way she rode it from start to finish, even this turn, you know, point nine. What does that leave Nixie Ryan chasing? We'll have to wait and see. Nixie Ryan will be sitting out the back now with first priority. She got a wave by the looks of it. A wow. 4.4. So Nixie Ryan in that wave replay with two minutes on the clock has gone into the lead. Wow, so we didn't see that one. We'll see if we can get a replay of it at all. I'm not sure where Nixie is. So there's Nixie. So she's done it again. As soon <laughs> as someone puts down the Gortland Tour and throws down a challenge, while Sarah Bourne was surfing on that wave, Nixie Ryan has gone one behind her. And wow, look at the scores. So Bormy locked in a 5-9. And now she's looking for a Nixie Ryan would have got that score only just. Just. Like, look at the total. 11.9 oh, yeah. to 11.15. Yeah, so she wouldn't need a kind of a high high three. She's locked in a, uh, a mid to high three, and she's now locked into a 4.4. .4. So we'll wait and see if we get the replay of that one. But just very mature surfing. You see Sarah Baum get a great wave, you know, linked together a lot of turns, and the maturity just to get a wave straight away and and ice that section, and she's put herself in position to go back-to-back. -back. Take out another win on the Bissell New South Wales Pro Surf Series. Nixie Ryan off to a great start. Take another win. We see a few friendly dolphins show up. Coming within the Mad Max minute, so there's lots happening in the lineup. And Nixie holding priority as well, so she's got the score she needed, and she's also held priority. You couldn't have asked for a better finish, but Come away with two wins in the stacked fields that we've had. And, you know, with CT stars, XCT stars, 
you know, QS warriors, people that have been doing this for so long. And Nixie's just come around and gone, you know what? I'm taking all the trophies home with me this time. I'm going on a road trip and taking all the money, all the points. All the trophies. And all the trophies. And now she's... Uh, I'm not sure if Mad Max are offering up burritos for a year, but she's got burritos for two years if that's the case. Because uh, there is your final results. Nixie Ryan, the Lennox head local. The queen of Lennox. They're going to start the corner. They're going to put a statue of her on the, on the headland soon because she's uh, taken down Sarah Borm in the final and she's gone back-to-back -back victories on the Vista New South Wales Pro Surf Series. Two from two in the New Vista New South Wales Pro Surf Series. She's going to be rolling down to Maroubra full of confidence, full of cash, full of burritos. And uh, great way to round out that. We're going to go to a quick ad break, and we're going to be back with all the men's final action. Getting so excited in the booth here. It's all happening. So we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. This is the uh, Gage Roads Bruco Port Stevens Pro. Some say we've got engine oil in our veins. All that and a fair bit of dust. Sure, these wild utes are hard work, but it's no job. The roar of them. Pure. Take some rare skills to settle one. A band of brothers and sisters. Where man learns from machine, learns from man. Those that visit are transformed almost as much as the V6 Amarox. It's like this place rubs off on them. You gotta see it to believe it. The only Ute reared for the road. This is the Gage Roads Bruco Port Stevens Pro, and we are into the final heat of the event. First, second stop of the Vista New South Wales Pro Surf Series, and uh, well, into the men's final. We just crowned a champion in the women's draw. It was Nixie Ryan, and now into the final for the men's. Myself, Chris Enver, in the booth, joined for the call with uh, none other than amazing competitor and commentator in Cooper Chapman. We just went down to the semi-finals there, mate, but we have a great final underway. Yeah, can't wait to call this one. Would rather be out there, but uh, second best place is in the booth here with you. And yeah, two of my very good friends got absolutely waxed by Mikey in that last heat. So we'll see how the boys go out there right now. Both very fired up. Chris Affers, huge performance in that semi final, and he needed it to take down Kalani Ball. Both competitors, big scores as Chris gets the first wave of consequence in this final. 30 minute final coming up right here. Mikey McDonough out there in the blue, Chris Affers in the red. So. Let's hope for some fireworks, eh? Hey? This was the Destination New South Wales replay. First wave of Zaphis. A little bit sleepy at the start here. Gets a nice first wrap. Brings it all the way around. Straight off the bottom hard. Tight in the pocket for the second one. Flattens out a little bit here. He sticks with it. He's been sticking with him all the way to the inside and finding some serious money sections. So it builds a bit more speed. A little bit of a check fade there. A little fin ditch. Scores come in as a 4.75 there. Judges are looking... For some big, big manoeuvres here in the final and expecting big things from both of the men. So just a 4.75 to kick it off. Long way down the line. He's got a big paddle back out, I'll tell you. That is a long run and paddle back out I did by myself. And, yeah, I was running on an oily rag by the end of that heat. I'll tell you what, it's been a big couple of days. Yeah, it has. And, well, that wave was very, very similar to the way we saw in your semi-final, actually. <laughs> you know, you surfed the wave, there about six or seven or eight turns on your wave. And, you know, Mikey McDonough just... Waiting patiently out the back and just dropping two huge hammers on both of his waves and one of them going excellent. So 
Judges making it very clear in the men's side of things that they're not looking for multiple maneuvers down the line. They're really looking for those committed big turns. You know, the turns that really give that wow factor and uh, in the big critical sections on the wave. We saw Chris Zaffis, he, he found that in the semifinal. He had that huge end section turn, probably one of the moves, single moves of the event, you know, in terms of turns. We've seen some crazy airs go down, but biggest single turn of the event probably, Chris Zaffis on that last end section there. And, well, in terms of combinations of turns and power and style and fluidity, you'd have to say Michael McDonough has been in, in a league of his own at the moment. The way he's surfing these big right-handers just looks so at home. Yeah, very much so. I was chatting to you early this morning and said to you, get Mikey on a few of these open face rights and he's going to be very hard to beat. And that he was for me. <laughs> he absolutely waxed me, but um, he's probably my pick for the final. I do love Zaffers and he's got some huge manoeuvres in his repertoire. But Mikey Madonna, like you said, that flow that he carries is very Mick Fanning, Ethan Ewing-esque, all riding those amazing DHDs, Darren Hanley up on the Gold Coast, some of the best boards in the world, and yeah, Mikey Madonna looking super comfortable. Sitting out the back right now with priority, just a .5 in his scoreline, we have bumped this timer up to 30 minutes for these finals, so a little bit of extra time, getting these boys, or these men, a little bit more prepared for that Challenger Series, all the men who... Getting the top nine of this Australia Oceania Regional Qualifying Series will be taking off their first event at Snapper Rocks, and I think Mikey Madonna would love a spot there because he feels right at home from the beautiful Lennox Head. Lennox Head want to go one and two, oh, one in the men and one in the women's right now with Nixie Ryan, the winner of that last final. So she's gone back to back event wins, and Mikey Madonna would love to get a trophy to take back up there to Lennox Head as well. Yeah, and well, both these. Uh Men have tasted victory. Uh, it was a long time ago for Chris Zaffis. 2016, actually, he got a win in the 1000 Men Towies Pro. So that was quite some time ago. Uh, Mikey McDonough, he tasted victory over there in the Cape Naturalist Pro in WA. Got the win there over, uh, pretty sure it was Cooper Davies. And, uh, well, since that moment, he's had some good wins in some regional events. and I mean, some smaller specialty events. The Australian Open of Surf Series, he got a win in one of those. But he hasn't had that breakthrough result on the QS since that 2019 result. He's been, you know, a little bit under the radar. He's had lots of really close results. And we spoke about it before, you know, coming up short so often, you know, either getting pipped on the post in the last dying exchange or, you know, just not getting the score by the smallest of margins. He's been thereabouts all the time, very competitive. But, you know, this might be that breakthrough result that kind of really puts him back on the map and, he said he's been doing a lot of work in the off-season. I loved his comment, Coops. He said, if you have those ones that go, you don't go your way, it just means you haven't been working hard enough. And I love that mentality and approach from someone who, you know, in the past has always worn his heart in his sleeve, um, Mikey. And this year, he's looking so much more calm and composed, and I love that about him. Yeah, I think Mikey, I put him up there in the top two to three surfers based purely on talent out of anyone on this regional qualifying series. I think he's a really big hope, especially if he could find himself on that world tour. I think his surfing really suits it. Like I said before, I see a lot of Ethan Ewing and Mick Fanning in his surfing. Really smooth carve, and that's really what they love seeing on the world tour. Like you said, a lot of work has been put in behind the scenes for Mikey Madonna. I think he's due. I think that raw talent is coming, shining through in waves like this. It's great that we do have amazing waves here at One Mile Beach. Port Stevens. Yeah, it's been a great event. You know, we had some great, epic waves around at Barubi. And then that's what this part of the coast offers. You know, you get that crazy suddenly onshore. And, you know, a lot of places around the world would be absolutely blown out and, and average. But you come around the corner here, just to one beach over pretty much, and you find yourself at this really nice, fun, right point break in one mile. So Port Stevens offering, offering up the goods for some of the world's best surfers. And well, 10 minutes has elapsed and, you know, I feel like the only thing that could probably really hold Mikey McDonough back would be the ocean. You know, if he can't find the waves, you know, and Chris Zaffis does get busy, which we see him doing here, he's going to lock in another good score here, probably Chris, and hook under the pocket, tags that one through the lip and goes to the air. So looking so comfortable on his board and comes off to the foam climb, the dreaded, dreaded foam climb. The world's hardest and world's lowest scoring manoeuvre. It catches us all out once every now and then, and yeah, getting Chris right there. But nice little blow tail. I think it kind of is giving us a good indication of what he's thinking out there right now because, as he said, 
Mikey Madonna carrying some really good form. If he can find some open face ways, it's going to be tough to beat. But top score of the men's event was from Chris Saffers. In that semi-final, he really had to step up to take down Kalani Ball. But yeah, interesting to see Chris Saffers working full-time as a Sparky in the off-season. Mikey Madonna really focusing full-time on his surfing. So you get that kind of polar opposites right now. As you get people a little bit older, having to shuffle their focus between things. As we see, Mikey Madonna holding a lot of speed down the line on this one. Let's see what he can come up with. A little bit wobbly off the bottom on that one. Didn't quite get that turn right where he wanted it. He knows he needs something big here. Goes for the big layback, and that's not what he's looking for to kick off the final. Plenty of yeah. time left. Been a while between finals for Mikey, so like you said, sometimes we get some nerves. Early, early nerves. He did just drop an 8.25 and a 6 about 30 minutes ago, so... We know he can do it. He just needs to find the waves right now. But Chris Saffers is going to be putting up a huge fight with that last wave. Still waiting for the scores, that little blowtail reverse. Don't think it's going to go up too high, but it's going to have him out in front to kick off this final. Yeah, you are right, Coop. Maybe that score for Chris could fall in around the similar number to his first score, that 4.75. I could see it falling around the 4.5. Judges won't go too crazy with it, but that carve under the lip into that blowtail was a good combo. So they will reward that. Then, unfortunately, coming on Stark. And well, I feel like there was a bit of meat left on the bone after that foam climb because we saw that wave starting to kind of back off and double up. So he would have probably got another inside section. So a bit of a mistake there from Chris. But Mikey, you can see what he's trying to do. I, you know, I said it before. I think the one thing that might hold him back will be the ocean. And you saw him take that big ride, um, that big set. You see his intentions is trying to do those two big turns and those big set waves. And... Well, that way was almost too big. It kind of just went out to sea too far and off the bank and didn't really allow any of those steep sections. So maybe we've got to reset and try and find those ones in the semi-final. He only needs two sections and he's going to be looking at seven and above. Yeah, he's such a talented guy. And let's see if he can keep his mind straight. It has been a long day down here. Some serious stamina having to come into play right now. It's a bit of an endurance game out there. A couple run arounds, some really long paddle back outs. It's been a big couple of days. It's been a big week. We've gone from the stop number one of the Vistler New South Wales Pro Surf Series up at Boomerang Beach last week, straight down here to the Port Stephens at Gage Roads Pro. Oh, Gage Roads, Port Stephens Pro. I still haven't got that right <laughs> this week. <laughs> it's been yeah. a long week, but it's been incredible. Surfing New South Wales and the whole crew have been doing such an amazing job. We've been battling the elements. We've been moving between locations, and they've been running it like a smooth sailing ship without any chop on the horizon. But looking out there right now, it's cleaned up quite a bit, to be honest. I was just out there, and this morning it was rain was coming dead sideways. It looks like, as I say that, look out the back. It looks like the, the storm's kind of coming through it. And it was funny. I was talking to Tessa McKenna yesterday about sometimes when you know there's a big storm coming on the horizon, you're in a 30-minute heat. If you can get going real quickly like Chris Saffers, we could get copped, hit by a big storm here, and the conditions could deteriorate very quickly. So looks like right now we have copped a bit of a storm. The chop is really strong out the back there. So we'll wait and see what the boys can come up with in this last 16 minutes of this final. Like I said, it's been a really long week, and we could not be doing this without our incredible sponsors. This is the Vistler New South Wales Pro Surf Series. Stop number two. Stop number three on the Australia Oceana regional qualifying series this is a men's and women's wcl qs 1000 we did just see nixie ryan take out the women's event over sarah Baum. this is a gauge roads port stevens pro big thanks to our supporting sponsors supporting partners here at this event we could not do it without you the port stevens council newcastle airport destination new south wales world surf league prd port stevens amazing real estate agency here in port stevens also, Chaos Surf Shop, go support your local surf shop. If you're in Port Stephens, go grab a cake of wax, buy a new wetsuit. And also, Surfing New South Wales, as I touched on, they've been working tirelessly the last week. We still do have a few more events coming up in this Vistler New South Wales Pro Surf Series. And as always, we have to thank the partners for the webcast, Mad Mex and Volkswagen. So thanks for getting us behind the mic, getting this live surfing all around the world. I'm sure every single person watching has been so, so impressed with the webcast. Big thanks to Fresh Air Broadcast as well. Oh, yeah, geez, that, was a, talk. that was uh, <laughs> a lot of words in a short amount of time, but very warranted because thank you for all the support from everyone out there to bring live surfing to your screens. And well, we get to see the world's best surfers in the Australia Oceania region doing battle here. And Nixie Ryan, 
going back to back jacks in the first two events of the Vista Pro Surf Series. Well out in front right now on the uh, Australia Oceana ratings for the women's. Joel Vaughan was holding on to the lead in the uh, men's side of things in the Australia Oceana QS ratings. I dare say he'll be still well out in front with a quarterfinal finish here. And uh, it was quarterfinals around a 16 quarterfinals. I think he went down in and. Uh, you yeah, know, Zaffis got him. Yeah, Chris Zaffis got him right in the end, actually, and that was a really interesting heat. But he'll be holding the lead, I dare say, going into Maroubra. And then it's just great stepping stones as we move from Maroubra into the 3,000 out of Boca. Then we'll be going to the 5,000 up at Tweed, then the 5,000 at Newcastle. What about Avoca? Oh, you said that. Yeah, Avoca, the 3,000. And then uh, that'll round out kind of the QS ratings, the QN series the Australia Oceania region and our Challenger Series surfers will be set. Yeah, this is a stepping stone up to that World Tour. First stage is this regional qualifying series. We saw so many amazing young Australian talents jump from this stepping stone up to that next Challenger Series stepping stone and onto the World Tour this year. One name that comes to mind, Jackson Baker. He took this event out last year. He's not here to defend his title because he's in Portugal about to surf against the world's best. So that's what this little tour here in Australia can do. It can really springboard you onto that world stage. And I'm sure both surfers in this final, Chris Zaffers and Mikey Madonna, both very capable and both would love a spot on that world tour. Yeah, that's right. And I think if you ask Jackson Baker kind of what got him fired up and what kind of kick-started his campaign and role on the Challenger Series and into the CT, he would 100% talk about this victory here. Just getting that taste of victory can send so much confidence through your surfing um, and, you know, really rocket you into that uh, Challenger Series with a lot of momentum. And like you said before, Coop, look at the conditions now. There's a lot of wind chop, but this is Mikey McDonough playing things very smart here. Two-turn combination. Just the two turns there. We didn't see what Chris Zaffis did on the wave. He was paddling, having a look at it. Maybe he was further up the point. Looks like he's maintained first priority. So, dare I say, it was an in and out for Chris. Mikey picking it up off the end. Just the two turns. Didn't really get to connect maybe as much as he would like to with those. Like you said, though, those conditions look like they have turned on their head very quickly right now. We'll pick up this replay from Destination New South Wales. So smooth over that section. I'm sure James Woods will be up on Lennox cheering on Mikey right now. Proud of his young fellow doing so well in the finals. As we see, we'll wait for scores to come in there for Mikey Madonna. And best way with the final, five points. Like yeah. you said, two turns, all it takes. Two turns. That's been doing, it's been his bread and butter all event. And, you know, the semi-final action, uh, that's exactly what he did there. Just those two big turns. They loved the first critical turn of Mikey. And the second one, up and over the foam, you know, it's it just goes to show. We saw Chris with multiple turns on that first wave. You know, being Chris, you probably feel like you probably could deserve more for that first wave, getting the 4.8, even though it was lots of turns in the wave. You know, smaller wave, running through. But the judges, they've been very consistent in doing that. They've been paying the bigger waves and the bigger sections and the more commitment into the lip. And it's just something that has been on show here at uh, One Mile and what they've been wanting to see. So they haven't shied away from it. They stay very, very consistent. But it's Chris Zavis up and riding here, racing down the line. We'll see what he gets... Nice big first turn right in the face of Mikey McDonough. Holds the rail through. So this is a nice start for Chris Zaffis. Will this wave double up and give him that extra opportunity on the inside? Will it give it the grow section? It looks like it might. He's racing on the line. He's going to hook this one. Maintains his speed and, well, finishes that one nicely. So he had a bit of downtime in the middle. Legs are burning. It's been a long day, I'm telling you. I just surfed my heat and I was running on a very close to empty. But Zaf, I think, probably going to get the best wave of the heat there. First turn was really strong. Backed it up with a few more through the middle. But like we said, those critical combinations like Mikey Madonna did on his last one, conditions have really deteriorated here. It's going to be the battle of who can adapt the best and really come home strong. So big first turn there, nice and vertical through the lip. Comes around this section. Draws it around, just a bit of a cut back there. And then from here, the wave does go a little bit soupy. He finished strong with the little one-two, a little left-right jab to finish. We'll wait and see what the judges think of this one. Is it going to be another high four? I don't know, maybe. A little snap, a bit of spray. One. Then yeah. this. Did well to hold on here, the little, oop, almost into layback. Did well, held on. I Mikey's could... was a bigger wave. I think it's going to be, like you said, pretty close around that four-point range. Maybe low five. Maybe low five, yeah, I mean... 
that's what Chris will be hoping to hear something above the five because otherwise that wave is almost a kind long. of a pointless pointless ride there because you know he's there, there it is five seven five so the judges loving the first turn it has been what they've been looking for the big critical first maneuver getting it vertical in the lip and uh, he put that on display there he locked in a five point seven and well Mikey McDonough he's up on a cleaner looking right. This one looks like it could wheel down the line and offer some great opportunity. Big sweeping cutback. That very smooth style. And again, he's looking for a score here to take the lead. And, well, there's a nice layback jam. Will he get more down the line? And you betcha he will. That was an icing on the cake. And, well, gives a little finger click shaka. He loves it. He yeah, did that, like it. Jeez, how silky smooth is his surfing? Just looks like he puts zero effort and it's just so flowy and it's poetic to watch i love watching mike surf and get him on a right hand point break he'd be licking his lips when he saw us come around the corner here this morning to one mile long running rights really suit this guy's surfing and here he goes one last run around he's going to be hearing his score on his way back around it will take him to the lead if i am a predictor but chris zaffis does have that 5.75 so this is what's going through my head if i was zaff we'll listen, watch this way first so smooth first turn Wraps it all the way around. He has such good lean and weight transition. Holds oh. it the whole way. Bounces off the foam there. Just transitioning between turn, not losing any speed, not losing any... That DHD looks unbelievable under his feet. Nice little layback jam there. And this turn, I think, is going to make it really, really critical. He got up and over that foam. He didn't just tap it. He liked it. You could see the legs burning there. He's got a bit of a run around. He's going to hear his sixes. score. Yeah, I Maybe. think we're going to see something... I lot. Maybe a high it, six. It wasn't super critical those first few turns, but it was so flowy. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a... Yeah, I mean, we got the last one wrong. Let's wait and see. But this is what I'm thinking right now if I'm Mikey running around. Or if I'm Zaffer's, sorry. There you go, low six. So, ball's back in Zaffer's court needing that 5.6. But if I'm Zaffer's, I'm like, hmm, I've got a 5.75. His backup was only a five. So, I need to get 0.75 less than what Mikey just got. So... He would have seen the wave that Mikey took off on there, and he's like, all right, if I can get a wave that looks better on takeoff and surf it within 0.75 of it, then I jump ahead. So well and truly within range right now for Chris Zaffers. We saw him drop a 9.1 in that last heat, backed it up with a 6, so very capable. But with seven minutes remaining, conditions have turned on their head right now. You can see out the back, it's so choppy. But Zaffers, you got to wonder, that one that he got the 4.8 on for that fin ditch blow tail reverse, if he links that through to the inside... Maybe that was a 5.6 and he would find himself in a different situation right now. But Mikey Madonna in the rip, paddling back out. Six and a half minutes, or six minutes, 50 remaining. There's going to be a lot of action, dare I say, to finish this one. The end of the amazing event we've had here at Port Stephens. This is the Gage Roads Port Stephens Pro Stop number two on the Vislite New South Wales Pro Surf Series. Yeah, that's right, Coop. And, well, Chris Zaffis making his way out. You see the chops, the white chops making their way in. That is from the storm just off the coast. That's howling wind towards the event site. We thought maybe he'd come in and hit the rain. We'd see it appear, but it's just stayed away. And when that storm gets really close, what it does is it produces a lot of wind. And it's not really until the rain sets in that we get that kind of glass off effect um, that we all love to see. And sometimes when it rains really hard, it actually seems like the ocean goes flat for a while. It mm. just kind of dampens things for a little bit. But We'll have to wait and see what the end of this heat produces. Mikey McDonough will be in the rip, making his way back out there. Oh, and he'll be so nervous. That paddle back out in the rip when you know, all right, you're looking over your shoulder to the left and you're like, I know he doesn't need that much. I know it's, you get the complete update on the runaround too, so you know exactly what Zaffis needs. And yeah, this is a nervous paddle back out. I'm sure Mikey would love to be holding up that trophy in six minutes time. But he's going to get back out, maybe get another shot to better that five-point ride. He knows he's got plenty more in the tank if he gets the right wave, but both of the boys will be running on seriously empty right now because it's been a huge couple of days. It's been a huge week, so let's see what happens in this last five minutes. Can Chris dig himself out of this hole? Needs a 5.6. Not a huge ask, but mm. what do you reckon? Waves with the conditions? Does he get it? Yeah. Does he get a I, shot? Well, the experience of these two competitors, I could see both of them locking in two more good scores. Um, that would be an amazing end to the final. It really two, would. One each. It, I reckon it'd be just deserving of you know a great final. These guys both getting another shot at it. You know, I could very easily see Chris. You know, with the experience he has. You know, he's been a big time performer on the you know the Prime Series back in the day. 
He's had some great results there. You were talking to me about his run through Erisera in that 10,000 many years ago with huge heat numbers. You know, he's been uh, he's won an event before, so he knows what it takes to win. Uh, and he's got a lot of experience behind him. Like up, up against the younger kind of superstar, I guess, in Mike McDonough that, you know, has the backing of the likes of Mick Fanning, who just you know, has huge hopes for this um, up-and-coming man. He's... Uh, Big hope out of the Lennox, Lennox Head region, and uh, I'd love to see them both get another shot at this, uh, these scores. And if Chris Zaffis locks in, you know that five six one he's chasing, I dare say Mikey will be fired up, ready to uh, throw down an answer. That's yeah. my prediction. They both get another shot at it. You're so on the fence, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Give us an opinion. Nah, I think. What do I reckon? I reckon. I reckon Zaff's gonna get a shot. But the conditions look like they're really deteriorating. Like I was touching on before, me and Tez McKenna were talking about earlier today. We're actually talking about a heat that he said Oki had against Curran at Surf Fest years ago. And Oki got told by one of his mates, oh, there's a big storm that's just hit Lake Macquarie down the road or Lake Mamora. Be careful. It's on its way up. And he caught three waves at the start, got some nice ones. Curran sat and, w sat and wait. And then it pretty much got unsurfable. And Oki won the final. So there's a little bit of surf history. Wow. So... <laughs> Yeah, that we could see something similar happen here, but well, Mikey McDonough was, uh, you know, off to a slow start in this final. He's managed to find a couple of scores. Hasn't been the explosive final we thought, but like we said, the weather has played a bit of havoc on this final. It's really messed things up out there and kind of chopped up the lineup a bit. But one thing that's going to happen that we can be certain of is that Mikey is not going to give Chris Saffis any room. He's going to keep him super honest here with Chris having priority. Mikey's going to make sure that anything he looks at... Well, here's Mikey. He's actually going to have a run at this one and yeah. see if he can extend this uh, this margin. This one's running down the line. Nice big wrapping turn. Will he get a growing section down the line? We know that he's been known for two big turns and big scores. This one's standing up nicely. Tags through the lip. He wants to finish strong here because he's going to be sitting on the beach and watching the end of this one or he's going to be paddling back out watching... I don't think he betters a five there. Maybe a little bit of a mistake. Like you said, he could have put a bit more pressure on Chris and maybe tried to sell him away. But I think the right play there was to try and better that five because he would love to move this further in front. We'll see him building a bit of speed here. Comes around the section. Start of this one, he's just got such good flow through a section that I would bog on every single time. He just holds that flow. Drags the arm around. Gets one nice turn here. Tiny bit of a catch off the bottom. And then he gets another nice little hit off the foam here. Yeah, I can't see oh, that can't going see up into the five-point range. I think maybe a mid to low four, if anything. But we're not the judges, but I haven't seen anything drop in better. So I'm guessing that that wave will not improve. So as we come down to the mad next minute, it's going to be a mad into this final because Chris Zaffis is well within reach of taking home the win here. Only looking for a 5-6-1. The ocean is looking very choppy and very unpredictable right now. And... But it looks like we have a wave here. Is this going to break on his head? This happened a few times at the end of my heat. I thought, you know what, give me a shot. I mean, I needed a nine, not a five. And I just kept getting ones on the head. So positioning is quite difficult out there. It's quite shifty. There's a deep peak and there's a wide peak. So looks like Zaf is just praying right now. Give me a shot. That's what we, whenever you're a surfer and you're at the end of the heat and you need a required score, what's always going through my mind is just give me a wave that gives me a shot. Yeah. If I get the score or not, whatever. But just give me a chance. Like yeah, we work so hard for these opportunities. We see that Mad Max minute. Yeah. There's the Mad Max minute. <laughs> Chris the is burrito hungry. clock is spinning. <laughs> so this is going to feel like the quickest minute of Chris Zaffis's life and the longest of Mikey McDon McDonough's, because there is 42 seconds on the clock in the last heat of the event here at the Gage Roads Bruco Port Stevens Pro, and Mikey McDonough, the superstar from Lennox Head, holding the lead. The man from Angowry now residing up on the Gold Coast is just asking for a shot. Come on, Huey, give me one wave. Will he get a shot, Coops? And if he does, Mikey's going to be watching it the whole way. So 20 seconds, it's clock's ticking away. He's going to find something. He's going to have a kick and a scratch as to something because he'd love just a chance. But with 10 seconds remaining, it's looking nothing very there. It's looking yeah. very unlikely. And I think Mikey McDonough... Lee he is going to get the victory here, and that is the final done and dusted. We see Chris Zaffer still at the back. 
Mikey McDonough, he will be through the roof. I know his old man will be through the roof as well. They put a lot of hard work in to get here and your champion for 2022, Gage Rhodes Bruco, Port Stevens Pro is Mikey McDonough and there's the smile that we've all been wanting to see. He is so pumped and why wouldn't he be? He talked about the hard work he's been putting in. He knows how much this means to him and you know his support crew. Woody back home, Taipan will be frothing at the bits to uh, see this victory unfold. And uh, well, Coop, Man, he's I'm... been the standout in the event, especially on this long right point break at one mile. He was the man to beat. Yeah, and, and it's so good to see a couple wins for Lee Bar. We know what's been happening right now up in that Northern Rivers community. So I'm sure this will bring a bit of energy and a bit of love to that community up there. And yeah, sending lots of love up there. Take care of yourselves. And yeah, you see, your winner, Mikey Madonna, backing up Nixie Ryan. So first place for Lee Bar, both men's and women's. A little right-hand point break here at, where are we at? One Mile Beach. Port Stevens, there we are. It's, been, it's been an incredible rip curl one and one. I'm sure Flannel will be stoked for his young crew. And yeah, look, you can see how stoked he is. It's been a while between drinks for Mikey Madonna. He's pumped. Very well-deserved champion here. He's, yeah, we're going to see him on the Challenger Series. Early call, but he's such a phenomenal t talent. And this momentum coming out of this event is going to mean everything to him. Yeah, it's really special to see. And... Well, it looks like he will be getting shared up the beach. He's a big unit, so <laughs> there he is, your champion for 2022, the Gage Roads Port Stevens Pro champion. It is Mikey McDonough from Lennox Head. And uh, that DHD was looking impeccable under his feet all event. And we always knew it was coming around the, the point from Baruby to the uh, long-running rights of this point break here that Mikey McDonough was going to be a force to be reckoned with. And, well, Lennox Head obviously have a good relationship with One Mile because they've taken out the men's and the women's event, all trophies and cash going back up to Lennox Head region. And, uh, well, they'll be going into the Mad Max Pro with a lot of confidence, Coop. Absolutely. What a stellar performance by both of the athletes. Also, Chris Saffers, hats off to him. He would have loved a shot at the end there, but what a serious fight back he had in that semi-final against Kalani Ball. So... Really good competition for every surfer. It's been a phenomenal finals day. We knew that there was going to be a tricky last day. We copped this big storm, but the waves got really fun. So I'm sure everybody out there in Webland would be stoked. I'm sure Lukey Madden from Surfing New South Wales would have been watching all day, going absolutely unreal, the conditions. Big thanks to all of our sponsors. I'm sure they're pumped watching all day. There's been hot action. We came home with some amazing winners. So big thanks to Vissa. Also, Gage Roads and Port Stephens Council, Newcastle Airport, Destination New South Wales, World Surf League, PID Port Stephens Real Estate, Chaos Surf Shop, and Mad Max and Volkswagens for putting on this partner. We're going to go to a quick break, and then we're going to take you to the presentation. We're going to see Chris presenting some awards to the champions of this event. So thanks for tuning in. My name's Cooper Chapman, joined by Chris Enova. We'll be right back with the presentation right after this break. Take care, everyone. <laughs>
Some say we've got engine oil in our veins. All that and a fair bit of dust. Sure, these wild utes are hard work, but it's no job. The roar of them. Pure. Take some rare skills to settle one. A band of brothers and sisters. Where man learns from machine, learns from man. And those that visit are transformed. Almost as much as the V6 Amarox. It's like this place rubs off on them. You gotta see it to believe it. The only Ute reared for the road. skills to settle one. A band of brothers and sisters. Where man learns from machine, learns from man. And those that visit are transformed. Almost as much as the V6 Amarox. It's like this place rubs off on them. You gotta see it to believe it. The only Ute reared for the road. What makes a place your place? Is it a place to play, learn and watch your kids grow? A place to have fun, laugh and belong? A place to work, kick back and share a beer with your mates? You can't touch it, put a price on it. You feel it. 
It's not about houses and cars and stuff. It's about people. The people you live with and share your dreams with. Your place might be big. It might be small. But finding your place, well, that's the most important thing in the world. Port Stephens is full of special places. We're planning for the future of our places in a way that makes it easy for you to understand and get involved. Coming to your place soon. Find out more on our website. All right, we're live and uh, well, we're here for the presentation and before we kick things off, we uh, Surf New South Wales and WSL want to say a huge acknowledgement to the, the Wurramai people, the traditional owners of the land and the beaches we surf on today. We pay our respects to elders, past, present and the future. So big thanks to all of the Wurramai people. Congratulations to all the competitors that entered in the event. This is the second stop of the Vista New South Wales Pro Surf Series. This was the Gage Roads, Port Stephens Pro. And well, we had some great waves and offer. We got to surf around Barubi and then we finished up the event here at One Mile with some great conditions. Huge thanks to all our partners, obviously Vista, Gage Roads, Port Stephens Council, Madmex and Volkswagen for providing us all the webcast action. Newcastle Airport, PRD Real Estate, Destination New South Wales, Chaos Surf Shop, and of course Surfing New South Wales and the crew for you know battling the elements and getting all the events set up here from Maroubri around here to today. It's been a big effort in the rain and the wind. Thanks to the WSL staff, Will and Tom and all the crew from WSL for getting these events underway. This Australia Oceania Regional Series is unbelievable and well, everyone can contest that the uh, level of surfing and the talent in the draw is stronger than I've ever seen in a QS 1000 event. So well known to all the crew that entered it and uh, big thanks to the judges, Ty, Conigan, 
and all the other judges that came and uh, you know judge these events and I felt the judging was spot on and, and absolutely perfect so fresh air broadcast as well thanks to Sam and the crew for getting all the images live to everyone around the world and uh, thanks huge a huge amounts to the Port Stephens Council for allowing us to run these events at these beautiful beaches get up and check them out it's an amazing part of the coast and uh, big thanks to them so we're gonna and with no further ado, get this underway and uh, we'd like to call up the competitors for the women's final and second place runner-up for the Gage Roads Port Stephens Pro. We're going to be receiving these amazing trophies and uh, second place, none other than Sarah Baum. Congratulations for me. Thank you. Can stand over there? Just stand all right, and this is a special one. Well, she got her maiden victory up there at Boomerang, and now she's gone back to back jacks. And I dare say, well out in front on the Australia Oceania Regional Series, and none other than your winner, Nixie Ryan. Well done, Nixie. Congratulations. Well done, Nixie. Absolutely incredible week for you. Thanks. Love to get a few words, Nix. Um, yeah, I'd just like to thank everybody for, who organised the event and it's been such a fun event. Um, all the locals for letting us surf the amazing waves and my family and everyone back at home for watching and yeah, thank you. That's amazing. Well, give it up for your champions and your finalists, Nixie Ryan, Sarah Baum, everyone. Well, that was very special, and I'm sure Nixie and Sarah will be taking some great confidence into the next stop. And that leaves us with the men's final, and well, it was an absolute cracker. The wind did show up and made things tricky, but coming off one of the biggest heat titles of the event, your runner-up, Chris Zaffis. And well, I know this one's going to mean a lot to him. It's very special. He, uh, as soon as his event moved to this spot here at One Mile, we knew he was going to be a force to be reckoned with. Coming out of Lennox Head, the up and coming star, Mikey Madonna, getting the win, your champion. Yeah, Mike. Yeah, Chris. Yeah, man. Thank you. We'd love to get a few words off you, Mikey, mate. Um, yeah, obviously, I'm super stoked. Um, it was a great day of surfing. Congrats to Chris and Nixie and Sarah. Um, just like to say thanks to the judges and Will and everyone at WSL and Surfing New South Wales. And uh, yeah, um, I'm over the moon. Yeah. Sick. Any support crew as well back at home? I know you do a lot of work with Woody and the crew up there. They'd be over the moon. And Lennox Head, I know it's been a tough time up there at the moment, so yeah. this must be pretty special to take some good energy back there for them. Yeah, um, thanks to Woody, of course. He does so much for me. And uh, my trainer, Pete Roberts, my dad, Shaper, Darren Hanley, and uh, yeah, of course, to everyone at home. Um, this one's for you guys. It's pretty tough up there at the moment. Ballon is fighting and, and Lismore's underwater and um, everyone's doing their best to keep each other safe. So thank you. Yeah, well said, mate. And a champion in the future. And I'm sure all the crew will be very excited to get down to the next event. And well, Lennox Head taken one and two in the, actually one and one in the men's and the women's draw. So pretty special for Lennox. And we'll see you all the next stop. The Mad Mex Maruba Pro. Don't go anywhere. Tune into the action. And uh, we'll be uh, kicking that series off this weekend.